The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, October 20th, 2021 years after... 11 years ago, pretty big. Oh, oh wow. Let's go. I just realized that October 20th, uh, 2010 was the... Uh, yeah. The alleged incident evening. Oh. You know, obviously... Uh, I think a couple years later, I might have made a tackle on Sunday Night Football against mm. somebody. October 20th has always been a big day in my life and a pivotal day in our in my life. And I think that's what's going to happen today on this show. Yeah. Today's show is going to be a big one. Oh, yeah. oh, Huge. Yeah. we got Jonathan Taylor jo- uh, joining us in Ooh. about 27 minutes or so. Okay. Indianapolis Colts running back who is a stallion of a player. Yeah. Out of Wisconsin, obviously, he has now gotten the lion's share of the load of the ball in Indianapolis, and he has run with it. He has dominated it. Can't wait to continue to learn about him. In the second hour, we got Sham Sharania. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's a basketball guy, NBA oh, yeah, insider right. at the Athletic in the stadium or whatever, and mm-hmm. uh, he will break down everything that happened in basketball last night. Basketball happened. It's yeah, back. I've heard. Hey, it's LeBron back. James played basketball last <laughs> oh, yeah. night. Oh, yeah. Look good. He looked really good. He the did. team, however. They lost to the Golden State Warriors, who uh, is Steph Curry's team, yep. who is the founder of Holy Moly, the uh, Ooh, putt yeah. putt game. That's right. On That's a good ABC. One. So, a lot of big names playing basketball last night. We'll talk to Sham Sharania about that. That'll probably be the only amount of time really committed to a sport we know nothing about. And nobody really seeks us out to talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, what do what, uh, the retired punter and his friends think about the NBA? Nobody. No. <laughs> Nobody's thinking that. But Shams. When he comes in, we ask him all the questions that we need to at least stay a little bit updated on what's going on in the NBA. Shams will be the person that tells us enough so we can have a conversation with somebody about the NBA, kind of know what's going on in the NBA, but not have to actually, you know, spend any energy watching right. yes. NBA. Don't have to invest any time in it. No, just on the internet with the highlights. Mm-hmm. Like Carmelo Anthony pump faking a free throw. That's yeah, a highlight. Yeah. Saw that last night. Oh, yeah. LeBron dunked last night. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. Big time. He had a big time dunk last night. Now, if if Ross and Mello, you know, can kind of get it, start making some shots, maybe they get the big win. Maybe they win this whole thing. That is what we'll be able to do with our conversations yeah. with Shams and doing that. Can't wait to chat with him. And then the third hour starting at 2.05 Eastern Time. Uh, Coach us up, Chuck Wednesday will officially kick off. Chuck Pagano will join us for a conversation about all the happenings in the NFL. I cannot wait to chat with him, by yeah, the way. Yeah, pumped. One of my favorite parts of the week. It really oh, yeah. is. It's like story time with Chuck almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because he's been there, done that with everything. He's, uh, you know, a good pies on. Good yes, pies truly. On. Isn't he? Isn't he? T- that that's tone. What, th- what was that? That was. Siri saying, that's what I thought. It He's a good wow. pies on. <laughs> Even Siri knows. That is unbelievable <laughs> that your watch just spoke up for Chuck Pagano. <laughs> yeah. Because he is a good pies on. And I assume just uh, because Siri can can sense that Italian skin wow. underneath yeah. your arm oh, yeah. right there. Anytime you hear Paisano name uh, shout out there, you go, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I like the series trying to get on the good graces of the DiGiulio family mm-hmm. over there. Uh, but can't wait to talk with Chuck. And uh, tomorrow night's game. Okay, Thursday night football is interesting because at the beginning of the season, if you would have found out that the Broncos are playing against the Browns in Cleveland, 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 Ohio, mm-hmm. up there on the lake, first couple weeks you're like, oh my God, here we go. This is a clash of tights. Mm-hmm. Since then, the Broncos have lost a few games this past week. Not good. I mean, it was a bad, bad loss. The yeah. team did not look good. The Raiders looked incredible. It was a tough loss for the Broncos. And in the Cleveland Browns, whenever you think about what they just – the loss they just had, obviously, against Cardinals, who are a freight train. Yeah. yeah. And need to be treated as such accordingly going – you get it. They right. are a freight train right now. But the Cleveland Browns, every person that you have heard of on the offensive side of the ball – is out tomorrow. Yeah. Ah, 
There is a long. It was announced this morning. Case Keenum will be starting at quarterback yeah. for the Cleveland Browns. Although Baker Mayfield wanted to play and was arguing to play, even though he has a completely torn labrum in his left shoulder, it was partially torn. And last week, whenever he got tackled awkwardly, somebody came out. It became a fully torn labrum. He's been battling this since week three or something like or week two. I forget exactly what it was. He's been deemed out because I think he's. His opinion on whether or not he should play was outvoted by, like, the team, the doctors, and everything. Uh, mm-hmm. Can't do it. You can't do it. He's up. Kareem Hunt. At. Nick Chubb. At. Jarvis Landry. I think he's up. I'm yeah, pretty not sure he's Very sure he's up. Sure yeah. he's not even official. Right. Right. Yeah, we, we don't want to do this. Odell Beckham. At. At. Jack Conklin. Game time. Potentially. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe at. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't know anything about the offensive line. But anyways, they are out a lot of key players. Will it matter against a Denver Broncos team? Will they still be able to run against Denver? Or will what Vaughn Miller said in an interview of, I, I don't know who's playing tackle for the Browns. I don't know. But I know I'm going to kill him. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the, it, when you start thinking about the, uh, this was tweeted by Eric Dalala. Shout out. Eric Dalala with an A. A R I C D I capital L A L L A. Von Miller setting high standards this week for himself. I play well in this game. I'm going to have a great game. I don't know who the tackle I'm going against is, but I'm going to kill him. Okay. <laughs> so whenever you start thinking risk free, same game parlay that needs to hit, I'm starting to think, okay, Miles Garrett's probably going to have a pretty big game. Mm-hmm. Von Miller's probably going to have a pretty big game. In Case Keenum, even though we don't know who his weapons are, what his weapons are going to be, the guy can complete some passes. I oh, assume yeah. his his passing yards is going to be low. I think it's going to be a bad game, an ugly game. And by saying that, I think it's going to be big defensive. I mean, we're going to get after it here. And I don't know who's going to win, so I might keep that out of the same game parlay, which makes the beauty of the same game parlay. But the thought right now is that tomorrow is going to be a shit show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, this is the first time in some time. And then next week, obviously, you got Cardinals Packers on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. So we might have to go through a little bit of a uh, shit sandwich tomorrow night. But this is a turning point for both these teams. Both teams are 3-3. Three and three. Both teams had very high hopes first couple weeks of the season. Both teams are currently entrenched. And what the fuck's going on maybe a little bit of injuries and everything like that who will take at the turning point on thursday night football i guess we'll have to find out the talks to tables here at ty schmidt at boston connor tony diggs is here obviously got a chance to chat with him and his apple watch yeah. earlier uh ty when you think about tomorrow night what are your thoughts i really have no idea because like we were talking out out you know before the show started like the the broncos started hot everyone were like well hey maybe this team could have a, a shot and winning this division or making it to the playoffs they didn't beat anybody. They haven't looked good, but like they're not. They their offense is explosive. Like they have plenty of weapons, plenty of pieces. We know how good their defense is, but it it just seems like I mean the Browns. Even with all these guys out, it just seems like a game that they'll win. But I but I don't let. I mean, it's a weird game. It's a very it, fascinating it, game. It is two teams, three and three, and the slate across the board this week in week seven is not. It's not great. It's not that great of a slate. And no. whenever you're talking about greatness of slates, we're not talking about how games could potentially end up, but there isn't that many like consequential games, even though it's only week seven. You look at the Chiefs, Titans, two teams, four and two, two teams coming off of big time identity games for themselves, I believe. Second half of that Washington football team game for the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes seemed to come alive. That team seemed to look great, seemed to get things back on track, but he did have to deal with his brother being a fucking asshole on mm-hmm. the internet. True. So Pretty I mean, usual. Ma- ma- does seem to potentially be a thing time. this past weekend, though, was despicable. Can't uh-huh. do it. How do you even get there, though? I don't know. It feels more. It feels a lot like the Washington football team was, you know, messing up a lot of things this weekend. So maybe it's fifty on them, fifty on Little Mahomes. Yeah, right. it's still, you got to have the wherewithal to be like, oh, they're retiring this guy's number today. I probably shouldn't be fucking standing Especially right. Especially because he grew up in a, a professional athlete family, right? Everybody talks about how Pat's dad was a major league baseball player mm-hmm. and he's been around and everything yeah. like that. And so that means Jackson also has, right? That right. means the same yes. exact thing. And, in that, and that would be something that I think you would learn, you know, through your life. Like, okay, we we pay respect to, you know, those who were OGs before us and everything like that. So I think definitely on him. Yeah. Well, But also, how the fuck yeah. were they even standing there? The Chiefs fans are being like, well, that was the VIP area. They were told to stay in that area. But like... When I go to a funeral and they're like, hey, go stand over there by the casket, I don't then jump on top of the casket and then dance on top of it. Yeah, it's true. true. I just don't understand, like, 
Why, why the hell does he need to be on the field before the game? What are you talking about? It's like, dude, go watch the fucking game up in the box. No, nah, sideline passes for the star of the side. I yeah, mean, he that, does yeah. it every game, though. Yeah, well, that's his thing. Yeah, it's his... That's his I'm it's, done with it. Well, it's, it, you're not... You're not even halfway through season three of us. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know. I mean, you know what I you know. Mean? I better get comfortable. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> this is yeah, this, this is, is the thing. Yeah, this is a thing. Yeah. And by the way, there's probably ten to fifteen seasons of this particular show. Wow. Well, yeah. Which is the Jackson dance on the thing before the thing thing. And maybe, you know, his dad was in the in major leagues and maybe he did grow up with it. Or maybe his dad was like, hey, Pat, you can come with me to the games, but leave your fucking little brother at home because I hate that kid so much. I can't whoa, stand him. Whoa. But hey, that's just that's just something that might have happened. That I don't was too know. Far. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Unless it happened. Well, if it happened. I haven't Listen. seen many videos with little Mahomes ah, there. I've only seen right. him with Pat. Okay, anyways. But Pat d- did have to deal with that a little bit, I yeah. guess. I'm sure he's passed it. But that team, second half, seems to have found it. Them playing the Titans coming off the Derrick Henry three-tud game. I mean, that is a fantastic game. I'm very happy that this game is happening this weekend because it's huge. Bengals-Ravens, AFC North matchup. Four and two Bengals just beat the fucking brakes off yep. the line. Oh, not man. even close. Right. See, just... Blow the dog out. shit right. was kicked okay. out of yeah. the Lions. Right. Never a doubt. You know, there was a couple weeks there where the Lions were scraping and crawling, yeah. Arr, Arr, crawling, Arr, 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 Arr. crawling back into it. And at the end, they, they lost in, in heartbreaking fashion. In this, in this particular one, the Bengals marched into the Lions' den. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Lions Den. And literally just did, is this how Bengals Pete? Did they lift their leg? I'm not 100 percent sure. Oh, yeah. All oh, yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. And this was supposed to be the one where Sheila Ford Ham and uh, yeah. MC DC and everybody. Sure. This was supposed to be the game they get their first win. They yep. get off the Schneid. Everybody's yeah. Foxy had actual hope, it seemed like yeah. the internet was even saying, Oh, Lions plus six, this is a lock or whatever it was. Like that was a, a an overwhelming and then Joey Burrow went in there and just yeah, beat yeah. the fuck out of him. Yeah, yeah and if you guys thought that one was bad, wait till this Sunday when the Lions go to L.A. and have to play Matthew Stafford. Oh, oh Jared Goff reunion, wow. Jared! Wow. Revenge, revenge game. Revenge. Jared Ooh, Goff's revenge. I'm coming yeah. home. I'm coming, coming home. home. Open the golf course. I'm coming, coming home. home. Jared Goff coming back to L.A., dude. Yeah. With so much confidence going into this game, too. Yeah, because MCDC was saying, hey, we all got to step it up. Oh, you you yeah. can be better is what MCDC said. We just got to step it up. Whatever the case, Matthew Stafford over. And yeah. what, everything. Touchdowns, yeah. I mean, yards, 50 on him. rush yards, you name it. Sean McVay uh, this morning had half his face cut off on yep. uh, Good Morning Football. But the headline, I didn't get to see it or hear it. But I saw the headline said, um, uh, McVay... Uh, did not handle the Jared Goff trade yeah. perfectly. He said he would say that and agree with that. Well, you know, maybe Jared Goff's coming back with a oh, yeah. a fucking point to prove. A chip dude. on his shoulder. He was just shipped out of town. You guys pay me $100 million and trade me away for mm. a bag of balls, dude? And Matthew Stafford and like seven other things have to come in, come in return or whatever? What What's going on? I'm going to come dominate out here with my wide receiver named... Quintez Cephas. And, yeah. And my out. Hawk. And, uh, and he's out. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Uh, Hawk. TJ Hawkinson. I think McVay only said that because he goes, wow, I didn't expect golf and the Lions to be this bad. Now I feel bad for what I did to that man. I don't think so because I think McVay sees what Stafford's doing. He's like, man, this is awesome. I won. We were exactly right. When I was down there in Mexico in Cancun, I couldn't have dreamed of anything. Like, you were really cool. We had a couple beers together. Our families got to hang out. This is before, during, and after the trade was taking place mm-hmm. where we sent three first-rounders out of there for you. But, man, this is much better than we could have ever met. You you were polar opposite of what Jared Goff is. Yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> Do you know that? It is crazy. We benched Jared Goff end of the season because he had a little cut on his hand or whatever. We didn't yeah. know what it was going to take. Actually, in the playoff game, we said, hey, Jared Goff, we don't want, we don't want you yep. to start. Mm-hmm. I made that decision. A lot of people were talking about it, but it wasn't being talked about as loud as it probably should have because they just paid their franchise guy and they were ipso facto benching said yeah. player in the mm-hmm. playoffs in the biggest thing. They didn't get straight that whole thing. McVay's like, I'm going to let you know, man, you get your hand cut off, we'll have you play lefty. Yeah. yeah. We will still start you. <laughs> like, that is what it feels like McVay is with Stafford as opposed to what the Goff thing is. But is this just the honeymoon phase? And will Jared Goff get a chance to say anything after getting his ass beat by the Bengals last mm. Probably not, if I had to guess. I, I no assume the Rams Lions are in trouble. Lions are in trouble. I think so, but th- maybe the Ravens are in trouble because this Bengals team is legit. This is the first time in a long time I think some people believe that the Bengals could be an actual team. Now, 
them beating the hell out of the Lions is not necessarily the case. A lot of teams that have beat the hell out of the Lions over the years have not been an actual team. True. Right? right? That is something that is... How about the, the Lions? The Bears? Hey, the Lions are really taking it on the shins right yeah. now. Well, they well, do every single year. I mean, I you noticed last week was the first time we didn't get... A, These guys played so fucking hard. No, he got mad. He, he, he got that's, sick of it. That's the, what I'm saying. Like, yeah, the, the honky dory. I love you guys. You're going to go out and compete for me, man. Like, that, that stage is over. Now yeah. it's now he's gonna turn into a fucking horse's ass, I think. And if Whoa. they don't, oh, if they don't no. keep winning, if That's they if they don't win, no, it's just different modes and different times. I assume next off season it'll be the same thing. If they start winning, MCDC will do his thing. He's trying to <laughs> figure out how to motivate this team yeah. that has been cursed for decades. He's trying to figure out how to beat them. And a lot of people are saying maybe it is like a Ted Lasso situation. Yeah. Maybe he is sure. able to come into FC Richmond and turn that whole thing around. Maybe he is able to come in there, yeah. put a belief sign up on the wall, people pat it, put <laughs> some sage in the goddamn training room, mm -hmm. get the curse out of there. But I think it's all just going to take about a $2 million check to Calvin Johnson. Bingo. And then maybe they'll have a chance if they, uh, you know, maybe get some better players on the team. With all that being said, Bengals Ravens is going to be a great game. <laughs> yeah. Great game. I'm sorry, Zito. You said something about the Bears there. I couldn't hear it because your voice is a little bit lower there. Yeah, I said uh, the last oh, time they played God. the Bears, Jesus. they lost. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, you, did you just get out of a mob meeting? Did you? I did, yes. You sitting at the head of the table? Or? I'm sitting right at the head of the table, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you're all right. We hope Thank you feel you, better. Yeah. Sorry you're going through this, Zito. You're the best, dude. Uh, Bengals Ravens, big time game, though. Okay, that's yeah. a huge yeah. game. Excited to see that. Um, Bears, Bucks. I guess you can call that a big game because the Bucks are in it. Mm -hmm. Justin Fields looks like he's going to be great. Aside from that, there's not a lot of games this weekend that we think, oh, these are must wins, have to win. This is a big game going in the future. A lot of kind of piss poor matchups with six teams on by this weekend. Don't what do you leave mean? Out Sunday night, baby. That's Sunday night game. That's a big game. Electricity is going to be Niners in the air. lose with being behind the Rams and the Cardinals is tough. Colts, you can't lose if the Titans are getting hot. Listen, the Niners go to two and five when they lose to the Indianapolis Colts, or the Colts go to two and six whenever they lose if they lose to the Niners. Both devastating blows. Yeah, absolutely. That is going to be tough to come back from. But if they win that, both of them, three and four still, three and five still. I, mean, I, I don't know how. It's not. I mean, it's a great game. Two teams that I think going into the season, everybody were like, all right, here we go. We got some squads. But you're right. If the 49ers go to two and five? Four. They had a bye last week. Two and four. If the Niners go two and four, they're in that division. They're going to yeah. be dead. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why we, I think we can all assume they're going to beat the shit out of the Colts. Whoa, on Sunday night. Whoa, I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just saying. Jimmy G's back. They had a nice little bye week. Everyone's feeling T.Y. Hilton's back, dude. Yeah, T.Y. Hilton, you know, who knows? He hurt his quad. Uh, I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. If we're he positive back? that he's back, but <laughs> is he back? we do know Jimmy G's back, and it seems as though the Niners will look around the division and say, hey, if we don't win tonight, our season's probably over. T.Y.'s back. All right, let's not get to it. But there's there's tomorrow night is going to be an interesting game yep. littered with the injuries, and then this weekend there's probably going to be games that turn into great games at the end. I assume there's yeah, going to yeah. be some great matchups. And when that 1 o'clock slate – has like three games that are all ending at about the same time, mm -hmm. and there's a kick needed or this needed. Every it is electrifying. You just gotta wait through like two hours and forty five minutes of some shit yep. to kind of get to that point, and it is fantastic. Uh, to pivot a little bit away from tomorrow night's game and the risk free same game parlay in which we will take millions, and millions of dollars from FanDuel finally after it smashes and we get hopefully record numbers on that thing so we can all make some money because the game i mean who knows how it's going to go the risk-free same game uh parlay almost hitting last week was electrifying yeah, yeah. <laughs> that entire time we have to talk about something that is happening in the nfl community because if we didn't talk about this what type of show would we be that's right not a very good one we always say we're stern but fair mm -hmm. yes and if it is in our world we will talk about it because it's our world. We talk about our world. Yeah, have mm -hmm. to. Our world is the sports world. Mm -hmm. So when things happen in the sports world, we must address it. More specifically, when things happen in the NFL, we have to address it. Mm -hmm. And I hate to be the one that has to bring this news to you, but I want to let you know that there seems to be a little bit of unrest amongst the Chiefs kingdom. Oh, I know. Uh-oh. Out there in Kansas City where they have been celebrating success with the Kansas City Chiefs organization for the last few years, much more so than they had 
uh, before that, they've had a diehard loyal fan base that has always showed up at Arrowhead. Mm -hmm. yeah. And whenever you walk into that place and you get a chance to play there, if you're lucky enough to play in the NFL, you get a chance to play uh, at Arrowhead, you, you automatically feel like the, the fan base. You feel the energy. You can feel that the Chiefs kingdom is a real one and a passionate one. And you almost hope, like, hey, I hope you guys get a chance, just like the dog pound, I hope you guys get a chance to experience a good team someday. And then all of a sudden, Alex Smith gets traded out of town after Andy Reid gets brought in. Patrick Mahomes is there. And all of a sudden, they start building up this monster, this weapon. And that fan base is put on display on primetime games all the time. Everybody on earth now gets a chance to hear, and the Chiefs. It's showtime, too. Patrick Mahomes plays to the audience, too. The crowd is a massive part of the Kansas City Chiefs' entire experience. And now... We regret to inform you that in the real world, the one that we're living in right now, this is an actual news clip about what's potentially going on amongst the fans in Kansas City. As the Chiefs seem to refine their identity, it seems like the fans are crumbling into pieces. This is, once again, an actual news piece on Fox 4 in Kansas City. Well, if you spend any time around here on game day, you're likely to be aware of at least one of these men. The man known as the X Factor has been around for decades. He's the one seen in the video getting knocked down by another man who the people of Section 129 may know as Red Extreme. There's X Factor. Here it is. This Jeez. is man who about six years ago, meeting and whooping it up with young Chiefs fans. And this is X Factor today. Oh no! What? Only recognizable oh, by no. his foam hat. What? The Broncos so colors stupid. from the hospital. They kicked me out of Arrowhead. First time ever X Factor has been kicked out. Third person. We don't have permission to show the video of the X Factor falling after an apparent punch, but it has nearly a million views on Twitter. The X Factor explains what happened from his perspective and who is involved. He's my old apprentice. I actually. <laughs> Made him famous, uh, you know, gave him the name Red Extreme. I saw him come run up the stairs at me, and he was had that look, I'm going to kill you. And so I, like, tried to grab his jersey to stop him Smart. and talk to him. And he, like the movie Friday, he deboed me one punch, <laughs> and I saw stars. And they took me to triage at Arrowhead, checked me out. I felt all right at the time, but then... I didn't know I'd broke my ribs. Oh, Red Extreme posted oh, a 17-minute like video yeah. message to his Facebook page following the incident. He 17. says, a cup of water was thrown and hit my wife in the back and splashed onto me. Oh, Can't do that. He continues, That's I have never in my life felt so bad about feeling so good because knocking that low-life son of a expletive out <laughs> was the greatest feeling I've had in a long time. This is my actual problem news. is it happened inside the stadium. And I never imagined in my life I would behave in that manner in the stadium. He also accuses the X Factor of being inebriated. It says that I'm a meth addict, what? which I, I'm a cocaine addict and alcoholic. <laughs> okay. I've been playing for four years. Okay. He much said different. I threw a water Congrats, bottle at him, which much I did. And I flipped my car. A week ago, Tuesday. So it's been a wild week. What? Jeez, <laughs> wait. No. Maybe it's yeah, this makes that. me stronger. Jesus, you know, Jesus was persecuted. Of course. I'll come back fighting. He is looking to press charges at this point, but throughout the day, we did try to connect directly with Red Extreme, but were turned down. However, immediately before our broadcast, we spoke by phone, and he stressed that anything that the X Factor says should be taken with a big dose of skepticism, no, and that okay. he himself actually stepped away from the super fan community because no. of his distrust and distaste of X Factor's behavior. Oh, wow. All right, Jacob Kittlestead. Thank you, Jacob oh Kittlestead. Thank, Thank you, Jacob. You, Jacob. Hey, we hope they figured it out over there. Yeah. Okay? We're all Chiefs fans here. All right, Red Extreme, X Factor. I, I can't believe he said he was a meth head. All right, yeah. X Factor's clearly not a meth head. 
I mean, you take one look at him, you go, oh, that guy. No, cocaine. That guy loves and coke and booze. And, yeah. and he's been clean for four years. Congrats, X Factor. Although, you know, he flipped his car last week. Well, so. it's been a rough week. <laughs> yeah. he, no, he was boozed definitely up. boozed up. Bro, how long car. has he been wearing the hospital gown thing? <laughs> Bro, him walking in front of the stadium. So he had to walk to his car from his house. Uh-huh. Yeah. He, he, wearing the same thing in the hospital. Yeah. Drive to the interview, get out of the car. They well, let us set up a camera. You got it. I'll get really give this thing. X Factor's a fucking lightning rod, dude. Yes. X Factor uh, needs to not get kicked out of games anymore. Eh? If you start kicking X Factor out, I mean maybe the Chiefs lose every single game again. You, yeah. You think? And Red Extreme, okay, Red Extreme said he's never felt so bad about feeling so good. About knocking that son of a <laughs> bitch out. I actually read a little bit about this. The uh the hospital scrubs was actually the only thing he owns right now. Okay. Because wow. <laughs> uh, he pissed and shit himself when he when Red Extreme uh, did knock him out. So that's all. the only clothes he has left now is the hospital. Well, and at least he kept that hat. Yeah, True. yeah exactly. Yeah. You know I mean, at least he kept his, his hat. His crown, really. We would like everybody to know that we hope Red Extreme and the X Factor, uh, you know, bygones be bygones, and they can both coexist in the super fan community, which Red Extreme says he has... Quit completely. Oh, yeah, which is never going to happen. I mean, you hear, you heard Red Extreme. You know, he hates his guts. He wants to finish the job and kill him. <laughs> Especially with X Factor saying, "Well, he's actually my apprentice. I made him famous." You know, I mean, he's. Taking, I gave him the night. Yeah, he's yeah. taking all Red Extreme's glory, and that will not stand. All right, let's get to a break. Uh, good luck out there, <laughs> X Factor and Ray. It was like the movie Friday. Yeah. <laughs> he deboed me one punch. <laughs> I try to I try to grab him to stop him. That's what you move. do, by the way. When somebody looks like they're coming to kill you, you go towards yeah, them, them antagonize and them engage them. <laughs> what Especially happens? when it's your apprentice. Yeah. yeah. When you've trained, you know well. It's a shame that Red Extreme cut uh, X Factor's brakes and he flipped his car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back in four minutes with Jonathan Taylor with a much different conversation. Yeah, sure. We'll see you in four. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, October 20th, 2021. think that it was more a negative response to the I still own you thing because I'm gonna be honest maybe I just have too many blinders on everybody I saw loved it I mean Chicago isn't gonna love it but everybody like I don't know if you heard Darius Butler came on yesterday he was like to see a quarterback act like that is awesome because normally quarterbacks are always the right answer and I think this is what you're referring to always in cliches always working hard always this and as soon as you step out of line a little bit I could see there being a little bit of negativity but at this point isn't it wasn't everybody on your side or was there people actually attacking you in this particular uh, world well I don't know about attacking I mean Tom sends me choice uh articles from time to time about what is being said about certain, certain things. Uh, I mean, my teammates and the organization, I think, really loved it. I think most Packer fans enjoyed it as well. Hey, I we loved, like, it. Hey, loved we, it. Hey, we loved it. Zito? 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 No, hate it. Oh, okay, see, he's from Chicago. He's supposed to hate it. He's supposed to hate it. <laughs> I, saw, I saw Olin Kurt said he wanted to punch me in the face. Uh, <laughs> Look, I think I think that is to say, and I I don't know all and I respect him. He played in the league for a long time, but are we getting that soft as a society that we can't have <laughs> worth now? I mean, you know, somebody can somebody can pay for a ticket and say whatever the hell they want, which I think they should be able to. That's fine. But the one time you say something back to them, that gets caught on it, that gets caught on the hot mic. Which you know, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that gets said from time to time. Now it's that, you know, I've disrespected, you know, an entire city and organization and my own organization. Well, and Justin Fields, you said Justin Fields stinks whenever you told Chicago that you owned him or whatever. You're an asshole. I guess I did see this. I'm sorry. I'm just now realizing that you were a terrible person for it. Although in my house and in where we are, like that's the coolest thing we've seen in some time. I said it was going to go down as something to talk about. uh, People talk about forever as well. Randy Moss. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. the T.O. with the uh, autograph, yep, uh, the yeah. ball, and you telling a city that you own them when you're 22 and 5 against them, fucking some of the greatest competitive trash talk in the history of trash talk. 
you actually had a chance to coach one of the smartest humans to ever play in the NFL and Andrew Luck. And I've told this story before where he made a check in the OTAs in the walkthrough, like the first one he was at, that the rest of the team didn't even know what it was. It was his first day on the practice field, his first day of practice, and he like checked out of a blitz. Was it at that mo- was that true? And it was it at that moment you're like, oh, okay, we got like, we got the guy. Like, is that immediately how that thing happened? And did that thing actually happen with Andrew Luck? Yeah, so he shows, finally shows up and he's missed the lion's share of the whole offseason. Season. No offseason program, no OT. He's made one rookie mini camp, and then he's gone. And he finally shows up. We get out to practice, and we're like you said, we're we're in a walkthrough. And BA calls a play, and he goes to the line of scrimmage. He's getting everything set up, and all of a sudden it was alert, alert, opposite, opposite. Makes us check, and Ty, Reggie, Dwayne Allen, everybody in the back. You know, we had the whole offense over here, the whole defense over here, three lines and chains. I spent the whole day, get the F back, get the F back. I was the get back coach. And all of a sudden he rips out this this check, check, alert, alert, you know, and changes the whole play, changes the protection. You know, we go from a run to pass, pass to run, and there and everybody's like, did he, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> and what is that? We had to, we had to blow the whistle, get him back in the huddle, because nobody knew what he was checking to. And we're figuring, okay, this guy is a genius. He is a brainiac. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. He's going to get back in shape. I hope so. Sure. Yeah, sure. You know the story by now. It's football season, and that means it's time to get comfortable with Bird Dog's Joggers. Hell yeah. That's right. The most comfortable shorts ever made are now available in joggers as well. The Bird Dog's Joggers come in khaki, what? navy, what? and what? black. These things are moving quick, so get on it now. Yes. Go to birddogs.com and enter promo code PATSBALL, and they'll even throw in a free Bird Dog's Whistle Tip Football with your order. That is a Bird Dog's Whistle Tip Football alongside your order. When you use promo code PATSBALL, at birddogs.com. Uh, by the way, whistle tip football is the coolest thing on earth. Yep. Yeah. I saw yeah. Michael Vick throw this thing out of uh, out of a stadium one time. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty similar football as that one. Yep. yep. Just added Bird Dogs logo on it. Pretty mm-hmm. cool. Wow. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. cool. Pretty cool. Oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> Incomplete. No, I think he caught it on the wall. Originally <laughs> counted. Unfortunately. <laughs> What happened? Oh, you lost your headphones. Oh, 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 no. That's a bad throw. That's a bad throw. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's hard to throw that little little whistle tip football Uh because that thing just wants to jump out of your hand. That's right. That thing wants to go. You know what I mean? BirdDogs.com, promo code PATSBALL. That's BirdDogs.com, promo code PATSBALL. And boom, free Bird Dogs whistle tip football along with your pair of Bird Dogs. You will not take these things off. We promise you that. They are incredibly comfortable. They look incredibly professional. You can wear them anywhere and everywhere in the Bird Bird dogs whistle tip. Fuck! Oh no. That I was one. whistling though. That was tough. I tried to catch it by the tail. Uh-huh. Try to grab it by the hind end. Uh-huh. Yep. It's on me. No more catch today. All right, welcome back. <laughs> hey, those joggers are awesome. They are awesome. I tried mine on last night. They are very, very nice. You order a size up though, right? Yes. Yeah. Order a size Unless up. Unless you got chicken legs like me. Size oh, you wear. Smaller. Right? I got a large. Uh, yes, are you kidding me? You definitely. fit in those large? And, yes, and they fit perfectly for me. Which Joining is, us now is yeah. a man whose one leg like, would not be able to fit into Foxy's pants no. ever. Nope. Mm-mm. man who would never drop a bird dog's whistle tip football if it was thrown to him because nope. his hands are immaculate. He runs downhill but has the agility of a ninja with the ball. And all around back to, I think Indianapolis is getting a chance to experience in full force now here in his second year. He has become... The guy in the backfield, ladies and gentlemen, out of the University of Wisconsin, Jonathan Taylor. Yeah! 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 What's up, dude? What's going on, Pat? Hey, you look. Hey, this is like a TV. St- you're in a TV studio right now. Yeah. Hey, thank you for making the show. Hey, <laughs> yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, here you're making go. our show look better right now. We appreciate that, dude. How's life? How are you? You're the guy now in the backfield. I assume last year you guys had a little bit of a split rotation. Now you're getting more of the lion's share of the ball. How's the body feel here going into week seven? 
the body is feeling, feeling great. Um, the coaches, as well as strength and conditioning staff, are doing a great job of communicating, as well as with the players, just to make sure that we're, we're at our peak each and every single week, ready to go. Uh, what has been the difference this year with Carson-led team versus a Phillip Rivers-led team? I know, obviously, you guys started a little bit cold, but the team seems to be getting hot. Here we go. Let's go on a run. I think that's everybody's mindset, especially T.Y. Hilton's back in there. and it seems like pieces are starting to fall into place. But what is the difference, you think, between the attitude of this year's team and last year's team? Is it too early to tell, or have you, have you seen a difference? I mean, one thing for sure, Carson just brings a different dynamic to the team. I mean, it's some looks – and some plays where any quarterback, any other quarterback in the league is, is tackled there. And he somehow breaks out of it. He's looking downfield, trying to complete the pass or taking off for the first down. I mean, he's just incredible. I, do you ever – now, you're so young, and he's much older than you, and he is a quarterback. But did you ever at any point early in the season say to him, like, hey, Carson, you can sprain both your ankles on one play. You can <laughs> you can potentially die out here. Did, did, was there ever a conversation like, Carson, sometimes – has anybody have you heard that conversation happen or is it just you guys have the utmost respect for every single play has to be lived or died with in Carson Wentz's mind? We, we truly 100% trust Carson with all the decisions um, that he makes uh, – it's actually crazy. I've never even heard of that, you know, a guy going out there playing on two sprained ankles. I mean, that just shows the type of toughness he has. Uh, what's he like around the locker room? Has he won over everybody? That's a big deal. You know, last year, I assume you were just trying to find your way. Even though you were a second-round pick, the team's finding it in there. Now you're a little bit more comfortable, I assume, around the building. You're getting the ball a lot. What is the vibe like? Is the culture still there from last year? And whenever you guys weren't playing as well, how did you guys lean? Did you lean on the culture to kind of get you back into good graces here? The, the culture is still alive and well, and, and it's funny that you mentioned that. Because that's something that we did lean on when we weren't playing as well. It was the culture, us playing for the man next to us, us playing for, for the guy next to us that we know near and dear to our hearts. We know this guy. We've, we know about his family. We know about his friends. Um, so that kind of motivated us to go out there and play for each other in practice to get each other better in order for it to show up on game day on Sundays. Uh, when you talk about Frank Reich and Chris Ballard, obviously they have a lot of faith in you. What are your conversations like with them day to day? Is Chris around a lot? Is Frank hands on with the offense? What is it day to day with those two guys? Um, Chris Ballard is always around the building. He's always speaking with players. Uh, and Coach Wright, I mean, he's always, he's in tune with, with the player council. He's in tune with the captains and, and leaders on this team. Um, you really want to be in tune and in touch with your players because it's, it's a two-way street. That's how, you know, everyone wins. We went on the field. We went on the practice field. And also we went in the meeting rooms by being able to communicate. you got to be able to communicate with, with your head guy and be able to let him know how the players are feeling and he lets you know how the coaches and the staff are feeling. How do you feel this year? with, you know, a lot more responsibility in the offensive game plan. You are a pivotal point, not that you weren't last year, but it was kind of like a split backfield because you guys have immense depth in that running back room, which I assume you all take a lot of pride in. But this year, you're you're becoming the guy, the go-to guy, throwing the ball. I mean, you, you're faster than everybody. You're in the backfield. You can run downhill. It seems like you're in every down back. How is that? Is that more pressure, more responsibility? Did you know going into the year it was going to be like this? And how has it kind of been a, to handle? No, it's really just been a week-to-week -week mindset on what am I being asked to do this week you know, in the game plan and how can I prepare myself in order to execute that on Sundays when it, when it matters and when it counts. And that goes into studying each and every single week, going out there, executing in every single practice, as well as getting help from the other guys in the running back room, maybe you know, Naheem. Some of these new plays that I've had, Naheem has run plenty of times before, asking him little tips and tricks, some new run schemes, asking Marlon, you know, you guys ran this, maybe your first year or your second year, how did you go about running this scheme? So it's a collective effort. Marlon Mack, he seems to be so professional with everything that's going on right now. It feels like, are you guys all open about the situation that you're in? Do you just let the business kind of be handled outside the building? Because he's obviously been chatted about being traded for the last couple of weeks, both by the team, I think by him. They're, they're kind of figuring that out. But every time he gets on the field, he seems to make plays. And it sounds like you guys have a great relationship. Do you just try to keep all that out of the building? Is that what you have to do? Yeah, we definitely do. I mean, and if you were to speak to Marlon, you would not even know, you know, what was even going on or the situation just because of how he handled himself in the side of this building. Um, like you said, a true professional, 
um, but he's also down to earth as well. I mean, he's still he still gave us tips and tricks when he was hurt last year. He could have easily gone somewhere, just focused and locked in on his rehab. But he was always texting us, always letting us know good game, a uh, bad game. Here are some tips that, that I can see that can help you guys improve. So he's always been there for us. And right now we're there for him as well. That's amazing to hear, especially as a fan of the team. Is there any running backs that you learned from outside of the building? Any other uh, any running backs that you looked up to maybe as you were coming through Wisconsin and dominating everybody? Is there anybody's game that you try to emulate or do you try to take from a plethora? I try to definitely take a, from a plethora. You know, growing up, I was a guy who watched Adrian Peterson and Arian Foster. And then going through college years, of course, you got the Dalvin Cooks, the Ezekiel Elliott's. Um, those kind of guys, you know, they were dominating in college and then they transitioned to the NFL and was able to dominate at a high level as well. So being able to just take a little bit or study, I should say, from a lot of different great backs. Um, in order to help elevate my game. Any hits hurt you thus far in the NFL? Anything? I assume in college you were able just to run over everybody. Like, all right, this is it. This is it. No big deal. Has there been any shots in the NFL? You'd be like, oh, that's that seems like a guy that maybe has a wife and kids right there. Like, has there been any? <laughs> has there been any of that? Um, definitely, definitely my first year here. I um, mean, it was actually in training camp. Um, it was just versus Darius Leonard, um, which you can't be too mad about because. There aren't many. There's no one like Darius Leonard in the league, so uh, you can't really get too mad about that one. Uh, so I'm glad it was actually Darius and, and not someone else. Man, that would be a hilarious moment. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, this, there's a paycheck on the line here for this particular guy. A little bit different. Go ahead, Ty. Jonathan, you talk about all those guys who were studs in college and then going into the league, and a lot of the guys we talk to, they talk about like the point when the game slows down for them in the NFL. Do you feel like you've kind of reached that point yet? Like, are, th is th are things different now with your vision, and you know when things are going to open up or when you have to be a little bit more patient? Like, has that happened for you yet? Yeah, it definitely did, especially coming in last year when you're learning everything virtually um, and then you have to come in live bullets flying during a modified training camp. Then once you get rolling through the season, I mean, the playbook's constantly changing due to game plan. So once you finally get a grasp of all the little nuances in the playbook, you're kind of able to go out there and not focus on, you know, what to do, but how I'm supposed to do it and how can I do it at a high level. How's the pass pro? Has that been tough trying to learn coverages? Who's coming? Who's not coming? Do you let, does Carson handle that? Does Ryan Kelly handle that? Has that become has that been very natural for you to become a blocker in the back? Yeah, definitely. Carson and, and Ryan Kelly. I mean, those two guys are, are so smart in dissecting the uh, the defense when we're in our passing schemes. I mean, being able to see through disguises. I mean, Ryan Kelly is, is the best center in the NFL. I mean, being able to just you know, see the rotation, look at linebacker depth and just be able to tell, you know, hey, we need to take the point this way. But being able to protect the quarterback is, is one of the number one things uh, besides ball security that you have to be able to do in this league as a running back. If you can't protect your quarterback, he can't trust you and you won't be able to be out there. Hey, Ryan Kelly's a good dude, too. And they, like he, I got him when I tail end of my career. He was young, you know, at the time. So quiet out of Alabama, just seemed to be the coolest dude of all time at all times. And it's nice. He was in a number 69, I think, in the NFL Top yeah. 100. So yeah, it's nice to see him get some shine. And I appreciate you putting him over there a little bit as well. Anything different about the NFL than what you maybe expected when you were coming in? Is there anything that has kind of caught you off guard with the NFL, or is this everything you kind of expected? No, really one of the biggest things was just understanding that, you know, how tough the games are. A lot of times in college you may have some games where, you're like, I I'm pretty sure that we should be able to, to get the job done versus these guys. Uh, and one thing that I learned a lot from the veterans was do not look at anyone's record at all in the NFL because anybody can lose on any, any given Sunday. Urban Meyer said we're playing Alabama every week. It's fucking <laughs> up. Hey, this is unbelievable, man. We got Alabama every single week, dude. And Fangio's like, yeah, welcome to the men's league, pal. Get on out of here. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Jonathan, how big of a difference is it this year, like you said, with the uh, full training camp and everything? And also with hard knocks around, do you ever have to tell people, like, hey, let's just stay back here. I'm going to go on my own and just be by myself for a little bit? Oh, like old school reality TV. Get yeah. the cameras out of my fucking face. <laughs> now. Is there any of that? Is that yeah, that's actually really interesting. I mean, never would I have thought that I'd be on, on a Hard Knocks episode, um, but it's actually been really fun, um, really fun being able to know that I'm going to have the opportunity in the future to go back and look at these practices, look at these meetings, and just see everyone's different thoughts week in and week out, uh, which has actually been really, really fun. Um, but, you know, this year, just being able, um, like I alluded to earlier, being able to go out there and play free. Um, you know, you'll have new things here and there, but those are the kind of only things you need to store in your 
memory bank, but most of the, the playbook has been the same from last year besides, you know, some few tweaks. Any training room love in that hard knocks? You think the equipment managers or training room getting any love on HBO? You got a little bit behind the scenes on what they're filming and what they're not filming. This is the first in season season. So what are we going to see in there, you think? I definitely think they're going to show the training room some love. I mean, those guys, they take care of us each and every single day, not even each and every single week, each and every single day, transporting, moving gear, making sure we have cleats, gloves, any and everything that we need. So it's a must. Yeah, the equipment room over there is hilarious. The training room is a group of good people. I hope they get a chance to really, they are a hilarious bunch of human beings. Go ahead, Tone. Uh, Jonathan, in college, which is absolutely wild in 13 or 14 games, you ran for 2,000 yards every single year you were there, which is insane. Is that like a number that you're striving to in the NFL, or do you set personal goals going into the season? I mean, that shoot, that would be amazing. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to run for 2,000 yards in the NFL? Um, but, you know, each and every single week, like I said, no matter what the game plan is, um, looking to see what am I asked to do this week, what plays am I being asked to execute, how can I go out there and execute at a high level, if not score on those design plays. Oh, you just took like a little, I think it was just a little stop route out there on the side, and you just opened up. Did they tell you how fast you were on that? Did you get a chance? And how about the PMS Untouched uh, touchdown? Did you get a, a bidet as well? Have you got the bidet yet? <laughs> I haven't. They haven't told me how fast I was running. Uh, a lot of people on the sideline, you know, they told me that, hey, JT, you were moving. Moving. Uh, but I'm not sure of the exact number. <laughs> You were moving me. I hope you get the bidet, by the way. You you should have a bidet showing up at your house. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what we are. Yeah. So we've been promoting that you have won a bidet, so we hope you got a bidet. You also want a guy named Steve a bidet, so very, <laughs> very nice. What do you do in the off time when you're not playing football? You just uh, you play video games or anything like that? What are some hobbies? I'll definitely play some video games or watch, you know, space documentaries or YouTube videos. Oh, yeah. Kind of, right. you really got to be able to reset and step away from, from the game a lot of times in order to come back fresh and ready to go. Okay, so have you seen an alien or no? UFO? You said alien? Yeah, UFO. Have you seen the UFO? I have. Okay! What? Now we're getting somewhere. And I don't know how much more time you have. We'll get you out of here. Where at? How often? And is, was that what piqued your interest in the entire uh, what the hell is going on out there? Especially now that it's basically been confirmed that you weren't a lunatic, which I assume you were taken as whenever you first said that you saw a UFO? I actually, the first time, the first I don't know if it was or not. I'm not sure. But maybe it was just because I watched something a little bit beforehand and you know when your mind starts playing tricks on you just a little bit yeah but for the most part it had to be where oh this was and it's crazy because it was actually out in arizona which kind of makes sense oh. um during during the off season so it actually kind of makes sense but i don't tell too many people that because like i said at the same time i'm not even sure but man some things you just haven't seen before and you're like man that's something and there has to be something out there. I mean, there's the, obviously at this point, it's been basically proven by the Pentagon releasing files with the, the UFOs and everything like that. I am so jealous of you. I can't wait to the night that I see something because I always got my eyes to this guy. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you're, hey, you're a shooting star, Jonathan. Oh, yeah. You're probably going to be up there as well. I appreciate everything you're doing for the Colts and can't wait to watch you continue to grow and dominate, boss. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Terry. Yeah! Good guy. Yeah. Yes. Area 51's out there over by Arizona, they say, too. I think it's uh, New Mexico or Nevada. Yeah, but Roswell. Yeah, I guess right it's, all out there in the, it's all out there in the desert. And they move, they move that quick, so it could have been leaving Area 51. Two minutes later, it's in Arizona. Yeah. I was in Arizona, you know, what was that, a couple weeks ago for uh, yeah. SmackDown or whatever? Mm -hmm. I just stared at the sky just for hours at night, like, <laughs> just waiting. Just waiting. Come on. There has to be something up there. Mm -hmm. I keep my eye to the sky all the time. I don't, I don't ever see anything. The only time I saw was that Elon Musk SpaceX. Oh, yeah. That was clearly a UFO or whatever that was flying over. Everybody on the Santa Monica Pier, I think it yeah. was. Yep. And nobody had a clue. They were like, oh, that's just Elon taking off to his planet or whatever. It's like, oh. Okay. I feel like this is what we all are looking for. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So Jonathan Taylor, all right, he's seen a UFO. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. You probably did see one in Arizona, but they probably had their cloaking, you know, Smart. mechanisms going. Well, that's so. what I'm saying. I, they could just dress up like a, a cloud. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Stars. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Anything. Their technology. Anyways, Jonathan Taylor, hell of a football player. Yeah, Very great football player. Let's make sure we don't get that lost in this entire conversation now that I do love him even more, knowing that he is, yeah, I think that was a UFO right yeah. there. Yeah. Sounds I like, like that. That's sounds great. Sounds like they might have zapped him, too. Hey, forget Whoa. this. Whoa. Oh, you think it was forget a, this. looking at this thing, right? Yeah. Man in black. Mm-hmm. 
I was watching another thing. What's that? That had some things that happened in it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is this actually happening? Squid Game. Oh. oh. By the way, that's why I can't watch Dateline anymore. So I watch Dateline, and as soon as the person that did it pops up on the screen, that's the person. Okay, it's like 10 minutes into an hour, maybe an hour and a half mm -hmm. show. That's the person. Boom. Turns out in the end, it is. I saw that uh, Avengers uh, yeah. Endgame. Infinity War. The, the thing. Then I was asked what's going to happen in the next one. Boom. This is it. Squid Game episode yeah. what? Two, I think. Early. Episode two. Oh, I know exactly what's happening with this whole thing. Then they, they threw me off. Yeah. They threw me off the set. Uh-huh. That was a great series, though. It is good. Very good. I am a massive fan of Squid Game becoming as big as it is. Mm -hmm. Because just like I said last week when we were talking about this, it's cool to see, like, that was Korean crea uh, created, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the opposite side of the world. Being able to relate with a great lip dub. Great lip dub. Done. Oh, you did you a lip, lip dub. dub version. No. Not, not the captions. Well, I did captions, yeah, but they were also speaking English. Yeah, so, you did lip dub. Yeah, I did the lip dub version, yeah. Yeah, yeah. way better. Way better. What are you talking about? What so are you guys they, doing? They, they no, say no, no, no. that the Korean's better because you get the voice like different. Inflection. But the, but the dub version's way better. I didn't even contemplate with yeah. not doing the it. dub oh, yeah. was so bad what I, I disagree i watched the first 20 minutes in dub i couldn't do it i had to change because of what the dub was saying didn't See, match i thought the feeling. dub was done better than any dub in history i actually oh, thought I, it was like I a a pivotal a uh, pivotal moment yeah. in lip dubbing in mu movie history because every time i've seen um like I, I think a Korean movie won an Oscar. Parasite. Parasite. Yeah. Parasite yeah. And, and said like if you could just get over whatever there. But also the lip dub back in the day was so. B I did not even. I thought oh. Korean. You words. guys listen to that thing in oh, Korean yeah. the entire oh, time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thousand percent. You bet. <laughs> I tried the lip dub. I couldn't do it. I don't mind it. I mean, it's just like watching a foreign film. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but you are obviously much more intelligent <laughs> than I am. There's no way I could listen. Well, to but that. I, I did hear that though. I think Connor actually told me he's like, I tried the lip dub. You're going to hate it. You can't do it. So it's I didn't terrible. even try. No, it's not. It's terrible. I completely disagree. I could not disagree more. That was actually one thing that I kept thinking during the entire thing. Like, yeah. this is clearly a lip dub, but this is better than it's ever been before. It, you can look away, too. It. You can look away. Yeah, just read the goddamn captions and while they're speaking in your language. Nah, can't do it. <laughs> Feed me the Korean. I want this exactly how it was supposed to I be. I understand. I understand respecting the art and appreciating that, but I think they put a lot of work into the lip dub as well. Oh, maybe not enough, I would say. But uh, hey, that's it. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> wrong. We're on different I think pages. I think you were wrong there. I do. I honestly believe you were wrong there, but I enjoyed that there, everything that... You know, it related so well to people, like, everywhere, I oh, assume. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing for the, uh, you know. The world. The world. Society. Yeah. Good for Netflix, too. Well, that's yeah. a, very good You could say. Netflix currently got something going on over there. Oh, Is that yeah. right? Oh, what? Yeah, they're having, uh, some of their employees are protesting. Yeah, Netflix. they're staging walkouts oh. today. Because of gonna, Squid Game? No, 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 no Squid no. Game was the problem. People getting their heads blown off uh, in startling fashions and that whole thing. Nothing. Chappelle. Dave. What Chappelle was saying, yeah, because mm -hmm. a lot of people who work for Netflix are saying, "Well, the the company that I work for and help is allowing jokes that are meant to be funny, mm. that are terrible things in perpet whatever the case is, and they're walking out." This is just like what happened to Spotify, by the way, with Rogan. When Rogan had a guest on that, and Spotify basically said, uh, "Hey, you can walk out. We're going. We Rogan's going to stick around yep, here. Sure that's a lot of money and I think that's there. what Netflix is doing as well in this whole thing. But it's becoming a thing. Netflix is becoming a, the Netflix walkout's becoming a thing. I'm sure, there's a lot of people who'd be fine taking those jobs. Well, that is probably what the Spotify uh, bosses, whoever uh -huh. they are, Brett. said mm -hmm. to whenever the Joe Rogan thing happened. And I assume that is exactly what uh, Netflix people are going to say as well. Unless because I think they've come out and said uh, we like Chappelle a lot. Actually, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did they actually listen to the stand up? Well, I think, you know, because in it, he was actually addressing. Yeah, verbatim. So if they would have, I think if they would have walked out, protested after the second one for their ang angers or whatever. Yeah. I think a lot more people would be understanding because in the last one, he literally. Eviscerated. Talked, well, he talked exactly about this. And I don't know. I, I'm not telling people what they can get offended by. You know, mm -hmm. I get offended by stuff. Everybody gets uh, offended by things that, you know, kind of trigger them. 
But I am saying in the past, this has not worked for the employees that have walked out. This has not been a, uh, this has not been a beneficial protest in other places when similar things had happened before. But hey, I like it. Hey, I like to take a stand. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Do. So are you going to get, so then that leads into, you know, art and, you know, things like that. Like what is and what isn't is some, you know, and this just opens an entire, you know, can of, Pandora's box. Yep. Yeah. Whenever you're talking about art and creativity and everything like that, that's ah, a fascinating world. That's why we just stay in ours. Yeah. I did watch Squid Game, though. I'm sorry to protesters. I might watch it back. <laughs> I might watch it back, too. Just get a couple little... Uh, yeah, do it in Korean this time. Um, no way. You should try it. <laughs> All right. We're back in 10 minutes. Nope. Yeah, we're back in six minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hour two on the other side with AJ Hawk. We can't wait for your phone calls. one 833 4 We'll see you in six. Cheers. Unbelievable rap rap sheet of guys I almost hit with my car. And like I literally almost <laughs> wait. I thought you were gonna say in the ice. I thought you were gonna say you hit Wayne You're on the ice. No, car that, 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 that. What the fuck I, are you doing? I, I shit you not. And where I'm from in, in you know Midwest or Cleveland, when I grew up, the crosswalks, man. When you're a pedestrian, you look out for cars in New Jersey and New York. No, 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 no. Like people just come out and it's your, the cars have to look out for people, right? That was an adjustment for me. So I'm going and all of a sudden there's this dude in the crosswalk and I slam Johnny Oduya goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. I slam the brakes on. I'm not kidding you guys this far away. I look, this guy's got his hat on a backpack over his shoulder and he goes like this. He goes and waves to me and we both lean forward and Johnny goes, and I look at it and I go, is that fucking Eli Manning? And he's like, it is, it is. I mean, we trucked Eli. And that's the year the Giants, <laughs> that's the year the Giants won the Super Bowl. So thank you very, you know, you're welcome, I guess, to Giant fans out. And then uh, two years before that, I was in Columbus playing for the Blue Jackets. I was taking my kids to a, a, a circus uh, that was at the Nationwide Arena. And they got the practice arena inside it. And I'm late, I'm ripping around this parking garage. You know how you do that, going up and up and up. I come around this corner, slam the brakes on. I almost hit Wayne. I Barry Smith, Wayne Gretzky, <laughs> I, like a foot away from both of them. Almost truck them again. You guys are not gonna believe me. I'm playing for the Rangers. Okay, this was in 2012. What the fuck are you again? doing, up for? I, I, at the practice <laughs> rink, at the practice rink for the New York Rangers, we shared with the New York Knicks. I'm late for practice. I don't want torts to give me shit. So I'm flying in. The gate opens. I punch the code. Gate opens. I'm flying down the parking spot. Turn a corner. Almost hit Rasheed Wallace. And he he gave me the hairy eyeball, and we gave each other stare down like we might go in the parking lot right now. Like it was awkward. Hey, I assume you're somewhat of a local hero in the New York, New Jersey area because of the the Stanley Cup goal and everything with the Devils, and you had you had some years with the Rangers. You threw some fists there. You were a heart and soul kind of guy. You hit Eli Manning in a crosswalk. You're dead. They're gonna string you up in the street. Well, how about like how about if I if I hit <laughs> If I hit one of them and I and I grazed another, then people are like, "This fucking guy's targeting super." <laughs> like you know what I mean? Fucking like AJ Hawk on the fucking road, <laughs> Rupper. Jesus. <laughs> whenever you're working on golf, do you still have the same routine that you had whenever you were younger now, or is it much different? And how often do you just go down there and just hit Phil Mickelson flop shots all day? <laughs> but anytime you turn one sideways and you flatten it, you're like, oh, watch this, I'm gonna do it like Phil Mickelson does. And then you just go out there, normally you either blade it, yep. hit it straight up in the air <laughs> to the right, or you somehow get lucky and it goes and everybody's like, oh my God. Incredible shot. Phil Mickelson, wow. that's what I, that is, that is kind of become, and I remember you hit the one over your head that one time, that was a mind blower for me. Is is the short game something you've always just been good at or are you good at it because that's all, you work like so much on it at all times? When I was a kid, my dad had a little chipping area in our backyard and putting green. And so I would just go out there and hit balls because I couldn't really go to the golf course. And all I did was shots inside 30 yards. And it got very monotonous to hit the same shot over and over. So I'd go behind the avocado tree. I'd go uh, back around the, the, the other trees and, and bushes and rough and so forth. And so I, I would get creative as a kid hitting those shots. And you kind of learn, um, you kind of learn a couple of things. But what I would say, Pat, is that there's really only way, one way to chip effectively because 
you're coming in with no coverage on the ball. You're coming in with so much loft that the leading edge is coming in first. So you have to have your weight forward. That's it. You have to have your weight forward and drive the club down into the ground. And most people, when they when they do that, their hands either come back or their weight comes back and the leading edge comes up and blades it. Now, you can kind of flip your hands a little bit if you have a good lie. Like if the ball's sitting in the first cut or it's sitting up, but that technique will not work all the time. And so uh, that's why I, I prefer and believe that the technique where you have your weight forward, your hands forward, and you drive the club down to the ground will be consistent every time. So lay that club flat, move that ball off your left toe, get that ball off your front left toe, there you go, and open that face flat and just drive the club down into the ground, the ball will pop up like a gym. I think I'm a scratch golfer. Yeah. Let's go! <laughs> I think, I, I think I, it makes sense, by the way, that your childhood was spent within 30 yards of a green. Um, my childhood was spent kicking a soccer ball off the side of a house. Worked out for me, it's worked out for you much better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I assume Raj had to walk in there and do a full, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, curtsy. Hey, I'm, we're coming. We're bringing a, a big sports stooge thing over here. Is that okay? Yep, deal. Perfect. Let's get some tea. Let's get the fuck out of here. How do you think that went between Raj and the clean? You think she liked them? Yeah. yeah. I bet she liked them. She probably knows a lot. Like, what if she's sitting there and then all of a sudden she's like, so what about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? That was a spot on accent. Right? Get that one out of the park. Like, what if she's dude. really dialed in to the NFL? <laughs> The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. Hour two on this beautiful Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, October 20th, 2021, years after zero. We'll begin right now. Shout out to all you listening and watching, wherever the hell you may be, whether it's Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, <coughs> or YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. Tone Diggs is here, the host of Hammer. Dodge Dan. goes live 15 minutes after every single show ends right here uh, at YouTube.com forward slash Hammer. Dan. Dan. How you guys doing? We, we so hot betting you? Yeah, I hit a uh, plus 2,000 same game NBA parlay last night. Yeah. Let's go! Tony Sharps to do it, Tony Sharps to do it, Tony Sharps to do it, do it, do it. Do you really know the basketball? Uh, no, that was pretty much a. Uh, so, Fandle yesterday, Fandle, great company. Great company. Best. Was doing a $50 risk free same game parlay for an NBA game. So Are you I, serious? So we should have been pumping the shit out of I that. found out Doring hammered down, so I let everyone know who was listening to that about it, and I put one in and it got fucking lucky. And hey, let's go. Hey, hey, baby, Tony. Hey. What was it? Who was it? It was between the Bucks and the Nets. I had, the, obviously, the under for the game, the under points for Brooke Lopez, the under points for... Um, Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown. Uh, Bryson Allen. That's not his name. Grayson. Grayson Allen. Bruce Brown was playing? Yeah, Bruce Brown. Yeah. Real guy. It was like five unders for the game. <laughs> That's unbelievable. You love bad sports, yeah. and I'm happy you get to cash in on it. He seems to win, by the way. Oh, so yeah. what's that say about the society of sports? He's say. also being very humble right now. He hit a massive plus $1,900 uh, odd parlay on Monday night. For Let's Monday go, yeah. Tom! Legitimately. Hold on, so your parlays are hot, so... Well, that's good news for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, should be. That's good news for tomorrow. And it seems as if tomorrow could be an under play. Yeah. So this is right in what we like to call Tone's wheelhouse. Oh. <laughs> Tony Alley. Oh, Tony oh. Lane. Right down Tony we'll Lane. See. Tony <laughs> Alley. Tone's wheelhouse. A shitty game of football on the horizon, which mm -hmm. our same game parlay is going to hit because I, it does sound like the council has at least one member in it. That is incredibly hot in yeah. the same game parlays. That's good news. At Boston Connors here. Ty Schmidt is here and joining us from an attic in Ohio. Uh, college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup champion. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hall. Hey! Hey! 
What's up, dude? What's happening, guys? Good for you, Diggs. I didn't know you were that hot. Me Thank neither. you, AJ. Hey, by the way, how about him finding the $50 risk-free same-game parlay? Tone, good eye. That's what you... Hey, hunting through the sports book is a massive part of sports gambling. And if you don't have the time to do it, guess who does? At Tone Diggs and at Bubba Gumpino, the other co-host of Hammer. Damn. What's up, Gumpy? I believe that uh, promo is still available tonight for NBA okay. as well. Oh, mm -hmm. so there's NBA games tonight? Yeah. That's okay, right. we'll talk to Shams about that in about 24 minutes. We will mm -hmm. ask you, did you watch the NBA last night? Big tip-off, AJ. No, I was. I mean, I, I didn't get to see it. I was definitely anticipating. I was very aware that it's going on and basketball is here. And, uh, yeah, there's a game tonight. I'm, I'm guessing there's games now for uh, the next, what, six to nine months? That's right. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I have no yeah. idea. Honestly, I have no idea. I thought they were potentially still in preseason. And then I saw last night, no, everybody's playing. There was photos of pregame outfits surfacing oh, on the internet. I yeah. was like, okay, so this is actual season. Oh, yeah, GB. I know. Yeah, JB was not yeah. happy. But there was, I mean, that is, that's when you know you're back in regular season because nobody's bringing these fits to preseason games. No, uh -huh. no, no. Russell Westbrook actually said a couple weeks ago, it's preseason. <laughs> okay, I'll worry about this in regular season if this happens. Nobody really cares. I don't think about preseason uh, basketball. I thought we were still check ball, check ball, check ball, ball game. I didn't know that the regular season was happening until about halfway through last night's game. I think that's something we should have covered yesterday. That's 100% on me. Braun played great. Rest of the team, not so much. Mm -hmm. Lakers are going to win probably. They're going to play against the Nets. Yep, that's right. And also everybody knows once like Christmas – happens yep, and I think we've is. all said on this show it should probably start on Christmas that's when NBA really hits its yeah, stride because they can whoop, 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 you know what I mean like the they can um, they can have the games for the live events for the ticket sales that they need exactly right like Staples is that what it's still called it's, it's gonna happen I was actually thinking that last night as I oh shit this game's on this is awesome I'm like where are they oh they're at the Staples Center I'm like that's a hell of a sponsorship deal by Staples by the mm -hmm. way that that building is just known as the Staples Center if it changes I think it would be pretty it's like Sears the Sears Tower True. Yeah. yeah it's like Sears oh, yeah. the which is now Seattle called change what? too the Willis what's that Seattle change what is the what's the Seahawks new stadium name Qualcomm no, Century Link. The yeah, Link. Century Link. Yeah, but I think Link Staples anymore. has been. Yeah, but I, I don't think that's as like. I mean, it is a loud place. I understand Staples Center. Yes, it, it's Lou Field being a now. sponsor thing. It's not like hey, MSG is Madison Square Garden. That's not a sponsor. That's the name of the building. But yeah, when you hear Staples Center, you just think that's the building. Yeah, you think that's a building. That's how long they've been the sponsor of that thing. But everywhere, just like to your point, what you said, Seattle's changes their name. We used to have the Bankers Life Fieldhouse, and yeah. now it's like Grander Field, Grand, like whatever it is. It's like kind of an it, Lucas Oil Stadium. When this changes, that'll be an interesting change. Yeah. Mm. It feels like Staples Center in L.A. with the one of the most popular teams in history has remained some. Does anybody go to Staples? You guys still going to Staples? I just I assume they closed like 3,400 yeah. Staples yeah. every single year. They, and it's just, did, they just try to get as much money as needed to remain the sponsor yeah. of the Staples Center. <laughs> they still have paper. I don't so. go to big box paper stores. I get it from a nice <laughs> local establishment. That's very nice of you. That's I'm very nice. I mean, hopefully they've gotten their online game man. Going. What's that? Hopefully they've gotten their online, you know, they have they sell enough online to make it because you know they're brick and mortar stores, I doubt. As Diggs says, he doesn't visit big box stores like that. Yeah, that's classic. <laughs> this is classic like red box best buy that's uh, right. stream situation. I just saw it on yep. here, uh, lifetime agreement. Oh. Oh. So, 1999 they changed it. 2009 it was due up and then they did a lifetime rights to Do the they have center. any money on that? Uh, do they know what the number? Uh, it just, the first number on here says 100 million. So per that year. I don't know how long that would be. Lifetime yeah. Paid out over, what, 50 years, you think? Yeah, what's lifetime? Is that at the, as long as the building stands, so they would have to build a new building? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, if they the want it out, I guess, did. what do they have to do? Yeah, especially if the company's out of business. Mm -hmm. And let's say, like, a sports book company comes along in Los Angeles and has the Lakers in there and goes, oh, I would like to make this building our building. This would be an awesome Fandle Center. Mm. Yeah. How much does that cost? Well, we got to dig up the Staples Company. They're out. They're dead. Let's go find out how much this would be worth. That's a fascinating thing. But no matter what the case is, watching LeBron play good basketball, cool. I watch him as highlights on the internet. I guess Carmelo Anthony was getting up shots. He was, oh, he yeah. was putting up shots. Tom He's Payton. back. That's awesome. But right now, it's football season. And tomorrow night, yeah. AJ, for our risk-free same-game parlay where we have hot tone, on these same game parlays, part of the council, so hopefully going to get one that takes a lot of money. Kind of a game that is shaping up to be a what the fuck fest. Uh, the Browns are out, everybody, it seems like. The Broncos just had that situation against the Raiders where they looked absolutely terrible. They've been kind of on a, a free fall there. Your thoughts, AJ, early thoughts looking at tomorrow night's 
Thursday night football. So the Browns, are they still the favorite here? Yes, yes. they are yes. now minus two. Yeah, it's okay. right. it was at three and a half, I think. Then it moved to two and a half. Now it's at two, and everybody's expecting it to continue to drop potentially. Well, I think the fact that we don't have – your expectations have been knocked down. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe it's going – you know, when you – you hear me talk about this all the time when it comes to movies and stuff. My expectations now are like, ah, you know, I, of course, yeah, I'll watch, but I'm not expecting much. I think it's going to be a barn burner. It's going to be a fun game. And mm. Coach JB is predicting a big night for Case Keenum as well. So I'm going to be keep an eye out for that. Yeah, and we will obviously chat with Coach JB on <laughs> Friday about his potential celebratory tour if Case Keenum – Case Keenum's a good ball player. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. it is. Case yeah. Keenum's a good ball player. Now, I haven't seen him since the Minneapolis Miracle – Yes. Okay. I haven't. I don't think I've seen him since then. Uh, that was a hell of a throw to Stephon Diggs, who's still catching great balls for the Buffalo Bills now. Oh, and Case Keenum was where in Washington, I think. No, he has been in Washington. I thought he was in Denver for a little. He was. He's played for like eight teams. But after that Minnesota thing, he got a deal somewhere. He did. I don't remember was it if Denver? it was Washington. I thought. And was he with Stefanski when yes. when he was in Minnesota? Yes. Oh, so maybe a recon. Yeah, he was with. The it was Minnesota, line. Denver for a year, Washington for a year, now the Browns. He's, but he's a good player, I think. Right? Like I think yes. he's a good player, especially with a good if he well if he can be protected. Uh, wow. Von Miller's coming for him. We know that much, and we know we have guys banged up all over the place. But if he has any weapons to throw to, he could be all right. Von Miller said he doesn't know who he's playing against, but he knows he's going to kill him. Mm-hmm. All right, I, I, listen, I, I don't know who the fuck they're putting at tackle. Either of them, I don't think they know yet either. Short week is interesting, especially with guys who were maybe dinged up last weekend and you held them out. Like, okay, well, is the extra three days going to help out here? Or do you just hold them so they can get another 10-day rest, basically? What is the decision made there? Offensive tackles out. Von Miller said, I don't know who it is, but I'm, I play good in this game. This is what happens. And I'm excited to watch. And I think that potentially is a part of the same game parlay, Ooh. if I had to guess. If I had to guess, he's going to be success. Because you're not coming out and saying that if you're Von Miller and not having a good game, right? feels like Von Miller will probably back up what he's saying, right? You would hope. I mean, he's maybe he put that out there for himself to, to motivate himself. He's like, hey, I said this already. I better go out here and get four and a half sacks. I love that, by the way. If you got to do that to motivate yourself so that maybe you feel as if you have to public accountability uh, uh, yourself into something where if I, don't, if I put this out there, that means everybody's going to expect me to do it. He's going to kill him. And maybe, <laughs> maybe Cleveland's Kevin Stefanski is like, Oh, is that right? All right, we don't have a lot of players, but I know we got three at least. We got a running back chipping you, we got a tight end chipping you, and we got a tackle that is potentially going to be focused on you. And then the other side's going to eat over there for Denver, uh, which is uh, Bradley Chubb, but I think he's hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's going to win this game. I have no idea who wins this game. I have no clue at all. If they do triple, like say they do triple and chip Vaughn all the time, he's like, hey, I I already won. You, You, my tweet got in your head and you put so much attention on me that the rest of my guys are now getting huge well, numbers. Now Vaughn knows it's not just his tweet too. You watch Vaughn, it always seems like he is celebrating. In that golf outing he did with Caleb Presley, mm-hmm. did you see how big Vaughn, I had no idea Vaughn was that big. I, I We talked about this I think a week ago maybe or two weeks ago when it came out. I had no idea that Vaughn Miller was that much of an absolute stud. That team over there, fascinating run because I think they expect a lot of success. I think Denver Broncos fans expect a lot of success. And remember, when Aaron was going to get traded to the Broncos that for like three, three, four weeks there, real, he was going to Denver. That was an actual thing. They were talked about as, oh, that team goes into Super Bowl contention with yeah. that roster and everything like that. And then they start this season 3-0. and Here we go. The Denver Broncos found a guy in Teddy Bridgewater. It seems like everything's going well. And then a lot of people who are naysayers of the Broncos were like, wait, it's the Jags, Jets, and the Giants is who they have played against. So let's let's go ahead and remember who they played against, who their wins were. And it's kind of turned a little bit. It's kind of gone a different way. And this last weekend against a Raiders team that I think was going to win maybe against anybody yeah. with everything that happened over there, they did not have a great showing. And maybe the recency bias is people thinking the Broncos are actually worse than they are. I don't know. I have no idea about tomorrow night's game, honestly. Go ahead, Ty. Well, no, I was just going to say, I would assume, too, with Keenum, like him at full health is better than however banged up Baker is. Like I, But then I remembered as well, they they have almost no weapons playing in the game. Like it's, no I don't know. No running backs. Mm-hmm. No receivers. No receivers. I mean, Austin Hooper probably Potentially over. both yeah. tackles out. Their pets heads OBJ are setting off. up a big day for Odell. Enjoy but we don't know if he's playing. He's on the injury report. He's got a AC He hasn't practiced. He hasn't practiced all week. Is it his shoulder? Yeah. 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 Joint. From the early, the first tackle I think he took, it might have been first quarter or second quarter, and they had him off, helmet off. He was getting it tested. I was like, oh, 
fuck. I hope something didn't happen. Then he came back and literally just got targeted. So it was an eight, it was a torn labrum guy thrown at the sprained AC joint guy for the Cleveland Browns this past weekend, and they did not. They got manhandled by the Arizona Cardinals through that entire thing. So I just. I don't know anything about either of these teams is what I'm saying. And I don't think anybody does. I, I think high hopes early. Now it's like, what's going to happen? The Browns, as Diggs loves to talk about, is the bottom of the division there, the AFC North. I mean, it is. It's, it's banana land for these two teams, I assume, and their fan bases are probably very confused. I mean, I have no idea. I would imagine out of all the Thursday night games so far, is this, the, uh, is this on pace to be like the, the least watched? Jags, Bengals. Yeah. What? Jags, Bengals kind of stunk, and Seattle Rams kind of stunk as well after Russ got hurt. Next week, though, cards but Rams, packed. Seattle was huge. Like, I feel like yeah, hype yeah. leading into that. Mm -hmm. Hey, cards packed next year, next week. That's, yes, that's a great one. That mm -hmm. is yeah. a great one. Yeah. I, I Hey, how about there's a lot of teams on by this week? And I guess I'm, I'm just kind of moving along. The, the season's moving. So it's already October 20th. Yeah, I mean, wild. this is. Mm. This is insane that this is already happening, but this feels like an early bye week, and there's already been teams on bye weeks, especially with the 17-game season. I wonder how they spread those out and how they choose who gets to go. So there's some good teams on a bye week right now that have a long, long stretch ahead. I used to always think they put the good teams in the middle so that they could get the fairest treatment or whatever, but I've been on the wrong end of an early bye week, and then a late bye week as well is almost like so far out of sight, out of mind, guys kind of get – defeated mentally do you think this is early or right about the right time i mean it does feel a little bit early but it's all like you could schedule your buy like if you if you were able to schedule your buy every year as a coach like you'd probably try to do it in the middle but it all depends on your team like the timing like for the cowboys beautiful timing you got dak now you give him a big break he needs it so for them it comes at the perfect time others you know they may not need it right now what you do with your bye weeks uh come back to ohio usually just hang out a few days yeah me too. I go to the Chop beach. House, you know. <laughs> oh, you, you hey, know sounds like Chop House is not the place to go on an extended weekend, you know, no. especially not after a Thursday night football. Yeah, they're on a buy. The Jags are on buy this week. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. No, no, eyes. Let's keep eyes on my. Uh -oh. Let's keep eyes <laughs> yeah. on my. Somebody get an eye on that guy. They just want a game. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. What do you tell He's the team? He's national title emotions. What does he tell the team? You think like when he's like, "All right, guys, we're gonna have Be two smart. or three days off." Everybody says, "Be smart." You know, this one guy's getting trouble. Okay, let's remember that football. We're still in the middle of the season, but get away, get away, get away, relax, because the coaches are going to too. Shit, the coaches are. We'll ask Chuck about this, but this is kind of how it felt every time it was talked about. Get away, but let's be smart. You know, that whole thing. Urban Meyer's up there. Like, hey, boys, it's go time. See you guys in ten days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna get so fucked up. So fucked up. <laughs> right, listen, three things. Three things. Yeah. <laughs> he does seem to be a big counter when he gives speeches, huh? Because he wants people to remember these three takeaways from the speech. I don't know. Uh, sure. Oh yeah. I haven't know, seen all these talks he's been given in the locker. I, don't, I haven't seen all the clips either. I've seen him. I've I've seen him speak at events. I don't remember him doing like the number system. There were some people saying that it didn't look like the team was all in. Uh, I would like, you know, there were some people that were after well, the what game. Do you think? Maybe. What do you think, Pat? It looked like the team was – I don't think that looked like a team that would, you know, was completely out on a coach, you know? And maybe it's just because I'm a little bit of a different human, I guess, the way I would act if we were all out on a coach. The things I think I would feel free to say if I knew it was – Hey, the entire pack feels this way. I think it would be a little bit different, but it looked like they were in with them. You know, it looked like they were in with them a little bit. Some people said it did look like they didn't have as much respect for him, which I guess if you looked at a couple of different guys in that moment, who knows what they're going through too. They might have had a bad game, even though team won. You know, I just, I don't know. It was hard to get a read on that. I think I need to see a couple more. Yeah, I think as the season goes, we'll, we'll learn a lot more, I guess, from that. But I bet there's a lot of players that aren't really sure what, how they can, like, how they can feel at least out like publicly for people to see like, Hey, uh, are we looking around to the vets? Like, are we in or, like, am I clapping now? Or what are we doing? I bet there's a lot of young guys doing that. The story is like next year, two years, three years from now from people oh. that are maybe on the team, just one year here, you know, and they aren't a part of the long-term plans, their views on how things are going will be, you know, paid attention to. Yeah. I, I would assume they would have paid attention, but what if they liked it? What if they said, hey, listen, True. he owned it. We liked him. We were all in. We don't. We have no idea, I think, at this point yet. And what, if they say, like, hey, yeah, as soon as we saw those videos, it was basically a free reign for us. So it was a pretty easy season. Yeah, he couldn't, couldn't really discipline us. We kind of knew that. <laughs> kind of couldn't really take anything he said serious whenever he talked about accountability and stuff like that. But 
I like. Hey, we like them. Good guy. Hey, good. I mean, I was getting boozed up damn near every night because I knew if I came in hung over, he was right there with me. Hey, you, where's that IV that you get? <laughs> I need one of those Urban Myers. Imagine how bad that would be if you were the head coach and you did lose the team and you knew, like, you your first time you realize it in practice, you're trying to tell somebody that they can't do something like a vet, like, hey, man, you need to run through the line, and the guy just stares at him, would, and then you see the rest of the team just start to. You have know, you um, ever be been here? What? Have you ever been in one of those? No. Luckily, I have not. I've only heard these legendary stories of these moments happening. Like, yeah, this guy would blah, 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 blah. And literally, they would stand, laugh in his face and then walk away. I'm like, what? That, yeah. Right here. That would a team meeting. It would happen. This person would stand up. Boom. I ain't doing it. And keep it moving. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I've never seen it, though. I couldn't even fathom how tough that would be because you're forced to stand in front of everybody every day. You're forced to. And then your decisions are now being judged with that in mind that they don't like. I mean, that would be a tough thing. That would be a very tough thing. But, hey, you made your bet. You know, they, I would assume that something would have had to have happened if you lost the players completely as a locker room. That's tough to do, I think. Don't you think? Oh, it's abs- It's very tough because all those guys, they, they want to like you. They want you to like they, – they want the coach to like them and respect them because they want a job. They want to be there if it's not just the worst situation ever, you know. There's some guys that may have some freedom. Like, hey, I don't like it here. I'm going to try to find a way to get a trade or whatever. But there's very few players on the team that, that have that kind of control over their career. Yeah, most people very pumped to have a job. And also, hey, if we win and I do well and this guy leads us to some, we're all going to make money. Like, it's all, it's mm-hmm. all going to get better for everybody. So no matter what your motive is, having a great relationship with your head coach is probably a good thing. But I'll tell you what, once you lose that relationship, probably a bit jaded out there. Now, a lot of people are just going to do whatever the fuck he says because they're just trying to have a job. Hey, I'm just here for like three weeks. I know it. You know it. It's game check. This is awesome. I'll do whatever the hell you want to say. But then overall in the culture forever, how's it go? Excited to see how Urban does that. We did not expect this to become an all eyes, all my during the bye week conversation. We were just talking about the upcoming slate with the bye weeks. This seems early. Uh, they, they got a long road. Like the Steelers, for instance. They have a bye week this weekend. Ben Roethlisberger is going to have to make a 10-week run yep. straight into the most important time of the year and then another six weeks or four weeks, whatever it is, after that to get after the super wild card and mm-hmm. the whole thing. I mean, this is that's a long road that you're banking on being healthy for, you know? Yeah, I mean, you just honestly, I feel like you got to go into the season. Like when I was in college, we didn't have bye weeks. They have bye weeks now, but I would just go into the season feeling like we don't have a bye week. Like my mentally and physically, I need to prepare. Like it doesn't matter. There's no break. What? The ne- the five or four days. The, okay, the the extra five days you get from a bye. Hey guys, take some time off. Get healthy. Guess what, bud? If I'm hurt, five days doesn't get me healthy. Like that's <laughs> yeah. not the case. That's not how it works. Yeah, I can feel a little bit better. Maybe my legs feel better. But guess what? When we come back in our first practice from the bye, my legs are going to feel terrible and they're going to be dead because I've been out of this for four days. I was about to say, I used to feel like I couldn't punt when I didn't punt for five straight days in the middle of the season. And I, I know, like I've talked to Shane Leckler, and I guess Leckler was able to just not punt for like four months and then just show up and just bomb <laughs> balls. And I am so incredibly impressed by that level of savagery. Like, I love Shane Leckler as a human and as a punter. I watch a lot of his film, but I realized quickly that we are not very similar whenever he was, I was hearing these stories about him. For me, if I didn't punt for four days, I'm like, all right, I lost it. I've lost it completely. I would actually punt on my bye weeks at places I was at, which, I mean, was probably a pretty good show. I'm getting, I'm getting a call from Frank Reich. Come on, oh, Frank. Uh, show. Answer it live. Answer it. Well, no, I can't, Shannon Sharp. I can't. I can't. Yeah, I can't yeah. do that. Well, not on. Turn your mic off. Go to break. He has an event, I think. There's an event coming that I think, which is oh, very nice. Of, answered very it. nice. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, dump this part so he doesn't know. <laughs> I just missed the call. You know, no, no, that ain't it. That ain't it, man. That He's walking it. off the practice field trying to get you to come to this event. <laughs> no, it's not right now. It is in the future. Well, whatever. I know that, but you just don't want to have to be like, oh, yeah, let me check my calendar, coach. Yeah. <laughs> that is, actually, I've had a couple. There has been a couple pre-conversations with other people around the building to get to this conversation that was just about to happen <laughs> right there where I, the, the temperature was set. Like, hey, what, what do you got going on in da-da-da? And I'm like, I have no idea. You know how far away that is? You have, I have no clue what's going on in that month. You think you could potentially – I'm like – that's committing to something that I, that I am. I'm busy. I am not 100% sure. And then I get it. Somebody else hits me up like, hey, just 
I think this is something you should or whatever. I'm like, I love, I love, I just don't want to be the asshole in this whole thing. So it is probably nice that I didn't have to answer that because I, I love that guy. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that guy. I'm a big fan of that guy. Uh, it's just a... Uh, I mean, who the fuck knows what I'm doing in April? Well, you would have ended oh up just God. saying yes, and then who knows what's going on there. And then you just look irresponsible if you have to call back later and say, hey, I actually already had something. I'm a terrible guy. Yeah. April? Plus, it's for a great <laughs> benefit. April. Jesus Christ. What is going to be happening in April? <laughs> Connor's <laughs> shock on people planning ahead is uh, hilarious. Not just Connor, pal. <laughs> How are you supposed to know? What the hell you're going to be doing in April? There might be a goddamn pandemic and the whole world shuts down by then. Anyways, I appreciate yeah. it. And this is probably how these types of things go and how these types mm -hmm. of things have to happen. AJ attends a lot of them. He hosts them. You have to plan these things out to make them great so you can raise a lot of money for incredible causes and make the world a better place. <laughs> I appreciate these types of things. But with that being said, who knows what's going on in April? Yeah, you could be at the Final Four yeah. that weekend. How about that? <laughs> you know? Is that that would be happening in that? That's what people do. That's what they, they, the 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 plan ahead people have to do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. April. I had someone email me today, Pat, and they said we're supposed to do we're supposed to do something this fall, one of these hoity toity events that you call it. Whoa. It, it didn't happen. Couldn't fit it in. So then they sent me an email earlier asking me to throw hey throw out some dates in the spring that we could do this. Oh, and they're gonna like, oh, shape geez. it around your schedule. Wow. That, uh, the amount of pressure now. But it's like, all right, I, same thing, April, May, June, like that's what we're looking at. I'm like, how am I going to give you a, a th let me throw a few dates out there. I have no clue. Uh, I'm not sure. WrestleMania is in April? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. True. Okay, so who the fuck knows sorry, what's going to be happening in my life? No, I'm not sorry. I'm going to try no, no, no. to. Me. I'm sorry for Frank because. Sunday, April 3rd. April's eight decades away. All right. We'll call Frank back. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to. I think we're gonna have to call Frank yep. back. Mm -hmm. I'm happy we just figured that out, though. You know, we just got a glimpse behind shit that pops <laughs> off and happens. <laughs> that was definitely an off-air conversation. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that just got to happen live. You know, that's how the business works. By the way, yeah, we run a company that if you ask us something in April, what are you talking about? <laughs> week to week basis. Six months from now, dude, you are out of your mind. We have no idea what's going. The Daily Show will be still happening. Yeah, 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 but we have no idea how, where, when, nope. what. No, we have no huh. clue. It's insane, AJ. I guess people do that. That's awesome. Yeah. It, it, the people that can do that and they're always, their whole life is planning ahead that far and like scheduling for people, like that is not my, my gig. I have no idea. Like for football, whenever, you know, we were in the league or whatever, it felt like Groundhog Day because you literally, every day, you just show up and I would just, all right, what do I got to do next? I never knew something. And I think Travis Kelsey got caught up in this whenever he was on Monday Night Manning. There was times where I was on Bob and Tom on Tuesday mornings. I had no fucking clue who we were playing on Sunday. No clue. I knew I had a meeting at 7 a.m. the next day, though. That uh -huh. like, all I got is the meeting next morning, 7 a.m. I'm assuming they'll tell me then. And I'll get asked about the team that we're playing, and they would just be, you know, kind of open questions and not giving a name of a person or the team. And it was in that moment I realized, oh, fuck. I have no clue who we're potentially playing this weekend. And you're live on air. You have to talk about it. It's a Colts segment. You know, so Colts fans are listening, so you potentially look like an asshole. But that's how much I am just like, a, hey, what's, what's happening next? And that's probably not great for the long haul. But uh, It's all right. It works. I, I, I feel for you big time. Like when the whole schedule release comes out, oh, how do you feel about your schedule? I don't know. Who do we play after the first game? I don't like that's. I never sit there and plan it out. I would, I would look to see when we were in like Denver. If we're oh, yeah. in Denver, is that a later game, an earlier game? When do I get a chance to just blast moon rockets? Mm -hmm. uh, when am I in Buffalo? You know, mm, is that? Yeah. And I tweeted this out one time that we were in Buffalo. I think the Colts were in Buffalo either uh, late or early or something like that. And I tweet, I forget what it ended up being. It might have been the snow game. Vinatieri kicked that extra point in. Uh, that was insane. If thing broke like half an upright or whatever. I tweeted that it's, you know, it's better to get Buffalo early or whatever. And the Bills Mafia fans took offense to it. Like, oh, you don't think we're loud and it's a tough place to play early in the season? It was like, well, no, my rookie year, we actually played in a fucking blizzard. And yeah. there was 27 inches of snow being plowed off the field in between quarters. That is quite a disadvantage to the punter and the kicker. That mm -hmm. is what uh, I was thinking about. But there are some places you got to check out. But in Green Bay, that's what? The worst of the worst. Like, people are looking. You you had to be looking at least a little bit of when you're going to the domes, right? Are we going to the domes late? 
Uh, yeah, we would. I mean, we would always be you know, in Detroit and Minnesota, so you want to see when those games are. But you'd always, yeah, you'd want to see if you're playing down in Florida or California uh, in the you know winter time, so you could get a little bit of sun. And on the flip side of like the Buffalo thing, when are you playing Miami? Yeah. Are you playing Miami early when it's 250 degrees? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, we train too. It's hot where we're at. It's like, yeah, but it isn't. It isn't tropical hot like like oh. Miami has down there earlier in the year. That that kills some teams. I mean, the Dolphins do take advantage of that early in the year. Too. They do. That's right. They always do. They always do. Their sidelines in the shade. Yeah. Oh, smart. Lucas Oil Stadium, Colt sideline actually in the sun. Okay. The wayside in the shade. Yeah. Oh, so it's actually you can't see, and it's really hot for about I don't know about a quarter quarter or so yikes okay and then chuck actually had to ask like can we change when chuck got here is there any way we we, we can go on that side uh the ticket sales you see because of the whole what well, can we change well there's a different number it became an entire thing yeah so now the colts got to have they got to have umbrellas on their side for the first couple of weeks but the other team doesn't have to have it interesting quite the home field advantage mm -hmm. well you can stay warm yeah, true. Yeah. Joining us now is a man who's just getting heated up. He's staying warm oh, at all yeah. times. Senior NBA insider at The Athletic and at Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, our basketball guru, Sean Sharania. Yeah. What's up, dude? What up, guys? How are you guys doing? You guys feeling all right? Hey, it's great to have you back. You look fantastic. You haven't aged a minute, it seems like, <laughs> since the last time we chatted with you, like two years ago. You look amazing. I'm trying to be like you, Pat. I'm trying to I'm, tr I'm trying to be like you, man, at the end of the day. No, don't ever do that. You're doing much better than me. I wouldn't <laughs> want to bring you down. It seems like the basketball world is always cooking for you, but now the regular season's going. There's a lot of outstanding storylines from the offseason. What should we be talking about? What should we be thinking about when we're thinking about the NBA? You are literally the only person keeping us informed on what's going on in the association. Pat, I mean, two things for me that I'm monitoring on a daily basis, right, is like, is Kyrie Irving ever going to play a basketball game this season? And the second thing, will Ben Simmons play? And if he does play, who will he play for? When will he ultimately be traded? And so those are really the two things that, I mean, everyone everyone around the league is, is paying attention to. Because on one hand, you have a player, you know, in Kyrie Irving, who's arguably one of the best players, um, you know, in the league and on a championship favorite. And for him not to be playing – at all this upcoming season. I mean, it's a blow to the league. It's a blow to the Nets. And Kyrie Irving himself is missing out on $200 million by deciding not to Jeez. get the shot and playing. And on the other end, you have Ben Jeez. Simmons, a guy who has basically decided he doesn't really want to be with the Sixers and he's willing to do whatever it takes to get out. And that included him basically refusing to participate in a defensive drill yesterday. And he was sent home, dropped the ball and, and left uh, and, and went back home yesterday. Hey, with that Ben Simmons situation, I was watching the clip. I know they said he was practicing in sweatpants with his phone in his pocket. Was this whole part of his plan? Did he want to get kicked out? And he's just trying to force the hand? Uh, well, a couple things. One, breaking news for, the, for, for your show, Pat. Uh, that was not a phone in his pants. That was actually another jersey. It was the practice jersey he was oh. supposed to be wearing. He decided not to wear it, put it in those sweatpants that he was wearing. Put on. It looked like it was a sweatshirt he had on, kind of cut off sick, uh, 76ers. Uh, sweatshirt that, that that he was wearing and not his practice jersey. He elected to put that in his pants. But, I mean, listen, it's, it's clear that all of his behavior, he's been coming in. I did a story yesterday. He's been really coming in, ignoring staffers. He hasn't been engaging with anyone. And uh, as I have a... Uh, of a camera oh uh, a camera glitch. I don't know Switch. what that is, but... Two angles? Hey, I'm going to talk to you guys from here. <laughs> this is... This is Hey, this is this is live. Hey, um, this is this is high production value. You got two go. games. High production. How about um, it? I think you know for him, it, it, it just became about he understood he wants a trade and he's not going to be talking or engaging with anyone there. Okay, so he gave a little bit of effort though on one of the videos that I saw. And this angle is fantastic, by the way. Get a little glimpse of the side <laughs> prof. I mean, you look amazing here, Shams. We appreciate you adapting so quickly. I I was mind blown by what happened there. I just want to yeah. oh, see Shams. He's a little boy. What happened? That's yeah, a different computer angle. Set up? Yeah. Is that a cell phone down here set up? Man, listen, I, I, have a, I have a little cell phone camera set up here. I have my laptop here. It's it, it's a big production job. It's not as big as the Mac of show, but it's, it's, it's I'm trying. I'm is trying this where here. you live all day, every day, though? Just uh, scooping and getting information and clipping and going? A home office. Literally a home office. I stay here. If I have to go on and do video, 
I'm literally strapped and ready to go. If not, I'm, I'm plugging away on my phone. Okay, so when the Ben Simmons news comes to you, how does that, who tells you that he gets, you don't have to tell us, but is that something that everybody knew that he got kicked out of practice? Because I saw a video, it looked like he gave a little bit of effort on a reach on an assistant coach I think that was playing against, and there was maybe a pass, and I saw some uh, other stuff that came today. Was he just, he's just telling everybody to fuck off? He's there, be wow. He's back. <laughs> Hey, you were so no. Pumped. Listen, listen. That that was you know to answer your question. You know, I, I mean, I have people who are who are there, right? And so I'm not. I'm not. You know, there's a bunch of people. There's there's 50, 100 people that are usually on site. You know, when you talk about you know whether it's the players and coaches, etc. So you know me, Pat. I'm never going to throw anyone on the bus. Uh, but there were a lot of people at that practice, and and really, it was a culmination of the last few days. He's literally been. You know, everything that's been going on, it's been a lead up to what happened yesterday and him essentially just walking out of practice because he's been in and out um, of drills. He's he's really done a handful of defensive slides and they asked him to go through a walkthrough yesterday and he, he refused to do so. And so so I, did I think, Doc think he was going to be able to make it better? Like Doc was like, we'll get him back in the building. We'll be able to win him back over. This team will be able to thrive again. They'll be able to coexist, him and Joel or whatever. And then he got kicked out or walked out in that just because they realized that that wasn't going to happen. I think Doc Rivers and, and the organization felt like once they brought Ben Simmons back into Philadelphia, once he reported again, everything would be fine. It would be kumbaya. But it – it, it never was. Ben Simmons told ownership and Daryl Morey, Doc Rivers, Elton Brand to their face in August in Los Angeles that I don't want to be a Sixer. If I'm back, I'm not, I'm not mentally and physically prepared to play for you guys. And so he made that message loud and clear. They decided, you know, obviously he's under contract. He's got four years, $150 million left on his deal. They want him to honor that deal and to show up and play and perform yeah. and, and, and leave it all on the line. And so they felt, bring him back, he'll, he'll be all good. Well, listen, he came back last week, his first meeting with Doc Rivers in Doc Rivers' office, and I'm told he told Doc Rivers, I'm not mentally ready to play for you and this team. And so they knew where he was at mentally and physically, and they decided to roll the dice. He ends up coming, being present, but he really hasn't been present. He's been present in only his physical state. Mentally, he hasn't uh, been there, that. and physically, he hasn't been there. Welcome to the hotel in the Sixers. You can check out, but you never leave, you know what I mean? That's yeah. right. It's a crazy time over there. $150 million he's got on his contract. $200 million is what Kyrie's going to miss out on when he doesn't play this. Is he ever going to play again? If, like, if this maintains the mandate of everybody's going to have to have the vaccination to continue to play, is it... Because it was just home games. First, he wasn't going to be able to play in. Then I think it rolled into every single game. Is this looking like we have seen the last of Kyrie Irving playing basketball? He was a fucking great player. Man. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was great Yeah, player. I mean, I, I, you thought that once they opened up the practice facility for Kyrie Irving that maybe there was a pathway, right? He'd be able to practice at home, play on the road. And I think that's where it was looking. But then over the weekend, uh, you know, the weekend before they made the decision to essentially banish him from the team, it's clear that something might have occurred. It's clear that they had some kind of a, a decision internally within that ownership group and Sean Marks, the GM, that – and, and it, I – listen, any time a decision like that's made, you have Kevin Durant, James Harden, you're going to have to take their opinion and, and what, what their perspective is. And it's clear that they came to the decision that not having Kyrie Irving around was best for this team. And that, to me, Jeez, is not a good waste. sign for Kyrie Irving's future there. Um, I mean, it, it just it just just doesn't give you confidence that whether it's he's, he plays basketball for the Nets this year or not, you know, is he going to be a net long term? I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's missing out on half of his salary for this year, which is roughly over 16 million dollars, as well as one hundred eighty six million dollar contract extension that the Nets obviously are not offering him now because he's not available to even play in games. So Jeez. he's missing out on, like you said, 200 million plus, And it's going to be a decision that Kyrie Irving only Kyrie Irving can make. Is he going to get the vaccine or not? If he does, he'll be able to play. If he doesn't, he's not playing. I've spoken to City Hall officials, and they've told me we are not lifting the mandate for one shot for players to play in, in the city. And so if the mandate's not being listed, uh, lifted, he's not playing basketball or he's going to be traded. Um, those are really his only pathways, um, you know, as of right now. Shams, you called City Hall? Hey, what's up? Shams Sharania. Whoa. Need to hear what we're thinking about this, this uh, Kyrie Irving. So you did that? I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I do have regular contact with, with New York City Hall, and um, that's – I actually quoted a City Hall official when I reported that they, you know, they ruled that the, that the Nets facility, HSS Training Center, was, was a private 
office building, right? And so for the Nets, that was a that was a big win. We're able to have Kyrie Irving back in in the gym. He's able to practice this week. He's able he, it, like if if the Nets would want him around, he'd be, he'd be able to play not only in the opener last night, practice tomorrow, play on Friday in Philadelphia. He just couldn't play home games, oh, so they man. all decided Gee, we'd rather not. It have looks Kyrie like Irving around at all. it looks like we're running into an inevitable Red Extreme X Factor situation. Oh yeah, boy, yeah. it seems like that's what's going to happen here potentially, and that is. Obviously very scary. Go ahead, Ty. Shams, I think it was a Pelicans reporter that said that uh, Zion Williamson blimped up to like 350-some pounds Whoa. this offseason. Do we know, is he back closer to playing shape, and uh, when is he going to get traded to the Knicks? Jeez. Yeah, I mean, I, he, he, he's on his rookie deal, so I, I don't think he has the leverage right now to be traded where he, where he would want to go. I know Pat Pat's wanted him on the Knicks. For, for a while here. Just on TV. Um, Just on TV. Put him on TV is what I heard. Guys, on. he needs to get back on the court. I think the, the first few years of his career, he just has not been able to stay healthy and play uh, in, in games, you know, you know for, a lo- for large stretches of time and play, you know, without a minutes restriction. And so until he gets to that point, um, there's not really going to be many levers for him to pull as far as, you know, forcing his hand and, and getting where he wants to, to play. I mean, it's clear he hasn't even started – Full activities as far as oh, no. his ramp up. Oh, He's no. doing one on O drills, and he just started running in the last few days. That doesn't sound like to me, guys, a guy that's ready to play in the foreseeable future. So, I mean, the fact that he underwent this procedure before summer league. Summer league was in August. We're now in late October. We're about to be in Halloween time, and Zion Williamson is still not able to play. That to me doesn't give a great sign for his his you know his fitness right now as oh, far okay. as being able well to he hasn't been able to work because he had the surgery obviously he's going to get back and he's going to be in better shape than he's ever been he's fucking zion williams True. I, I hope so i mean listen listen everyone in new orleans hopes so because he when he's able to play and when he's in when, when he's going without you know any restrictions he he's dynamic there's no question about it well, they were putting the restrictions on him his rookie year okay we all thought he could have played a lot more minutes or we all thought that and also maybe empowered a little bit more i think he shot 85 percent whenever he was playing four minutes a game or whatever and then he would come on the side i mean uh Zion's going to get back. What, what was that? The yeah, blimp? Ty, what blimped was that? up. Oh, yeah. The guy's drinking big gulps of pancake batter. I mean, <laughs> he needs, to, he needs right. to tone it down a little all bit. All right. All right. Sorry. Connor, go ahead. He could Jeez. be the president of the Hall of Fame if, you know, he plays his cards right when you think all about right. it. But. All right. Z- uh, Zion slander would not be told. Oh, absolutely. I love the guy. It yeah. sounded like there was some from you, too, Sean. A little bit, you, Sean. Way you started painting that picture a little bit. That sounded like No, little... no. I mean, he's, he's not able to he, – he's not doing anything besides – he just started sprinting and doing one-on-o drills. That Pat, that doesn't sound like a guy who's ready to play in the in, in any kind of slobs. Name Zion, dude. Jeez. Yeah. What do you have, Connor? Yeah, Sean. We're one night into this thing. Uh, we've seen LeBron. We've seen Giannis. We've seen KD. So I assume you have the answer to this. Who is going to win the NBA championship <laughs> this year? Hey, this is the most important part of this conversation. I'm going to carry whatever you say right here into a lot of conversations. Yeah, it's, it's probably going to be on I SmackDown mean, on ooh, Friday okay. if I had to get. I mean, this is going to go a lot of places, Sean. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of uh, thought and effort into this please i mean i i wish i knew uh but I, I don't but I, I will say this if kyrie irving plays for the nets this year I, I i mean i saw them last night i was at the game i was at the game in milwaukee um i mean just imagine this team with kyrie irving offense obviously is not the problem for them but if they have kyrie irving they are going to be so lethal those guys james harden kyrie irving uh kevin Durant, they only played in i think 10 or 12 games last year i want to see these guys play for full 82 game schedule it's unfortunate we're not gonna be able to see that so to me, it's it's kind of an asterisk, right? If Kyrie Irving plays this year, I don't see how the Nets are not, you know, the championship favorite barring injury. Is Kyrie like is is he just hanging out now, or is he still like in an appeal process, or is he trying to get some other therapeutics? Like like how, what's he doing? Yeah, I mean, there's no appeal. He, I mean, I'm told he hasn't even appealed to the NBA to get a religious like exemption. An exemption. So are there any exemptions? Andrew Wiggins did that. He was rejected. Kyrie Irving hasn't even gone to the league for religious exemption, and so that leads me to believe that he's. Honestly, I mean, at this point, unless he just goes and decides to get the vaccine, he's just waiting for either the va- mandate to get lifted or change in stance from the league or the Nets. And I don't see any of that coming anytime soon. Well, we appreciate you for stopping by and informing us on everything we need to know about the association. Ladies and gentlemen, senior uh, NBA insider at Stadium and Athletic, Shams Sharani. Yeah! That's Shams. Yeah! Shams. Dude, he had a two-camera setup. Yeah, That's unbelievable. Awesome. 
By the way, camera, iPhone, much better than laptop. Yeah, yes. yeah big time. By a thousand. But it's nice to get a little side shot. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and how about him turning? Yeah. That was unbelievable. Yeah. I had no idea what Great was going awareness. on. I had no clue what was going on. I wonder if that had happened before. I don't know. Mm. NSA hacking his computer or oh, something. Yeah. Or Zion, because, you know, Ty and him called him a big fat slob, which well, was, that was uncalled for. That was before that. No, yeah, you, I thought he was getting breaking news. And I didn't, I didn't say it. Yeah, I Shams thought there was potential breaking news coming. And what you you didn't want to say it? You sure no. sounded confident as yeah. it was rolling no, out of your mouth. you heard I said a Pelicans beat writer yeah. said... Oh, you, could, you said he I blimped up to no, 350. You said he, it appears he had blimped. The beat I, riders. Well, what do you call it? The guy gained 100 pounds in the fucking offseason. He's I mean, a broken foot. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. He can't run. Yeah, that's a good point. What do you want to do? Yeah. Hey, right. I do wonder because they have, especially with the level that Zion is of athlete and human and connections, they do have a lot of things that can get around training with injuries that potentially happen. Swimming pool. Yeah, well, not just swimming pool. The surgery is going to be tough to get put your uh, scar in there or whatever. But there's ways to, you know, lift weight off and do other exercises. So I Zero gravity treadmill. I'm sure he's been on that. I just assume he no. has people around him who, like, <laughs> let him know, like, hey, we're, we're, we want to get out of here. We don't want to stay in New Orleans. Like, you, this can't happen this early in his career. Yeah. Because I feel like this is the kind of thing where, I mean, you know, this could be the, the off-season routine. Who's he have around him? Donner, who's the veteran on team? It was JJ, right? And they, sh yeah. they, JJ tried to get out, tried to buy his contract. They said, no, nope, we're going to trade you to Dallas. And JJ actually said, all right, I'll finish the season, but I'm retired. Mm -hmm. yep. I wanted to go to a team that was a contender there or whatever. Who do they have around them, veteran player, that could say, hey. Steven Adams. Yeah, Steve Adams, uh, I believe, got traded. I'm not sure. <laughs> did, but Brandon did. Ingram is there, you know, and not to mention he's got Ronald McDonald. He's got the Burger King. He's got Wendy's sitting right next to him for the past three months. The owner of that Ben Gay shop. What are you guys talking about, dude? All right, let's move on. Let's get back to, let's get back to football. Oh, we have not taken a break yet. We have to take a break. Okay, yeah, great news. That's true. Good news. That's a great, great way to transition into football on the other side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pumped. NBA is interesting, man. It is too long of a season. Yeah. It is too long of a season. They do it because it's live events. We we're going to talk about this earlier. That LA, that Staples Center is packed. Packed out. That's a thing, you know? A lot of places, it's a thing to hear in Indianapolis. People go to the game just because it's something to do. But it's hard to get into it on TV here this early. you got to be a real NBA diehard. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, I mean, football right now, too. We're just getting into, like, where it's really going to start to matter here. Let's go Lakers, though, huh? Let's go Lakers. Huh? Yeah. Let's go, go Celtics. Basketball matters. It matters now. No, it doesn't. It does not matter right now, I don't think. I'll tell the players that. You tell the players that giving their blood, sweat, and tears, it doesn't matter. I think they say that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think they say that. I think LeBron actually said that verbatim after after the it's game last night. All right, we're back in four minutes on the 5 Hour Energy phone line. one 833 4 about 15 minutes away from Coaches Up Chuck Wednesday yeah. segment with Chuck Pagano. Can't wait for that. We'll see you in four. One of his shows, he forced me into doing. Hey, he's wearing football pants. <laughs> <laughs> I think Marco he had actual knee pads. Does he have a fake <laughs> face on? Yeah, he has a fake face on. That is not Chris oh, Angel. Man. That or he's been eating McDonald's with Mark Davis for the last five years. I just want everybody know. Straight to his face. I just want oh, everybody God. know this is NFL related. Okay, uh -huh. yeah. we have yeah, to have talk to about cover it. this. We yeah. have to cover it. Why is his penis a different color? Oh, he's oh, wearing football shit. pants. Oh, Tony. Tony. That's a. I was told by Del Curry, Scotty Pippen struggles on a golf course, right? Right. I was told at that thing that I'm going against Scotty Pippen the next day, match play, heads up, one-on-one -on -one Scotty Pippen. So we decide, like, okay, we probably have a couple drinks, stay at the casino a little <laughs> bit longer than we should. Representing the NFL out of the Shoeless Golf Club of America, Pat McAfee. His opponent representing the NBA... Scotty Pippen. Woo! You know what I mean? This guy's got six rings. Yeah. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> but today he's going to play against me. And then I start seeing Scotty hit some shots that are just like starting to come together. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I think I was lied to. We were lied to yesterday. We were told Scotty Pippen was a terrible golfer. Probably Scotty fucking Pippen. Going in the back nine, I think I was down one. Like we were really, like we were battling. But I started making putts. And Scotty Pippen went ahead and got real hot. I mean, <laughs> real fucking. Hot. I was down three with seven left, and I looked right in the camera, and I go, so we're down three with like seven holes left. Scotty Pippen's about to get this work. 
Scotty Pippen from 190 yards out just fucking dunks it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking boom, bang, and then walks up to the green, gets the ball, cameras on him, and he goes, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> Down four with six left after Scotty Pippen just chips him from fucking 400 yards out. I, I was fucking demoralized. Uh, Pippen yeah. ain't easy. By the way, best he's ever performed at golf because I'm around. Better teammate than Jordan. Yep. People forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I told Dell. I was like, Dell, what the fuck are you lying to me? He was like, well, I saw it yesterday. He was not great. And Greg Anthony told me. And I was like, Dell, he... Buried me, Del Curry. <laughs> he buried me. He was like, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> yes, baby, it's time to celebrate. Talking about a shotgun of beer after he had beat me, obviously. I, I like teach him how to do it. Yeah, put a hole in there. It might spread a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah, so you're gonna go here, and then you're gonna open and flip up. Does that make sense? Congrats on winning the NBA a couple of times. Blah, 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 blah. And being an incredible golfer. <laughs> Cheers, Appreciate it. Hey, 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 hey. Damn. Okay, Scotty. That's the best Bud Light I ever had. <laughs> hey, there's no stock here in the three years that we You're right. <laughs> No defense, typical for the story of events that you're hearing these days. So sad, so stiff. My mama always told me there'll be days like this. So y'all should park up and spark another split. Catch me at the park, dog. I'm barking at. Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. Can't thank you enough for joining us on Sirius XM, Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, or <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. Hope you are having a fantastic day. AJ Hawk, sitting in an attic in Ohio, joins us, and it is time for a beautiful time where we judge the people who judge other things. Is Power Ranking Wednesday. Yeah. Where we will judge the rankings that are put out by ESPN in the NFL. It is a weekly ranking system where... How many? 81 or 81. 81 writers and people of importance in the football world are asked to rank their teams, and there's a point system. We have no idea how the point system works. We have no clue what all of them are voting upon. Is it if they were to win the Super Bowl right now? Projected end of season rankings, how they performed this past weekend. We do not know, but we do know at week seven. ESPN has the number 10 team in the NFL is the Tennessee Titans. Then the Kansas City Chiefs at nine. Ooh. Chargers at eight, Packers at seven, which formerly they were at five, I believe. Whoa. Six Baltimore Ravens, five Dallas Cowboys, Bucks at four, Rams at three, Bills at two after a loss to the number 10 team, and the number one team in the NFL, the undefeated Arizona Cardinals. Wow. Couple quick takeaways here, AJ, before you dive into this thing. You're good. You can take it. <laughs> okay. Well, I think the people that got shit on the most in this entire list is the Chicago Bears. What? Mm. Yeah, because Green Bay Packers last week ranked fifth. Mm -hmm. Okay, NFL Power Rankings week six on ESPN. Packers ranked fifth. Beat the shit out of the Bears in Chicago. All of a sudden, week seven, they have moved down now to seventh place. Oh, they lose no, rank no, no. after they beat the hell out of a team. No, it no. seems, hey, this is not us. This is not me no, saying it. No. I'm just pointing at something that is very evident here. The 81 writers and people of importance that are doing this think that that's what should have happened. They should have won by more in Chicago. AJ, your thoughts, even though you said you didn't want to say anything about this ranking? I, I would not have noticed that because I, I didn't have last week's uh, power rankings memorized. But you know what? That's a great point you bring up. It is absolutely 100% a shot at the Chicago Bears. The I think Bears the Bears should be pissed. Them. What's that? The Bears exposed them. That's where they dropped them down. The rankings list? Yeah. The Bears exposed the rankings <laughs> yes, list? Yes, sir, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they should have beat us by way more. Yeah, that's what the ranking system or people said. And mm. also, oh, uh, yeah. congrats to Tennessee Titans getting some yeah. shot. Yeah. Congrats to Tennessee. Because Tuesday morning after Monday Night Football, the only conversation was, are the Bills still the Bills? And everybody has said, yes, they're still at two. But everybody was uh, failing to talk about how the Titans just beat the Bills, who were a buzzsaw. Uh, absolutely <laughs> impressive stuff. Ty, your first takeaway whenever you see this rankings list? Well, I'll tell you what, they still have a lot of faith in the Chargers and apparently think that was kind of a fluky game against the Ravens because the Ravens beat the absolute dog shit out of them Pound and it. they are still sitting pretty at number eight so I think that's a little crazy and again you know the Packers what you, 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 a win's not good enough anymore what the but fuck's going on not for these 81 uh, writers and important people to football Connor I don't see a Patriot no but you can see that the Cowboys moved up the list because they oh, beat yeah. a very very uh, very good New England Patriots team uh, so that's the thing where the Patriots bumped a team mm -hmm. and the Bears dropped a team that's right Power wow closing. You do not deserve that, I don't think, Chicago. I don't think Chicago deserves that, but thank you to the ESPN rankers for putting that out as we can react to them every single week on a Wednesday when there isn't much to talk about except for the fact that Coach is up Chuck. Wednesday is almost here. Hell yeah! Chuck, is, what room do you think he will be in today? Ooh. I think he'll be back in Old Faithful, the office. <laughs> yeah. I think his little experiment of showing around the yeah. house probably ended, especially after the conversation he said he had with the internet folks that he had just oh. dropped five racks on. Oh, geez. And it didn't work out. Internet is a fickle thing. Ain't that right, AJ? Yeah, you're telling me, bud. It is a very frustrating situation. You've been on a fantastic run, though, with great connection. Hopefully, Shams doesn't carry you into Chuck. Chuck Pagano is on the other side of this six-minute break. We can't wait to chat with him and all of you. We'll see you in six. Hour three begins next. not tell you to go, Tony. You do not go until the EP Mitt says so. He said You it know that. that. He said That's fucking uh, Will Ferrell and Blaze of Glory. Yeah. I've never seen it. Chaz Michael Michaels. Chaz Michael Michaels, thank you. Either that or you hit like a tree branch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what, Gums? It was funny because that was the same time. So that was uh, that was the... Uh, <laughs> we're not going with Gumps. No, I love it. It's like, hey, look, hey this is how I know you're the ultimate hockey, hockey guy. That's good. That's that's already talk, not bro. a nickname. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know. You just drop it and change it. You know, it's always at an ER, and I thought Gumper sounded pretty lame, so I went with Gump. <laughs> So the 
Young Bucks said, hey, can we speed the game up a little bit when we yell at the score? I mean, I think it ended before it even started. We didn't even get full through, uh, through a full inning. No. Let's test out this Sharon! 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 Proper footy. Seems like it has a bigger sweet spot. That's the greatest sport on earth right there. Aussie Rules Football, also known as Footy AFL. My first time bombing in official shorts that are a little bit restricting. I think I lost a ball, to be honest. It might be a Lance Armstrong situation down here, but I can see why this sport is beloved, because those balls fly. Need to get down to Australia, meet up with the Magpie boys, and finish out this AFL season as Maybe it's biggest fan in America. Let's have a day. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show. Myself, the boys, and a legend named AJ Hawk will continue on hour three of this sports show immediately after that drop from yeah. John. It's not just any Wednesday, AJ. This isn't a basic ass hump day. No, no. This is Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, where we get a chance to chat with Chuck Pagano, former head coach of a team that I played for in Indianapolis and coaching football for like 30-some years, about all the happenings in the NFL. A couple big-time games tomorrow night uh, that Chuck has history. Broncos, bronze. We'll chit-chat with him about maybe, you know, backup quarterbacks. Oh. Yeah, maybe backup quarterbacks, what it's like. Obviously, a big-time Italian uh, uh, coach made a play for the Raiders this past oh, weekend. Yep. And also, what's he got going on in his life? Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, a good paisan. That's right. Great. Ain't that right, AJ? Absolutely. What is he? I don't say that word out of respect for Chuck and the rest of the Italians. Thank, Thank you. you. Which is me as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, it's not. I did 23 of me. Oh, all right, listen. Straight stolen valor over there. For no, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I earned it. Whoa. I had to pay okay, for it. Okay, cultural appropriation then. Either. No! Watch it, prick. I had to it's pay. It's going to be the island boys soon, buddy. You better watch it. <laughs> whoa. I spit in the that cup. cup. They told me .01. Anyways, I paid for that, okay? 0.01% Italian, no big deal, ladies and gentlemen. Former head coach, coach of football, and coach us up, Chuck. Segment host, ladies and gentlemen, Coach Chuck Pagano. Yeah! Yeah! 
What's up, Pat? What's up, guys? Hey, Coach, how we doing over there? Huh? How, how, how we doing with uh, Richie Basaccia, football rich, uh, dominating for the Raiders last weekend? Always love to see another Paisan do well, especially in his debut. You know, 38 years in the coaching ranks and first-time head coach. And then, I, I mean, couldn't you call this? And, and I hate it because, you know, my brother coaches the outside linebackers for the Broncos. Little Johnny, seven years younger. You know, so obviously I'm, I'm rooting for them. But, boy, what a different team, obviously. And you just knew that something like that was going to happen. We talked about it last week. And, and those guys showed up big time for, for Coach Rich and the rest of the uh, rest of the staff. But, you know, they showed up for each other. And we knew they had talent and all that stuff. But, man, uh, you mentioned it. He was – they got something going on now. Yeah, Coach Bisaccia has an incredible debut against the Broncos, and the Broncos are playing tomorrow night, so that leads us right into a great uh, conversation here, and it's something that I think you would actually know a lot about. The Broncos' Von Miller says, I don't know who I'm playing against, all right, but I'm going to fucking kill him. Mary said that in an interview. We have no idea who's starting for the Browns. I don't think the Broncos know who's starting for the Browns. Who knows what's going on in the Broncos? How do you prepare for one of these short games where there's so many question marks, it seems like, on the other side of the field? Oh, it's absolutely crazy. And, and like AJ, I heard him earlier, I, I like, um, or maybe it was you, Pat, a guy coming out and and saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to play well. I'm going to do well. I think he's putting not only himself on notice, but I think he's putting the rest of the squad on notice. You know, three open the season 3-0 and and then have three tough losses and then going into a short week. Um, you don't you remember these short weeks, Pat. You don't practice. You know, it's all walkthrough. No helmets. You're in jerseys. You're in hats. A lot of meeting time. You know, and you're cramming a bunch of uh, football stuff into, into a short period of time, especially if you've got to travel like Denver. You know, they finishing up this morning, then they'll get on a plane about 2.30 this afternoon, fly into uh, – into Cleveland, have a snack, go to bed, and, and uh, have the rest of the day tomorrow to finish up some film stuff. But not a lot of uh, physical stuff, but we know the Browns have everybody out. You know, Case Keenum now been named uh, the starter, uh, longtime veteran uh, quarterback in this league, uh, can play. Um, it's always scary, you know, when you go into a game like this, uh, you know, especially if you're Denver, you know, starting quarterbacks out, uh, both running backs are out. Both tackles are out. Who knows, uh, OBJ and, and Jarvis, if they're going to play at all. And, you know, like your your ass is so tight. <laughs> you're, De you're picking your Denver because the expectation is they don't have any players. Their whole offense is out. I know they got a good defense and special teams and a good core there, but you're supposed to go win that game. And now all of a sudden uh, you're scrambling. Uh, you're pulling up tape. Okay, when's Case's last game that he started? Uh, let's go pull that tape up, and you're looking at the game plan, and you may overcook and overthink this whole thing just because of the expectations. Um, you know, your players, you're sitting there trying to motivate your team, and your players saying, hey, look, you know, we're coming off a devastating loss. They're coming off a devastating loss. You know, three in a row, a season started out uh, obviously great, but now you're going on the road, and you're thinking, ah, this is going to be easy. Well, no. Because it's next next man up in, in Cleveland, and you know you got Case coming in, you're playing with house money. All those other guys are getting an opportunity to put some stuff on tape, uh, get a chance to eat, get a chance to make a name for themselves. So uh, this is a scary scary game to me. I agree. Hey, if you had a quarterback that was in a situation like Baker Mayfield right now, not only his contract situation, he wants to play well, get the big extension, but this left non throwing shoulder injury he has, we know he's tough as nails. You coached Andrew Luck, who also gigantic human, tough as nails, unbelievable respect for him. Like, how do you manage that, I guess, throughout the year? I think. How do you think they're going to do this with Baker? Is it going to be a week-by-week -week thing? Yeah, you know, AJ, they're going to, you know, listen to the doctors, obviously, listen to the trainers, uh, listen to the quarterback, and then they got tough decisions to make. And, and obviously, you know, coming off of the Arizona game where that thing came out again, uh, supposedly, reportedly, um, you know, you have to do the best thing for the player and the best thing for the team. And you certainly don't want to put him into uh, another situation where this thing, you know, because the timing of this whole thing is, is crazy, too, because, um, you know, with Andrew, it was like, 
you know, do you keep putting them out there? Do you keep playing? How bad is it? Again, you're going to go back. You're going to listen to the doctors. You're going to listen to traders and try to make, you know, uh, the best educated uh, decision uh, based on all the facts, um, all the all the professionals, all the docs, all the trainers, this, that, and the other. Um, and then, you know, because he could be out one week. It could be two. It could be three. And like Andrew's situation, it's like, Okay, he'll, he's, he's going to miss week one, and then it was two weeks, then it was three weeks. Then before you know it, know it, excuse me, you know, he's never coming back, you know, and then you got to start making a decision. You know, if this thing goes into, you know, week, week eight, week nine, week ten, all right, this thing ain't getting any better. It's going to need surgery anyway. Are we better off? You know, biting a bullet right now, having surgery, getting it done so he's back for an off season. he's back for training camp, and we move on to, you know, 2022. So uh, tough situation for everybody involved. Yeah, and the surgery, that's when you think, that's when you have to start focusing on the backup quarterback, right? If you're, if we got to get the surgery, because everybody knows, I, I guess it was partially torn the first time when they had to pop it back in in week three or whatever, and then this past week, it completely tore it whenever it popped out again when somebody, it was an awkward landing. And yeah. I'm, I'm sure he was scared to land on it actually how you normally would, and in doing so, it even became even worse almost, and that thing popped out and that tore it completely. Surgery's the only way to beat that I, I think right labrum like surgery is the only way to get that fixed so he would have to just play through it like if he's not playing if they're not going to let him play through it this week what changes if there's no surgery next week if it's the same exact injury same exact pain and it's just baker saying i want to play i want to play that's a fascinating thing especially when the player has been as open as wanting to play as baker has and i assume andrew was as well with you in those conversations that has to get pretty uncomfortable now yeah, no doubt about it. And again, uh, it's going to come down to, you know, pain threshold and how much he can he can handle. You know, thank God in Baker's situation, it's his non-throwing, you know, shoulder. So they can put a harness on that and um, treat it, this, that, and the other, and, and and try to keep him out of harm's way as best as possible. But, you know, like you saw the, the hit that he took, you know, on J.J.'s sack on him when he fell off. Those guys ain't thinking about that in the heat of the battle. They're going out there. They're making a decision, I'm going to play. You know, and it's my non-throwing shoulder, this, that, and the other. And, and you know, he falls and, and that thing pops out again, uh, supposedly. But, um, you know, both those guys are, are, are you know, soldiers. They're, they're, I'm a soldier, you know, <laughs> yeah. and they want to play and they want to mm -hmm. be there for their team, especially, you know, right now they're at a crossroads. You're sitting there at three and three, and three you know, huge game coming up tomorrow night on Thursday night football. If they win that game. You know, they're trying to keep pace with, uh, you know, the Ravens and the Bengals in that division. And Pittsburgh's coming. Looks like Big Ben's back. And, uh, you know, so he's going to do what he has to do again. Uh, they, can, they can put a harness on that. They can try to protect him as best they can. But uh, tough situation. Uh, Coach, we were talking earlier about bye weeks, you know. And this is – there's six teams, I think, on a bye week this weekend or something like that. Six teams already, and there was already four last week. And this is a 18 week season now. And there's six and seven. This seems to be a bit early, but there's some good teams, right? Bills, Cowboys, Steelers. You know, Ben's coming on or whatever. They're in a bye week. They're going to have to have 11 weeks on the other side of this if they want to go and make this entire run. Did you ever have a thought on the bye week, or or is it just you have to have the mentality of whenever we get it, we get it? Because I was always uh, I thought the team reacted better when it was. Was in the middle felt like a middle was always the best time there was a couple early there was a couple late but does the coach have any thoughts on that or do you guys have any say in anything either in that can you guys hear me we've got a little bit of a bad oh, connection no. i think i missed the last part of your uh last part of your question but as far as the bye weeks go yeah. um you know are we good yeah yeah you got me so as far as the bye weeks go, you know, in a perfect storm, a perfect world, you'd love it to be right in the middle of the season. And, uh, you know, right around eight, you know, week eight, week nine, uh, then you got a chance if you got some guys beat up and you got some injuries, you can get those guys back. You can heal up. You can do a self scout. You can look at yourself in all three phases, OD and special teams, and then come back fresh. Um, you know, obviously in, in my first year having it, you know, week four, you know, we didn't like it at the beginning of the season when we first got our schedule, but the way it turns out, uh, it worked out perfectly for, for all of us involved. Uh, so 
there's a lot of different schools of thought. Yeah, you you got to put your head down. It's a long season. It's an extra game. You got 17 games this season. We've got great parity in this league right now. Um, so, you know, it's a it's all about a routine. It's about taking care of yourself and taking care of your body, and hopefully you can stay injury free. But you know, 10, 11, 12 weeks in a row, that, that's a long haul. That is a long haul, and I, I think we're going to call you back to reconnect or whatever. Um, the bye weeks, though, is a fast – because there's six teams. That, that's a lot of teams, I yeah. feel like, pretty early here, especially – maybe it's because the incredible graphic that Dirty put together or whatever that it's, like, displayed down there on how yeah. many teams. That's a lot of – like, Bills, Chargers – Cowboys, Steelers, Vikings, okay? All in pretty pivotal parts of their season right now. Bye week very early. That's great news. As fans, we get a chance to watch all these teams kind of at mm-hmm. the end. But from a player's perspective, I think you got to be thinking, like, all right, we're just starting to figure it out. We're going to have a long hold all on the other side. Maybe everybody will use it to get better, though. Ben already has torn four to five different parts of his body, so the bye week maybe will yes. be taking it. But. Well, and what was it last year? The Steelers basically ended up, like, not getting a bye week no bye almost week. with the way it worked out. Like, so that's – you. I mean, I, granted, it's a different team, but like you said, I mean, bet they would have been much better served to have their. They would have stayed week. undefeated, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think yeah. That their team would have looked much better at the end of the year if they would have had at least some bye week, let alone a week four potential bye week. No, it's not a bye week, and now you got a game on a Wednesday later. Actually, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they the Steelers had an interesting run last year for sure, uh, but now is not the right time uh, for Ben Roethlisberger to potentially have to go eleven straight weeks healthy. I mean, maybe he will. Maybe it is different. Maybe it is different. It seemed, it seemed, maybe not for the players, but like for the fans and like the team, I was happy with this bye week because I just got back to 500. Like there's definitely some issues they could work on in the bye week. But like, like like a reset button. Yeah. Like a little reset button, which I think is what everybody does with their bye week. We still can't connect with Chuck. Oh, no. What the hell? Ladies and gentlemen, back from (laughs) Idaho, internet hell, ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Pagano. Coach, you look amazing. Uh, we, we got your great... I'm sorry. A- I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Sham Sharania does this all day, every day. His cutoff, he actually just had another phone somehow set up, ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. Happens all the time. Honestly, do not feel bad. AJ used to do it every other day. He got it fixed somehow. We don't know how, but we're excited that you're back. Uh, Chuck, go ahead, Ty. Coach, a lot of people in the media have been killing Mike McCarthy over the past couple weeks, whether it's clock management stuff or just kind of like situational football stuff. But then Jerry came out today and said basically like, hey, the fans don't realize how much Mike's doing on game day. Uh, So ultimately it doesn't matter yet because they're winning. But like, does he have people around him that are telling him like, hey, you keep kind of doing this stuff like we're playing with fire here and it's going to come back to bite us in the ass eventually? Yeah, I, everybody has, you know, with analytics the way they are, um, you know, 45 of the 94 games so far this season have been one-score games, 11 of those going to overtime. Um, you know, 128 fourth down attempts. They're converting 50% of those. So uh, now more than ever, uh, those game, uh, game, you know, in-game uh, clock management situations, the fourth down situations, end the half, end the game, that is so, so important. And, you know, we had guys in the box. Coach Mike has guys in the box. I know he's got a lot of a lot of people that he's leaning on. Uh, They spend a great deal of time in the offseason and training camp going over all these situations. Pat would tell you, uh, AJ would tell you, we had these mock games. We had these mock situations every day in practice. We would have an end of half. We'd have an end of game, uh, special team situation, you know, a bonsai field goal, a hurry up field goal, a milk it field goal, where actually, you know, you want to take time off the clock because you don't have a, t- a timeout in your pocket. So you're going to let it bleed down inside of five seconds, then snap it, then kick it and leave the other team no time, you know, on, on the clock to where you have to kick off those kind of things. So I had a guy up in the box and it was one guy. You know, and I didn't listen because everybody, you know, hey, throw the flag, throw the flag, because those coaches are, are, are listening to the players first and foremost. I, I caught it. I caught it. I caught it. Throw the flag. They just called incomplete, and they came up and said, hey, I got it, coach. Throw the flag. I tackled it. He's short. He's this. He's that. You got one guy up in the box, and he's watching that, and that is all he does. You know, Timmy Burbanitz, who's now with the Raiders, was my guy in Indy. Burbs. Very, very bright. Very, very brilliant guy. And so, and we had a guy in Chicago, Coach Nagy had a guy in Chicago, and that's all they did was handle those situations for him. Because, you know, even though you got an O coordinator, D coordinator, special teams coordinator, you're still managing a lot of stuff. And 
we talk at nauseum about how tough the jobs are in the National Football League. Head coach, coordinators, uh, special teams coach, officiating, and that management stuff, you know, in real time, it's easy for us, Pat and AJ and the rest of the guys on the call here, you know, to sit back on Monday. Why didn't he call time out there? Why did he go for it on fourth and one on his own 29 in the first quarter? I mean, that's unconventional, and that's just the National Football League right now. It is changing. Old school philosophy was, hey, look, you know, first three quarters, let's play football, let's get our points, and then when the fourth quarter hits, we'll start making, you know, decisions based on the circumstances, the score, field position, road, home, all that stuff on, you know, do we kick it here, do we go for it here, all those things. And now, I mean, you look at what Brandon Staley's doing at the Chargers, yeah, that Browns Chargers game was was crazy. Um, so you got one guy in the box, and he's helping you. Says, "Hey, coach, like Burbs would always." We have this company we hired, Championship Analytics Incorporated, oh, here we and go. they put together a game book, and they do a phenomenal job. They're really big uh, in college football, and they and we were the first in the National Football League to use them, and they put a book together for us. You know, and and each week you got a book on yourself and you got a book on your opponent and what their tendencies were in all these situations. So we relied heavily on that. You know, everybody always had the two point chart, this, that, and the other. But one guy, Burbs could get to me at any time, whether we were on offense, whether in defense, whatever. Hey, coach, we got a situation here. You know, if we get to this yard line, we're at the plus forty two. It's first and ten. Fourth down, fourth down, go in this situation based on the the quarter, the score. All right, and the field position, he would say, "Hey, look, fourth and three or less is a go." And then so what? And then what? Person. And then you would—that's what the book would tell him, right? And then you would just have to feel it on how the team feels that particular day. And how, is that what led to the Colts inevitably? Ha- they have like a statistics department now. I think. I think there's an entire like crew of uh, mathematicians for that. Do you have to balance? And how do you decide when you balance the stats and the field? This is a massive conversation piece right now in the uh, state of the NFL that we're in. Yeah, no question about it. And, and you always, you know, go with your gut at the end of the day. But I think with analytics coming into play, and, and like you said, John Park is, is one of the uh, key uh, analytics guys over there in India and does a f- uh, phenomenal job with rapper. crunching the numbers he's a rapper but so but at the end of but at the end of the day Good. you know you still got to go with your gut you got to go with uh the situation in the game you know uh the bills on the road at tennessee back and forth back and forth back and forth and you got a fourth and one you know down there in the low red zone with 22 seconds uh, to go in a timeout you know i'm with sean uh, 10 out of 10 times i'm doing the same thing you got a chance to get a walk because defensively they've been really really good they struggled in that game. And Derrick Henry, as we know, was kind of having his way, you know, in that game. And, and we all know that, you know, as the game get lo- gets longer, he just gets stronger, oh, yeah. you know, and, he, and he's a beast, you know, and we saw those numbers. So in that situation, it's like, okay, look, and all the players are on board because you talk in the team meetings, you know, about these situations. And, and I'm sure Sean talked to the whole team and said, hey, look, just so we're all on the same page, if this comes up, this is what we're doing. Brandon's the same way. So, and you spell out the why. This is why we're doing it. We get a first down here. We can call timeout, and then we got three cracks at the end zone throwing the football with 12, 14 seconds, whatever's left on the clock. This is why we're doing it, you know. And so you go through the why, and everybody goes, okay, that makes sense. You know, Pat, you sat in those team meetings, you know, and you listened to the coaches for a long time, and you're a smart guy. You understand situational football. You understand clock management. You you understand, you know, fourth down, all that stuff. So if it makes sense, those players and everybody's on board and you talk about it and you practice it beforehand, then when the situation comes up, it's not panic time. You know, you get on the sideline and all of a sudden the clock's rolling, you know, and the commentators are saying this, that, and the other, and why aren't you, you know, why are you not calling timeout, you know, all these kind of different things. Those are all rehearsed. Those are all practice. They're all talked about. 
Hey, just in one, sorry, AJ, just one quick thing to to tag on the end of that. Whenever you talked about the milk it field goal and everything like that, I want to, I appreciate you, by the way, for empowering me to, I'd go on three. We'd go on three sometimes. We would practice it depending upon how close we were, when it was in the game, what the score was. I was allowed to basically do whatever. We would practice it though, basically. You're like, hey, if you're going to go on three in a fucking game, you got to at least do this in practice, basically. It was like, yeah, we would do it. Ursay, Ursay, Pagano, Pagano. (laughs) Ursay had. Oh, yeah. Ursa has three daughters, so that's all in three. Uh, Pagano, what was... Hold on. We, I thought we were going to try to go... Three, f- yeah. three, three daughters. I wanted to go on four one time just to fuck around. I forget what it was. And uh, it got it got nixed on a Wednesday. <laughs> it was like, I, no, I can't have it. Sorry about that. Go ahead. We did prepare for all of those things, though. It did feel as if that was a focal point. And I think that's what Jerry's trying to say about Mike Thunder. He's like, no, they focus on I was like, well, they're going to have to figure it out because there's a lot of eyes on them right now. Sorry about that. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, well, going back to that Josh Allen play, I mean, Simmons just made a hell of a play, first off, to, to shut that play down. And, and it wasn't against Taylor Lewan, as some people do think or did think <laughs> earlier. But, Chuck, you were talking about the headsets. And we were talking about this uh, maybe yesterday on the show with Urban. with the They're trying to throw the flag a couple weeks ago. How, how and when can coaches get to you, get to the head coach? Like, how do they dial your headset directly? Because they all, I'm sure, want to talk to you at certain times. But how do you guys work the traffic out? So, great question. So, like, Timmy Bourbonitz was my guy at the end there uh, in Indianapolis. And so, all these coaches have their guy. You know, whether it's Ernie Adams when he was, you know, with New England and, and Coach Belichick, they have their guy. And so, they have on those on those headsets, uh, equipment guys can set those heads up, headsets up any way they want to. So, you know, with the head coach, you know, a guy on offense like Burbs can get to me whether I'm on the offensive side, we're on offense, and I'm already on that side, or if I'm on defense, it was set up where he just clicks over to a different channel, and he can get right in the middle of a conversation, right into the middle of a, uh, of a defensive series where I was on listening, uh, you know, and talking to the defensive guys, any of those kinds. So they can set up those headsets, AJ, to where, you know, the guy in the box, whoever is doing the replay for you, whoever's helping you with timeouts, whoever's helping you with game management situations, he can just click a button and get right on you and get right to you. Now, you got your headset off. You know, you got it off and you're on the sideline and you're making adjustments. You know, head coach is a defensive guy, whatever, and you see, you know, again, Coach Belichick on the sideline, he got his headset off, then they'll call down and tell so-and-so, somebody else on another headset, hey, go get Coach on the phone. I need him right now. Because a lot of these guys, you know, especially like Andy Reid, Andy's calling, you know, lion's share of the plays, you know, in uh, Kansas City. And you can see when the offense comes off, you know, he goes over and sits down on the bench right next to Patty Mahomes. And they're going through the series. They're going through the tablet. They're going through first down, second down, third, everything that happened on that series. And so sometimes he's got his headset on, sometimes he doesn't. So they've got uh, mechanics uh, in place to where you can get to the head coach anytime you need to. What are you, you're listening, so you're able to just click over to the defensive side of the headset. Nobody from the offense can get to you except for Burbs who can get to you at all times. Are you following defense when defense is on the field and offense when offense is on the field? Or are you listening to what's going on with the offense while the defense is on the field? No, you whatever's out there at that time, you know, if the defense is out there, I'm on the defensive line. Um, listening to the calls, listening to the situation. If there's something that the head coach needs to get in and, and discuss at the time, you know, hey, we got a big third down. There's, hey, this is this is third and two at the at the plus 48 yard line. I said, okay, this is four down territory, okay. uh, Manusk. You know, this is you know Teddy Monarchy. This is four down territory for this guy. Be alert to a shot right here. Just something that, you know. Because you're the head coach and you're not calling every play, but one of these things may pop in your head. So you're on that line. And this is what Nagy was offense, talking about. This is what Nagy was talking about. So then, you know, on offense, you know, when an offense is going, I'm listening, you know, uh, you know, to the offense calls and um, begging them, son of a bitches, you know, to get the play call into Andrew. <laughs> and, and, you know, these play calls are so freaking long. Go to the wristband, you know, do whatever you can. The poor kid's coming up, breaking the huddle with less than 10 seconds on the uh, play clock, and we want him to shift, motion, ID, change protections. Bullshit. We can't do it. Freaking go no huddle. 
Yeah. Hey, that's what I'm saying on the sideline as well. I'm happy you're saying <laughs> the same exact thing. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Chuck, uh, this past Sunday, a lot of people were pretty upset with uh, Belichick not going for it on a few fourth downs, similar to what Ty was talking about with McCarthy. Is that something that's easy to change, kind of his style of football? Or like, even though Mac Jones is a rookie, if your quarterback goes to your head coach and kind of talk about like, hey, I think we can go for it when we're in this situation, or uh, is that mostly just Bill Belichick going back, reviewing the film, and then changing uh, like his strategy going forward? Yeah, I think you know having Tom Brady at the helm for you know two decades, um, you know, makes those decisions uh, a hell of a lot easier, uh, Connor. You know, uh, compared to a, a rookie quarterback that you got out there, um, some new personnel on offense, uh, all those things come into play. And, you know, he's still going to methodically go through uh, his game preparation, his game management. I don't think Ernie's with him anymore. So he's got, I think, a new guy, and and you got turnover on the staff. Um, All these things come into play, you know, when you're making decisions, uh, especially in-game decisions on when you're going to go for it, when you're not going to go for it. Can can I go back and be the same guy that I was, you know, five years ago uh, compared to now? No, because the it, it's ever evolving. You know, it's it's fluid. These situations are fluid, like Stephen A. always says, right? <laughs> and and uh, so I think all those things come into play, and and he's he's keeping in mind. I, I think most specifically that he's got a rookie quarterback. He's trying to manage uh, that situation. Uh, with kick gloves, the kid is really good, and I think he's really smart. He's going to be a fantastic player for a long time in this league. But um, I think you know navigating the waters that he's having to navigate right now uh, comes into play there. It's fascinating the way they're talking about Bill Belichick right now. But I guess uh, with all the stats and information that we now have, that maybe once weren't as public, it is a different way to judge and see how hindsight can affect some things. We had Mike Pereira on the other day. And this has nothing to do with Mac Jones or anything like that. He told me that there wasn't a ref that liked me out there. What was oh. it? So I guess I had a bad name and <laughs> reputation amongst the refs. Did you have a good rep with the refs, you think, or a bad rep? How did you handle refs? Especially now. Mike Tomlin said the other day, I'm writing a check to the league tonight. I'm telling the truth, he said. How do you, because there's jobs on the line. Like bad calls lead to potential games and then obviously coaching turnover and players and everything like that. How do you manage, because we all understand it's a difficult job. It's not easy. We get it. But there are some things that are egregious, I think you would even say. And, and you're, How do you keep cool and how did you deal with refs? Yeah, I, you know, kill them with kindness. You know, and I'd always have to, because when something happened, everybody saw it. Um, it was plain as day. It was obviously uh, not in our favor. And every coach, every player on the sideline is going after these guys. And before I continue, Pat, you didn't have a bad rep with those guys because I communicate with them, you know, weekly, daily, during the game. And, and they had a ton of respect for you as, as a player and as a person. Because when you talk to them, you know, you knew exactly who to go to and, and what to say. You knew the rules inside now. And, and there's a lot of guys that would, you know, go screaming at guys, you know. Um, and, you know, early on when you don't know what their jobs are and you start screaming at, you know, say a line judge for a downfield call that a, like a, a back judge, you know, or a field judge is in charge of and you're screaming at him. Hey, that's – he goes, Coach, that's not my call. My eyes were in a different place. You need to go talk. That's when they know, hey, this guy's a dumb shit. <laughs> You know, hey, been there, done that, yeah. guilty as charged, but yeah. you learn along the way. So, um, Pereira, uh, you know, that was a great interview, uh, by the way. Um, love Pereira's, you know, he's got the big mob, you know, oh, Italian mob yeah. glasses on, you know what I oh, mean? Yeah. God, and we got so many paisans and you're- No, 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 no. Yeah. no. Huh? We thought that. I made that mistake well, actually. Talk, who was talking like with the scratchy Yeah, no, he's <laughs> earlier. Uh, Portuguese. <laughs> Portuguese. He's Portuguese. Portuguese. Yes, believe well, me. As soon as I met him the first time, I said, "Oh, Paisan Pereira." And he, no, actually, stop right now. I am okay. not Italian, which so, is kind of rude, anyway, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Oh. Very AJ like. Yeah, sorry about that. I, he hated the Italians. It seemed like. Yeah. Whoa, whoa! I should have taken offense to that. Cause no, I, I uh, was. I always tried to, um, you know, just so you could get the benefit of the doubt, try to, you know, talk to those guys in a civil manner, uh, especially early in the game. 
because you may need them, you know, towards the end of the game, fourth quarter, you may need a call. You may need a call the next week. Uh, no, but again, they have a really tough job. You know, um, they've made it even harder uh, as the rules change on those guys trying to officiate this game in real time at this level. Very, very, very difficult. You don't want that job. I don't want that job. There's a lot of people that don't want that job. Uh, and Mike was exactly right. So um, you try to talk to those guys. You try to treat those guys with kindness. Hey, when they're wrong, they're wrong. They know it. We know it. And, I mean, there's times where during replay, we'd be looking at the jumbotron, and the guy is standing on the sideline like this, and I'm yelling. I said, look, the ball is out. You called that a – he was down by – that ball is on the ground. Look at the scoreboard. Look at the video replay. It's right there. And they're taught, Coach, you know I can't look at that. I cannot look up there right now. I cannot look up there right now. And they're having the conversation. This I think there was one time, and I'm not going to name the name, where I said, hey, look, he's out of bounds. His toe hit the line, you right? And the guy looked up and looked at it and saw it. Yeah, incomplete. No! <laughs> <It> was out. <laughs> that had to be electric. No. I was, oh, that's awesome. I was, just, I was like to myself, I was like, really just happen? Are uh, you kidding me? So, and so that's why we don't say any names or anything like that. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but, the, hey, you know, spending a year with those guys in 2018 with the officials up there and working with them, uh, unbelievable What guys. did you do? What did you do? Extremely. I did a consulting gig in 2018 after I was let go in 17. So I got to go and, and – uh, and just and they've done it with a bunch of uh, former NFL coaches, guys that were in transition that you know were fired one year and, and were taking a year off and then got back in the game. I think Kenny Wisenhunt did it. Mike Smith, the former head coach, of Atlanta Falcons have done it. Joe Philbin, you know, did it a, a year ago. Um, but they bring uh, special teams guys, Bobby April, all the old guys, old guard guys that um, just can sit in there and not do replay, not tell them, just watch tape. Have conversations, talk about, you know, holding, talk about DPI, talk about OPI, all different things and, and what their mechanics are. And it gave me an opportunity to really, number one, I've always appreciated how difficult their job was. Um, but even more so, gave me gr even greater perspective how tough that job was. But then it, it opened my eyes on, on to, you know, the mechanics and how the game was officiated, um, all those kind of things. But uh, built some great relationships with all those people up there. And um, believe me, I, trust me when I say this, they are they are uh, doing uh, the very best that they can to make sure that these games go as smooth as they can and, and to get the right call on, uh, you know, well, on the field Chuck, during all these Chuck, situations. Chuck, Chuck, uh, Chuck, 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 they need to – I understand they're doing their best, but we need – we need a little bit faster. You know what I mean? We need a little bit faster on some things. I think as the technology comes into play more, hopefully it'll be a little bit more quickly and expedited, but nobody wants to be a ref. It is very difficult, but there's about to be so much money gambled on these games, Chuck. There is about to be so much on because refs are a massive part of the game. I think that's why I always talk to them. I always, I think, talked about them whenever I had a chance to because it is a huge part of the game that, you know, Coaches have to prepare for. You get a chance to learn which ref crew is coming through. What do they like to do? What do they not like to do? It's a huge part of the game, and I think we all know that, especially whenever it goes wrong, which Pereira told us 99% of the time it goes right, only 1% of it goes wrong, which I think a lot of people are only remembering. But whoever, whatever the fucking case. They got to get better, dude. They got to get better. Yeah, it has to. Chuck, it has to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Pat. Uh, Chuck, no, 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 you don't have to bury it. No, no, no. We got to coach better. We got to play better. We got to clean up all this shit. You're right. And uh, Pereira told us that every week six going into week seven, everybody's saying the refs are bad. I guess that's just part of the game. Go ahead, Tone. Coach, there's more than a few teams where one side of the ball is carrying the other side of the ball. We're playing much better than the other side of the ball uh, so far this season. How do you deal with that in the locker room? Is it addressed in the locker room or a team meeting? Have you ever had to deal with something like that? That's a, uh, you know, one of the most interesting dynamics. If your culture – we always said culture eats strategy, you know? So if your culture is good and you've got great leadership, you know, in that locker room and great leadership at the helm, 
that you can overcome a lot of that because, you know, those guys, whether it's the defense is playing uh, better than the offense or the offense is playing better uh, than the defense or the special teams are doing a great job, um, this, that, and the other, you know, those guys all know that you're only one week away. You know, it's a short ride from the penthouse, you know, to the outhouse, uh, so to speak. And so those guys got to do a great job. And, and when somebody's hurting, like, you know, going into this game tomorrow night, you know, we got all these injuries on one side of the ball. It's time for the defense, you know, to, to step up. And, again, it goes back to the locker room. It goes back to the leaders in that locker room to where if, if there's any inkling of, you know, some of that starting to come out and you start to hear, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, then those leaders got to go in there and go, uh-uh, we ain't doing that. We're not pointing fingers. You know, these, these teams that are sitting there, you know, two-game losing streak, streak, three-game losing streak, you know, all the stuff's coming. This is when your leaders got to show up and say, no, hey, this, this side's struggling. We got to pick up our stuff. We have to play better. We have to do more. We have to give them shorter fields. We have to give them opportunities. We got to turn the ball over for these guys, and they'll get it going. Because, again, uh, you know, because you start talking like that, foot, you know, the karma, football karma is a crazy thing, and you don't, you don't want to go there. Yeah, the football gods will get you. And uh, the football gods have blessed us with your presence every single Wednesday. We appreciate you, Coach. How do you see tomorrow night going? You said you're scared to pick. I'm scared to death to pick what's going to happen tomorrow. You said the Denver Broncos coaching staff might have a little bit of fear because they're supposed to beat the hell out of the Browns who seem to have nobody. How do you think this thing turns out tomorrow? I'm with, uh, you know, listening to you guys. I'm with you guys. I, You know, I don't know what the over under is, but I'd I'd go on. This is one of those trap games. <laughs> this is this is one of those trap games, you know, where oh shoot, they're still getting points on the road, and Cleveland has no players yeah. left. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you know, this is a stinky, stinky game, and I'd stay away from this. I don't bet and I don't gamble. I of can't course. do any of that stuff, of even in retirement. But I'm staying away from it, you know, because I think it'll be a defensive battle. Two great defenses coming head to head. You know, Denver's offense have, has struggled the last couple of weeks. They've got talent. They've got players. Browns don't, you know, all their offensive players are out. Um, you know, so I think it'll be a defensive struggle, and it'll come down to which team take care of the football, you know, most on offense and doesn't turn it over. So whoever in this one wins a turnover battle, gives a short field, maybe score on defense, going to come out on top of this one. The old field position game. It's funny you're not a part of it, but you know a lot about it. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Coaches Up Chuck Wednesday host, Chuck Pagano. Thank yeah. you, Coach. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool chatting with him, man. Mm-hmm. It's cool chat. He's awesome. He's the man. It, he said he, he can't do that even in retirement. There's no rule that he can't gamble, right? Yeah, I think he's just, I don't know. Messing he's around. He knows, know. a, he knows an awful lot of lingo. Uh, it seems like a stinky number, he said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know seem to be, but it is. I didn't know if the league I don't know if the league tries to like hamstring coaches. Like, hey, with all your relationships you have, like, you can't be doing this because you can manipulate people. Do you remember the um, the turnover of alcohol? being marketed in the NFL where coaches started showing up in like Coors Light commercials that were retired and stuff like that and the players weren't allowed to do anything alcohol related but it seemed like there was a crown royal suite in every stadium and there was a beer but you couldn't have a beer sponsorship if you were a player because it was bad and then now it's kind of happening uh, with the gambling and fantasy where I mean it is the turnover of what you're allowed to do what you're not allowed to do remember we weren't even allowed to accept free bedrooms at casinos you remember that yeah, you couldn't accept anything from a casino, right? Yeah, no free bed, no free suites if you gamble, none Come of this. On. Not allowed to do any scratch offs, by the way. Not allowed because I wanted to do my own scratch offs here in Indianapolis for my foundation. Because okay. the, the Colts had scratch off here, and I'm I was I'm a scratcher, always have been. Was wondering if I could potentially do. It. I'm not allowed to do that. Colts are allowed to do that. I was like, well, what, well how come? Huh. How, how come? Like, well, how it's that? not a message we want to promote or whatever. It's like, I mean, I don't even know if I was going to be able to have scratch offs, but now. That this whole thing has happened, I, I would like to. I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> well, gonna, players can't do. Players can't. Uh, still can't like promote uh, booze, can they? I don't know because there's been some Coors Lights. Yeah, Mahomes, yeah, Mahomes is, is like Coors a Coors Light. Oh, you're right. He is. Yeah, he had. Okay. Yeah. So that changed just a couple years ago. Yeah, very recently. It was surprising to me when I started seeing players promote booze on their social medias or even on TV. It was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! This is very different because that was something they were not about. Now the same thing's going to happen with sports gambling, I assume, and fantasy and everything like that. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. There's too much money. There's too much money involved. Yep. 
So much money. Yeah, Staples Center ain't getting any of them, though. No Lifetime way. deal. Let's get to a break. Uh, we'll be back on the other side with some actual phone calls. We'll hit the five hour energy phone line. Big Staples Center show. Bro, I just, uh, I've never seen a Staples, but I've seen the Staples Center. Yeah, it's been a while. And it's. There are Staples, but they seem very, very big. Like, they're, they're very large stores. Like, how do they pay for their overhead? Massive commercial spaces next to no one in there ever. They sell a lot of easy buttons. So, is one. it a front? <laughs> Might be. Ooh. Wow. We're back in four minutes. We'll dive into that during a commercial break. We'll hit up Shams, see what's going on with Staples and the Staples Center, obviously, see if he has anything for us on one of his six phones that are always up and running. We can't thank you enough for joining us. We'll wrap up this beautiful Coaches Up Chuck Wednesday, October 20th, 2021, on the other side of this four-minute break. Out of Philadelphia is one of the biggest inspirations walking around the internet. Geo, the podcast. Yeah! Okay, so you're 14 years old. Yep. You're from Philadelphia. Yep. Big time Eagles fan, podcaster. You were Carson Wentz's number one fan. Yeah. Yesterday, the A01 invited me, and Carson invited me to the game, and I got to go on the sideline and meet Carson again, and he gave me a football. Let's go! Yeah! You're obviously full of energy, full of optimism, <laughs> full of upbeat, good vibes. Yeah. What do you go through on a day to day? I've had 20 surgeries in my life, so it hasn't been easy. Um, I have a uh, condition called SJS, um, short Stampel syndrome, um, and it's basically like muscular dystrophy with dwarfism. My elbows are dislocated. My left hip is dislocated. I had to get my right hip reconstructed. The reason I'm so optimistic is because life is too short to Focus on the negativity. Let's go! <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that you have to be tougher than all of us on the day to day, but I am so incredibly thankful that you keep that mindset. How'd you develop a uh, love for football? We've always been a football family, but then when I started having surgeries, I started watching football, and then I just kind of fell in love. What does the rest of the season look like for the Indianapolis Colts, you think? Carson's gonna keep himself safe out there? Carson's gonna have his best NFL season here in Indy. Why is that? He loves it here and he's having fun. And when Carson Wentz is having fun, he plays his best. Okay, and how about the Philadelphia Eagles? I think they got a little developing to do with him. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any players that you'd like to get on your podcast? Brian Dawkins. Oh. Ooh. Is he your favorite uh, Eagle of all time? Um, him, Carson, and Zach Ertz are my top three. Oh, oh Zach Ertz. Sorry. Damn, so sorry. Yeah. Why is everybody getting traded out that you like? What's the deal? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're really, really good at this. What's the name of the podcast? Uh, Philly Sports with Giovanni. One last message to somebody out there who maybe uh, doesn't view life the right way, you think? I'd just say find your happiness and find the thing that inspires you, like I found football, and just try to look on the optimistic side. Hey. You absolutely crush it every single day. You crushed it in here. We appreciate you. We hope you loved Indianapolis, Indiana. Come back whenever you want. Ladies and gentlemen, Geo the podcast. Yeah. Uh, can we take a moment of silence for the first two to three years of Zach Wilson's career because all he's got going for him is Bob Sala. That's it. Moment of silence for his mom who made her Instagram <laughs> 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 That's what I thought we were doing. <laughs> Uh, that's, good to, that's what I thought we were doing. It's got a, it's got a Chris and Indy. What's going on? <laughs> Mrs. Wilson. Hope everything's all right. Yeah. Yeah. She Mrs. jumped Wilson. out there, right, with some hot takes, and then... She's got a fake mask she wears, AJ. She does not like Hooers. Not a fan of Disney. She doesn't like or Disney Snapchat. or yeah. Hooers. Oh, there's going to be a bunch of Hooers <laughs> running around Zach. Mm -hmm. She said enough of it. Not on that Snapchat.
This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Whether you've been in a relationship for years, just getting started, or excited to get back out there and meet new people, when the moment comes, you want to be ready. Roman ready. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. Wow. Roman ready equals confidence. The confidence that you know you can rise to the occasion in the moment. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, it ships to you free with two-day shipping. Wow. The whole process is straightforward, convenient, and discreet. Go to GetRoman.com slash McAfee. That's G-E-T-R-O-M-A-N dot com slash M-C-A-F-E-E today. And if you're prescribed, they'll give you 50% off your first month of ED treatment. That's 50, 50% off your first month of ED treatment Whoa. at GetRoman.com slash McAfee. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control when that moment comes for you to come. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Roman ready. Pat, I also want to uh, talk about the best untouched touchdown presented by Fluid Master what? from this week. Fluid yes. Master, the number one toilet repair brand in the entire country. Bingo. What? And home of the soft spot of day. Oh. As decided by the voters by way of Bruce Bryan's Twitter profile, this week's winner <laughs> is... Aaron Rodgers owning the Chicago Bears. Aaron Rodgers, welcome to the bidet butthole lifestyle, my friend. If you tweet Aaron Rodgers with hashtag PMS untouched right now and congratulate him and tune in to tomorrow's show, you will find out if you are also the winner of a soft spa 9,500 bidet. Wow. Take a step into high society with your butt. Hell yeah. Tweet hashtag PMS Untouched and Aaron Rodgers, and you might find yourself a winner of a 9,500 soft spot bidet from our friends at Fluid Master, just like Aaron Rodgers just won with his untouched touchdown. Because there's nothing better than going untouched out of the toilet room and into the end zone. Mm-hmm. Well said. Welcome back to the show. Let's go to the Five Energy phone line, shall we, AJ? Yeah, let's do it. We've been real active on the phones today. Well, we've been very active on the ads here, too. Back to back to back. <laughs> 5 energy phone line. Go to 5 Use promo code McAfee to receive 10% off your order of the greatest energy shot in the game. Let's go to Hunter over there in Cleveland. Dog pound. How are you feeling tomorrow night, pal? What's going on, Pat and the boys? Hey, Hunter, how are you? Uh, 21. Just turned 21. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, happy, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday. You. Same birthday so, as me. Colors your hair. So how are you? Uh, it's like a blonde. It's a blondish a little bit. All right. Uh, learned <laughs> a lot about Hunter here. What yeah. do you want to talk about, Hunter? Hey, Pat, I birthday. want your odds that Case Keenum comes into the game tomorrow and burns Denver down. Oh, okay. Ooh. Okay. Hunter's got a lot of faith over there in Cleveland, AJ. I, I asked him, how are you? And he, he answered, how old are you? That's on me for the way I speak. But I'm I'm pumped about Hunter and how he feels about Case Keenum. This city of Cleveland's rallying behind old Case Keenum and this, this group of people that are about to represent the Browns, and we don't know any of their names, AJ Hawk. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I'm excited for Case Keenum. Like, people... I sometimes try to think guys like, oh, this guy's not very good. I'm like, okay, if you got to watch him in person, you would see even guys that are backup third-string quarterbacks, cool. they can absolutely sling it. They really can. So, yeah, I think it'll be fun. He's done it in the league before. I don't know. It's going to be weird, though. What if he does completely light it up? Like, then do people like, oh, oh okay, no. what are we going to do now? Oh, oh, no. Baker. Oh, See him, no. No, no Oh, no. No weapons. I don't think he's going to, strictly, just because he's got no weapons. But maybe – um De, Ep- De Ernest. Yep. yep. Yeah. De Ernest is going to ball out tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, do not get it twisted. De Ernest Johnson is going to ball out tomorrow night. Whenever you think about a guy saying, Howdy Doody, I am De Ernest Johnson, that's coming tomorrow night. Chubb and Hunter both out, but that game plan, that strategy, that team is built to be a running team. Therefore, look for Dernis De- Johnson to really come into the full spotlight tomorrow. What's your problem, AJ? You got a problem with football players, no, dude? No, just it took you like nine seconds of dead air to figure out his name. I didn't know where you were going with it. Well, and by the way, there was no help from Godfather Z on that either. This was a big, <laughs> this was a big conversation piece before we went mm-hmm. in here, on you know because. Also, Felton, Dominique, Felton, Dimitri, uh, Dimitri. Oh, <laughs> shit. 
I mean, I thought I had. I thought I had a clean. I knew Felton Johnson, but yeah. I wanted to give them at least the amount of respect that they have earned becoming great football players. Tomorrow night, they're coming onto the scene in a big way. The Browns are going to run the ball. Let's not forget that. Look for them anytime touchdown scores. Oh. Ooh. Maybe, maybe. I don't know how many touchdowns are going to be scored. Mm -hmm. ah. Okay, a couple receivers. Let's go, let's go to Mike over there in Denver. Mike, what's going on, Ma High? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how's it going, boys? Hey, it's great, Mike. How are you? Doing pretty good. So, uh, long time listener, first time caller. Oh, I, yeah. I want to say that you guys have really been crushing it lately. Oh, like, yeah. Awesome guests, great content. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you, man. That means a lot, Mike. We appreciate that. We just try not to suck every day. We're thankful that you haven't deemed us as such. Uh, and hopefully we'll continue doing our thing. You keep doing your thing. And let's chit-chat about it. Yeah, shout out from us listeners to y'all guys. Um, so I have a quick question. The uh, 2021 MLB season is coming no, to a close. Mike, oh, Mike, no. Mike can't. Mike, I like you. <laughs> Let Mike spin. Come no, on, no, Mike. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Yeah, we don't want to hear it, Mike. Adding a DH. Right? Mike, nobody gives so, a fuck. Dude. No, come on, let Mike speak. Mike. Come on, He's Facebook from Denver. Right. His Sorry, team Mike. is playing yeah. tomorrow. What yeah, are we doing, Mike? Uh, Mike, what do you want to talk about, Mike? What about the Expos, Mike? Well, <laughs> up, well, I'm dude. a Jets fan, so last week was my favorite week of the NFL season lately because we were on a bye. Uh, <laughs> all right, what do you want to say about baseball real quick, though? we got to get out of here. So they're adding a DH to the uh, National League, I think. There's rumors. So what do you guys think about that? Like, you Well, I'm not happy because Shohei Otani, you know, is no longer going to have to pitch and uh, to hit. Yeah, that's no, a whole it alert to him. Effect, yeah, yeah. Uh, it won't affect him. He's in the other league. Well, obviously, that uh, <laughs> oh, the Thor really? guy, I'm, I'm pissed off. Syndergaard. Syndergaard. Yeah, he's, all, he's hurt all the time. You don't have to worry about him. Well, I'm just not. The pitchers, you know, it's kind of a, a nice novelty, you know, whenever in one league they play by different rules than the other and it completely ruins careers potentially. It's nice that they're getting this whole thing on the same pitch. Is this I, one more guy the Bucko's got to pay? <laughs> no. <laughs> Opposite. No, it won't change. Oh, okay, good. All right. That's good news. Baseball does stink, though. But how do you not have a DH in every single ballpark in the league? How exactly. Because that ain't baseball, How is there different American League, National League rules? Like, how does that work? And then also, what if you were a DH? What if you're a full-time DH, you don't play, you just hit? It's called history. Well, dude. big baseball lacquer guys that. are what people go to see. Awesome. Yeah. That would be the per – I don't know how every ballpark doesn't have – by the way, the DH should live by a different set of piss tests, too. Uh -huh, more bombos. Right? I'm going to say right. it. I'm going to say it. I don't want to be the uh, – I don't think I'm the only one. They should get a different set of rules if people are coming to the stadium to see these big baseball whacker guys, and now it's across the entire league. Let them live in their own world. They're not baseball players. They're a show. They're an attraction. They are the game. Let's Test them for open. juice. Make sure there is juice in their system. Yes. yes. Mandatory. Chris Mad Dog Russo, hey. baseball talk, probably on the other side. I assume it's better than ours. I don't know if he agrees with that. No, probably not. <laughs> I don't know if he agrees with that. He's sentiment. a diehard baseball guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he hates you now. You made the list. He basically started the MLB network. What? Yeah, he, yeah, he actually did, I think. He yeah. did. <laughs> when, he, when he left, right when Mike yeah. and the Mad Dog split. Yeah, high heat. It was uh, MLB network's like premier show for probably 10 years. Learned Still something, is. AJ. He kind of told me not to talk baseball. No juice, no unless juice. it's from me. Uh, oh, really? Good. Wait, he told you because like nobody cares? Yeah, basically, he said, unless it's me talking about it, who cares? LeBron? LeBron will give you a little juice. LeBron will give you a little juice. A little juice. NBA, not so much. Maybe playoffs. LeBron will give you a little juice. <laughs> Baseball, no juice. No juice. No juice. Not football. Not football. It was a good thing. Hell yeah. Are we in the – is baseball matter now still? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're in, like, the Super Ultra Mega Bowl, remember? Yes. Who's playing? Red Sox Astros at Tonight? 5, five o'clock. Dodgers wow. Braves. Wow. Don't they put them in a matinee game, huh? What, what do you guys call Dodgers Braves also tonight. Uh, well, also, hockey talk, 8 o'clock. Hell, Hell, yeah. Hell yeah. Also, the Red Sox, I don't know how big people watch baseball. I, I really don't. Oh, I mean, oh, I mean, oh, what do you mean? I'm a big right playoff now. baseball guy. What happened? Watched what? the entire game last night. Then the ninth inning comes. Astros score eight runs. Game is basically over. And I had to sit through <laughs> shit to get to the end for my team to lose. Well, that's why I do what everybody does. What's Same. that? Hey, what time seventh inning coming around? I put that tweet out. I'm told four hours from now. And yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll see you in Zed. I'm going to watch the entire Squid Game series. Same and tomorrow. then I'm going to finish this game out. Hey, you think the refs in the NFL are bad? This asshole ump last night 
23 missed strikes and balls. 23. That's a lot. Yeah. You just make yeah, a list. Baseball guys love these umps. Yeah, no, it, it's no. kind of like a, it's a niche thing about 22. baseball. Oh, what is the strike zone for this guy? Learn his strike zone. To Gumpy's point, because nice. he missed that strike, uh, the Astros went on to score seven runs and beat the Red Sox nine to two. Oh, this is like Mike McCarthy not challenging yeah. the touchdown. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Nice that Dak Prescott fumbled the exactly. next Exactly. Cricket guy, Evie, to voice in there. What are you talking about? Big Evie. cricket, big cricket, tennis, golf guy back there. Baseball stinks. Cricket. Watch cricket? No, I don't know where that came from. They uh, play that around here. You, sound pretty cool, actually. you don't play cricket, huh? Makes you seem no, very cultured. I don't understand <laughs> cricket, but there's. I see people at these parks. I go for soccer games. I see them playing. There's like thirty they're playing of them cricket around. in Ohio. No way. Yeah, there's always like one <laughs> strip of turf that they're playing on that the dude pitches and bounces the ball. There's. All, it, it's honestly, the majority of the soccer places we go for my daughter. There's always a, tr- a cricket game happening. What do they do? They fucking. Oh yeah. yeah. The whole thing. Right? Oh, yeah. and don't mm-hmm. don't some of the games go like three years? Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. multiple days. The grand final. Yeah, the they, hurlers throw smoke. They seem to like just like <laughs> longest cricket game, nine and then days. They get into oh yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. That's crazy. Nine days they couldn't figure it out. They were trying to hit the little wooden stick things with the crow hop chuck thing. Yeah, wicket. And that's the bat, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bang. <laughs> little paddle. Hey AJ. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> is there a uh, picture of you like there is of Urban with all the girls who work at Roosters on the wall? Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean, but uh, what, what do you mean? Where's hey, this picture? Roosters is very good, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I was I was sent a picture of uh, Urban Meyer on the wall at Roosters with every woman that works there. Gumpy. Uh, well, they're a huge. Do? They're yeah. They're a huge sponsor uh, of Ohio State. Roosters is. I will say I Why did I see a video of uh, Urban Meyer's jersey on the wall and an AJ Hawk Centerville jersey on the wall of the same restaurant. Right next to each other. Uh, Wait, an Urban Meyer basically. jersey. Yeah, it says Urban on the back with a number one. Right here, eyes on mine. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. There's also an interesting photo of AJ Hawk jersey floating around the uh, internet as well. It's pretty I've funny. seen yeah. that one actually. Yeah. I've I mean, not. I haven't. Mean? It's not has nothing. It's just your jersey and the person who's holding it. It's hilarious. Look happy. For some reason, they they hired like a cam model to be holding. There's like a, just like a naked <laughs> yes. girl like yes. holding yeah. the jersey. It's wild. Where's this at? To sell? It's like a Google sale? image. I yeah. Yeah. I think it's on eBay. eBay. It's on eBay. Yeah. Come on, AJ. <laughs> what? You have kids. What does that mean? <laughs> you can't be doing that stuff. What am I? Oh, am I hiring people to hold my jersey? Is that what you're saying? Sounds like it. That's what everyone's saying around They're saying here. They're saying it looked pretty similar to that Coors Light ad that you ran. Yeah. With the hands it was, on. It was Miller Light, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Shout out Miller Light, dude. Are you a free agent? Are you a free agent now in the beer game? I am absolutely a free agent when it comes to any alcohol. Whoa. Oh, it could be you. Could be anything. What is that? Let me see. What is it? Someone sent it to me. Nah. Nah. There's no way you know what that is. I don't is. want that on my phone. <laughs> Jesus Christ, AJ. Anyways, let's get through some more stuff that we didn't cover today. Uh, 300 bucks. We- <laughs> 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 I think you got the check. All right. So, uh, Jerry Jones. We talked about it with Chuck Pagano there, but I would like to run the audio. Jerry Jones talking about Mike McCarthy's game management. Very fascinating because Mike McCarthy made very obvious mistakes during the game. I think we all saw it. Even if you just look at the final kick to give the Patriots 20-some seconds when he clearly could have waited. Now, whose decision, who's making what, who's in his ear? Jerry Jones came out in favor of big mike mccarthy's game management with a beautifully answered um interview question on 105.3 the fan i'm I'm right in there with mike of his game management i think he does it extremely well and but more importantly i want all of our fans know how conscientious about it how hard he works on the detail of situational uh rehearsal and practice that he does I just want to let everybody know he's getting the shit wrong, but he works on it, and I like my guy. You think that's something you can get better at, Mike McCarthy? And do you like the fact that Jerry Jones is coming out and saying, hey, get off Big Mike's ass. We're winning football games right now. Yeah, I think uh, it's good to see the, his owner stand up for him. It's something you can absolutely get better at. Like I know when I think of like game management, if I was a head coach, that, that's not the first thing that pops into my mind. Like, okay, i got to be thinking two quarters down the road, what are we going to do here like that's something I think you absolutely will continue to get better at as you have more and more time as a head coach. Just like Chuck, like talking to the refs, like, hey, 
You're you're going crazy at this ref when the play happened 80 yards away, and this ref has nothing to do with it. He's not even looking at that part of the play. Like, that's part of being a coach. Yeah, I understand there's a lot to do for a head coach. I would think the game management part would be a relatively large role for the day game day ops. Um, but I think now when you make these mistakes, everybody realizes their mistakes. As in the past, people, commentators would probably just talk over it. All right, they're kicking a field goal. Uh, the other team has no timeouts with 27 seconds left on the clock as opposed to letting this thing run down, calling a timeout with five seconds, which is the automatic amount of time that comes off of every single field goal because there was some home clock cooking that was happening where some kicks were only three seconds long. Some kicks were six seconds long. So they actually came out and said every field goal, five seconds at least so if you get two five seconds it goes to zero immediately after that was actually a rule that was changed and made Wait, happen. i didn't know that yeah so five seconds is the number so you'll see everybody go down to like three seconds if you get it to five or four it doesn't matter because that's already been ruled upon because the home cooking of the potential clock operator giving a second and a chance for a team to return or ending it and not giving the other team a chance so it's uh it's all those little things i think we all know a lot more about now as opposed to what we knew in the in the past and i'm not saying big mike won't be able to learn about it. the guy knows football okay so i'm assuming that's something he could uh pick up and enjoy and entertain but if you listen to chuck he had one person that had a book of shit that was going through it yeah there's a potential lot of factors going into this thing. well and big mike kind of got screwed because corona tone was like commenting on what he should have been doing during the game he basically said like i don't know why he's calling a timeout here because he should let the clock run down so also because you know the commentators are telling people what they should much be doing. different yeah. than what it used to be yeah it used to be much different it used to be like commentators the coaches are making decisions that are smart and good and that is what football is now the commentator's like nah nah that ain't gonna fly <laughs> and corona tone's like what the fuck i just said we're gonna win a super bowl and now you guys are almost giving the ball back to the patriots here what do we got going on corona tone's wide open in there yeah. but i appreciate the fact that he's telling the truth and i think a lot of commentators are doing that now and feeling empowered to do that as opposed to in the past when it was like kind of like hey whatever happens you just talk about you don't say what the should happen out there yeah and, and tony like you said he, he is he's usually right when he's saying that but the the tough thing i guess for coaches if let's say the color commentator is saying like this is absolutely wrong, they shouldn't. This is not the decision they should be making. Even if that person is wrong, the majority of people watching that game will believe the commentator. So completely different set of example here, or example here. So like kickers and punters, nobody knows anything, anything. about kicking and punting. So the commentators, what they're saying about the punter or the kicker is literally all the people know. Right? So that's all anybody knows. Because they're the ones that are supposed to know, watch film. The people at home aren't watching every single punt, every single kick. So that was a massive ordeal. I had one, there was one commentator that said something about me or whatever, you know, that I didn't necessarily like, something about me like not being athletic or wanting to tackle or whatever. And I was like, this motherfucker just potentially painted an image of me to an entire group of people that would never do research where it's like, hey, this guy scared to tackle or something like that. And it's like those types of things, what the commentators are teaching and leaning on in the narrative they're painting are massive to a lot of people that are watching the game. You're setting the tone for opinions that are gonna happen tomorrow. It's a very important piece of the role. And I, I do appreciate that the, the bad shit is getting pointed out though. Now it seems like, like yeah. Joe Buck and Troy, Hey, that was a bad call. Was a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, you almost hear Troy at some point go, these guys are fucking terrible out here. Like, it is. And I People love want that. that. People I'm, want it now with, it's a time with Orshlovsky, you know, all of this, the breakdowns he does, the stuff that kind of got him into the spotlight was how he would break down these plays and kind of tell people exactly what was going on. Now, though, yeah, people expect more and more and they want to know from the commentators who are usually ex-players, like, oh, yeah, this is, no, this is absolutely wrong. And you have to... You kind of have to do that, too, now if you're on TV. I feel like you can't just – everything can't be old champagne and roses, as they say. Well, it, it, if candies and nuts and everything like that, the the player huh. – Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense at the end. What? You, you got to run with it. But the player – it used to be player made bad decision commentary. I know other ones. The, Which one are you talking about? If candies and nuts, what? I don't know how, that, how it finishes. Well, well, then you don't get it. You don't get it. There's You're some... exactly right. I do not get it. And I would assume the people watching or listening probably don't get it It's a glitz and glamour. It's a glitz yeah. and glamour. It's a, you know, it's a, right, a football. gum drop yeah, it. and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's like aunt, the aunt thing with your uncle. Bingo. But anyways, the, what is that? I don't What's know that about one that one. I don't know about yeah, that one. If my aunt <laughs> had nuts, then she'd be my uncle. No, that's not. But in the, no. Can't say that anymore. No, I don't know if that's that. the same. Yeah, you're gonna what? Get, 
Hey, you're going. That's a saying. That was not the one I was talking about. Anyway, the. Um, I don't think it's that simple. I don't, well, I think the saying has changed. To, yeah, but anyways. The, what is it now? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't actually. what I was talking about. What he's saying is not what I was talking you admit, about. Admit the TikTok generation. Mid will tell us. Yeah, but the coverage used to be if a player made a mistake. They would point it out every single time. This player stinks. This player stinks. This player did this. As opposed to the potential good thing that's happening on the other side. Now it feels like good stuff. There is still players getting dissected, obviously, for a misstep or something like that. Accidentally reading the wrong thing and getting caught in a bad spot. But also, I like the players are now. You know, I think the players and refs are also getting kind of... Everything else is normally pretty positive. A lot of trustworthy. All Yeah. Best intentions were almost taken into account for like coach and refs and everything. But if players did bad, it was like buried. There it is. That player that did bad. Now it feels like everybody can get it, you know, which I kind of I kind of appreciate as a spectator. Yeah, the refs get it a lot. It's the refs are easy targets, I feel like, for, for TV people. It's because they make a lot, a lot, a lot of mistakes. Too many. A lot of mistakes. And uh, you know, they're trying their best. Well, and those guys are taking everything that, like, you know, Romo says with a grain of salt because you don't know if he's fucking liquored up out of his mind in the booth at this point, you <laughs> know? So, yeah. yeah. Well, in the Whatever happened part, from that event? Just got wiped off the internet. Yeah, it did. It was in Massachusetts, by the way. Confirmed location. Expensive plates. Very, very, very expensive plates. Raising a lot of money for something. For underprivileged are, children. Are there any videos out there? Families. There are videos out there. Yeah, I got one. Hey, nobody ever said you can't have fun and raise money at the same time, bud. Yeah, well, but hey, listen, people... listen, I've been at some events over there with the uh, cult in Ohio. It seemed like everybody was getting having a good time raising money. Were they making fun of poor people to their face? or? Oh, uh, well. I think Wait, it was, was he doing that? just yeah. being an asshole. No, yeah, listen, we're not getting back that. into this, okay? I don't want to get into it because I don't think it should, but I didn't know his dad. Like, that's oh, yeah. Guy's so boozed up, he only knows what day of the week it is when he's calling a game. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't right. it kind of frowned upon to have 40 whiskey sours at a charity event when you're the keynote speaker? And your right. kids are there. All right. Oh, oh. Corona time. Anyone else? Ty's delivery. I mean, so good. I can say the quote. He just for makes AJ. it so terrible. You know? Because <laughs> he you just... think he's serious for a second. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. at all. Sometimes I look over there at the COVID Cowboy. <laughs> And he'll get himself all set up ready for a serious, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes, the, like the last one was the Chris Angel, David Blaine yeah, situation, mm -hmm. where you see him sit up real like professional. <laughs> He's real excited. Stay away give him a little from, light. Stay away from this one. This place is absurd. All right, let's go to uh, a couple more phone calls here before we get out of here. Let's go to Corey in South Dakota. What's going on, Corey? Home of the Jackrabbits. Home of Adam Vinatieri. Go Jacks. Oh, yeah. Nice. Jack's up. More of a Yotes there, guy myself. Wasn't there a player oh. with that kind of name the other night? Yotes guy. AJ, we're trying to listen to this. Sorry about that, Corey. I, I, <laughs> what did you sorry, say? Corey, sorry, Corey. We should sit there and ask you, oh, what part of Corpus Christi are you from, bud? Uh, it's not Corpus Christi. We're talking South about Dakota. South Dakota. Good South God, AJ. Not Corpus Christi. He's trying to... I knew Corpus he wasn't Christi's Corpus Christi. I was just city thinking of a Texas. <laughs> South Dakota's a state. Calm, Corey. Calm down, Hawk. Corey, what's going on over there in South Dakota, dude? It's rainy today, but I got I got two questions for you guys. Great. Does Derek Carr finally Stop get paid now that Gruden's out? Okay. Keep that thumb up. Keep it like this. Oh, sorry. Dude. Don't thumb it. Don't. You, you don't know how to shoot a basketball. Okay, oh. shut up, Connor. Absolutely do, but don't <laughs> oh, thumb oh, it. Oh, AJ, AJ, right now I just want to let Corey, I'm so sorry about what you asked. We, we, uh, to be honest, none of us heard it because there was something else going on on the show. My jumper right now, AJ. You're great. Hey, you're a great athlete. I'm just trying to teach you fundamentals. Actually, only because I'm. I'm coaching fifth grade girls travel basketball. Oh, let's go! Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so hand in the cookie jar, right? Is that where we're going? We're still going hand in the cookie jar or what? I'm talking your offhand, though. Don't thumb it. Don't take your thumb towards the hoop. Keep your thumb out. Like Kobe, Jordan. It's hard with my pinky. Flat. You can't see that. I don't know what your you mean. Flat left fun. hand. You're off, yeah, your, yeah. Flat, your left hand needs to be flat. Don't thumb the ball. Don't like turn your thumb into the hoop. Just like that. Shooting's for sure. You just did it exactly oh, yeah. what I said. Teaching them beef? Nope. You're still doing it. What about triple threat position? You, you guys doing the mic and threat? drill? There you go. That one was I mean, great. you can spread your fingers out a little bit. No. I mean, it's awkward when you go, I mean, what am I? <laughs> so, Alan, you want me to shoot, dude? I just got hands on a ball, bro. And then triple My threat. Bad. I mean, right here, right? This is shoot, dribble, or shoot. Jab step. Pump fake. We should not have done that. We'll Drive to the lane. I'm done. Corey, what's going on, dude? So, my, I, got, I got two questions. <laughs> uh, does car finally get paid in vegas now that gruden's out and is minnesota 
Oh, oh no. Mitt. Mitt, you son of a bitch. You prick, he sat on a whole... Oh, I don't geez. think Mitt hung up on him, actually. I don't think. Did, oh, Mitt did. Yeah, he said he did. All right, so Mitt, <laughs> Mitt did hang up. He didn't like it. Well, because they, they tell Mitt one thing, and then they get on the air and tell another thing, and Mitt said he's finally taking a little bit of ownership over these phone lines. And to be clear, I... I I enjoy going to the phone lines. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think Corey was going to give us a great question, but I like the fact that Mitt has become a little bit more of a uh, uh, a stern bouncer yeah. Yeah. on the lines. Okay. You keep doing your thing, Mitt. Honestly, keep doing it. Um, we were getting massively taken out of context on the internet again. What happened? Whoa. Mm -hmm. With the Raiders community. That's right. Oh. After that Thursday night football game, where it appeared as if Derek Carr's groin jumped out of his skin and left Las Vegas. Yeah. And Marcus Mariota came in and oh, yeah. impressed. This was a primetime game, very important game for the Raiders. This was a big deal. Derek Carr, it appears as if he blows out his entire grundle, his entire groin gets blown out and rolling to the right. Remember like it was yesterday, goes to the sideline. Mariota comes in, plays well, hit Darren Waller down the line. Next morning, because there was no long-term contract agreed to, because of how bad the injury looked and how good Marcus Mariota appeared, we said, hey, it's been a fun run watching yeah. Derek Carr. Nice yeah. job. We thought that was it. Groins are very difficult. That surgery with, it, with what we thought it was, a groin injury that would take him out of the game. That is a very, that's an intrusive surgery in a very important part of your body. So we say, hey, go run for Derek. Derek Carr has obviously since come back. He actually played the next game somehow. Mm -hmm. yep. somehow. He didn't even miss anything, and he's only gone on to do his thing. Still no long-term contract. But Derek Carr, and we talked about this, about the Raiders and about Derek Carr, they win games that you don't expect them to win. Then it always seems like in the end something happens where they don't end up in the big dance. Gruden being gone, football Richie being there, maybe leaning on a little bit of uh, stability. They give Derek Carr the long-term contract that I think some Raiders fans have been looking for him to get for some time in there. Maybe that'll lead to it. I have no idea. But the Raiders, in a very tough division, always seem to have that same conversation piece. So how exactly were you taken out of context? Well, they just clipped what we said. Oh, Derek Carr's done. He's over. He's over. Good run. Without saying, like, hey, less than 12 hours before these statements were made, it appeared as if Derek Carr's right leg was potentially snapped off like a chicken wing yeah. on Thursday night football. That, that is what is being taken out of context, I think. I personally. And I don't mind... I like the Raiders team. Hey, I like the Raiders team. I like watching them. Their fans fucking stink, though. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. They're, they, uh, uh, sorry, a sect. Are they loud? Wait, do they come out? Like, are they oh, loud whenever yeah, they, anything oh, happens with them? Oh, they're like the Dolphins fans. They're mm -hmm. like the Dolphins fans. But the worst. they're a better team than the Dolphins. So yeah. that this is some also of the, with... Some of them. <laughs> no, yeah, not all of them. Not yeah. all. This is painting Dolphins fans in that light, rude of me. Painting all Raiders fans in that light, rude of me. But, like, it is – I like the Raiders fan base is like, hey, we got to fight because they do – they never get talked about in the national media. I think it's because they're in the Chiefs division and the Chiefs are the next mm -hmm. dynasty, so maybe it's tough to talk about moving cities, everything that's gone on behind the scenes over there. I think it's just not necessarily a media darling. Uh, but Derek Carr signing long-term feels like probably going to happen now even more so than before when John Gruden was going to be able to pick and choose for the next seven years what the Raiders were going to look like. I don't know, though. Mayock's in charge fully now, though, right? So he kind of has the keys. Is he that big on Derek Carr? Like, is he ready to make Derek Carr? How many million a year is he going to get? That's like Baker Mayfield, too. That's why Baker wants to play so much. Like how much, and, and yeah. by the way, Baker wants to play because he's a competitor and everything like that. But we are in a contract year where there's a lot on the line for him. And I guess people will say that's not he, I, that has to go into the entire things. Plus, with how competitive he is, at some point, some quarterback is going to have to take a team friendly deal. And it's just going to have to happen because not every quarterback can get the next biggest contract of all time, which I think is what the NFLPA wants. A lot of the time out of the next quarterback that gets signed because instead of that you end up with like a Jameis situation where he's making a million dollars on the Saints as a backup for a year because he thought he was going to get like at what point do you think somebody would be like you know what I'm going to take 17 million a year and you guys can build this roster up that's nowhere near what the next person up is and we can continue to go on this run I just don't know if that's ever going to happen because no. 
young rookie quarterbacks also much cheaper, I guess. Why would you keep a quarterback that you only have to pay that much, I guess, is the other narrative there. I, I don't know. I thought Andrew was going to do it. He did not. No. Andrew Luck. The only him. way they're accepting it is if they don't have any other options, really. And, yeah, you can structure it to make it, like, team-friendly or more team-friendly, I guess. Yeah. But you know how it works now. Okay, we're going to give you this giant deal. Then we're going to restructure next year. Then we're going to restructure again. We're keep bumping it out five years and freeing up money and giving you more guaranteed money and freeing up some cap space. Yeah, but the 10-year, $500 million deal that Patrick Mahomes got, if you do the math just simply there, the average would be, what, $50 million a year. But he's only like $10 million, $7 million, $8 million, $14 million, $15 million, which is the exact amount that I'm thinking – would somebody like take to be a quarterback in the league or would you rather end up being a backup having to potentially reprove yourself and catch that later deal i'm not saying baker is going to have to do that or Derek carr is going to have to do that i have no idea what the market is going to look like for either of them i thought tom brady's market was going to be everybody in the nfl basically it turns out it wasn't so i don't know how and what but at some point that next deal for somebody is going to have to become a team friendly one who will it be i'm not sure would you rather pay baker mayfield or Derek carr I, how old is Derek? Thirty. That's it. I'd say Derek Carr. Whoa, what's that all about? I don't know. Derek does seem to just in his recovery, like, yeah. hey, that groin looked like that thing was popping he, off. He's a, he a miracle healer. He is quick healer. Yeah. yeah. How Must good would that he water. be with Odell and Jarvis and? I mean, granted, you can't throw Waller in there, but it just feels like he'd be better with them than Baker. That is the conversation that all the Browns fans have, I think, that, or not the Browns fans, the people that aren't Browns fans that talk about the Browns' future. If, if you were to put this quarterback on this team, what do you think would happen? If you were to put this quarterback on the Cleveland Browns team, what do you think would happen? If you were to put this quarterback on the Cleveland Browns, what do you think it would happen? And that is something I assume Baker Mayfield hears, but it's also a very real thing, and that's what the NFL is when there's only 32 jobs. Yeah, I mean, when it's like the most high-profile position in pro sports and a, a sport that is hugely popular, yeah, you're going to get a lot who of you stuff go, good and bad with? coming your way. But if I was like, if I had to make the decision, okay, who would you rather pay, Derek Carr or Baker? I mean, I'm going to need to – I'd want to spend like two weeks with each of those guys <laughs> in the meeting rooms, at practice, on the sidelines for a couple games. That's like, I want to see both of them what they are like day in and day out. How, how their teammates respond to them too? That's a big part. Derek has also already earned – a hundred million dollar contract, so maybe he would take a little bit less on a second or this would third. Be his third deal now. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. get rich off your second contract, you get wealthy off your third. Is the old that's like, hey, this is the old conversation piece about how you need to make to this is what you want to get to. You want to get to your third contract business wise because obviously your second one's going to be bigger. Hopefully, then that third one you're going to get one more bite at the apple. And there's obviously been a lot of people that have gone further into that whole thing. So maybe it would be Derek Carr. But your point is very valid. Andrew Barry over there, Stefanski, that whole locker room, they go to bat for Baker Mayfield all the time for what he's like behind the scenes. If you're going to invest in somebody, that's the biggest mistake. Like, is this a guy or is this not a guy? And I would like to potentially go on a golf course with him as well. You know, like, let me let me go on a golf course with Derek and Baker, see what they are. I think we would need about a week. I think about a week would be about the proper amount of time. They could lie to us, I guess. But that's I, what I think- Bean did with Allen. They went golfing and talked about what they'd like to see from each other in a deal. Yeah, and all, yeah. let me hear what you need out of this deal. Okay, cool. Let me see what type of guy you are. Oh, you hit a golf ball 700 yards. All right, I would like you on our team to be our quarterback. But that seems like the proper way to go about doing business. Well, and the Browns, too, that team is what it is because of the fact that Baker's been on a rookie contract and they've been able to spend money on the O-line and the running backs and the wide receivers. Oh, you're talking so. Legion of Boom, Rams. Yeah, you're talking exactly, about a lot yeah. of teams that had success off rookie contract quarterbacks that you could build up around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a different time. Or you could be a team that's in turnover and get the biggest contract in all of quarterbacks like the Detroit Lions. See, yeah. I was just going to say, like, from my perspective, I've never seen a playoff game as a Lions fan. So if I'm a Browns fan, Baker won me a playoff game. You gave him whatever the fuck This is want. Jim Caldwell. <laughs> yeah. Mm. This is like Jim Caldwell who started to win for the Lions, started to win for the Lions, but not enough. Yes. Didn't win enough. This guy won't take us there. Let's get rid of him. Fuck, we suck again. Bingo. Yeah, and to the thing about the Raiders, we're, we also were had knowledge about the fact that John Gruden spends two months with someone, fucking hates their guts after two months, and then kicks him to the curb regarding Derek Carr not playing for the Raiders anymore. Yeah, that is why we think, just like Corey was thinking over there, Probably a better opportunity for Derek Carr to sign on longer. Nah, but yeah. we don't know what the relationship was. Remember, they were saying Derek Carr wouldn't spend the night at Gruden's. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. who, who knows what's real and what isn't? If, if it's happening in locker rooms and behind closed doors, personal relationships, we're learning this about Bill and Tom. Who knows what's real and what isn't yeah. real, you know? 
Well, he we did, don't know. He did say, I love the man, I hate the sin. The sin. Yeah. It's a great Artist way to go about thing? it. Derek Carr. Yeah, kind of, I guess. Don't you think it's a good way to, if you're put in that position where you could be like, all right, I'm not going to like go crazy either way here. I'm still supporting this guy who was my coach, but I'm saying I, I don't agree with what he did. I love the man. <laughs> I hate the sin. Mm-hmm. All right. Keep that one in the roller deck. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Remember that. Keep that one locked in. <laughs> I like Derek Carr. I mean, Raiders fans make me feel like I should hate them. Yep. Yep. But what if you don't love the guy though? Hate the guy. Hate the sin. Then you just don't like him. Bad guy. Yeah. Then Next you're glad question. he's gone. Mm-hmm. Then you have uh, an X factor. Red extreme situation. Right. Did you yeah. see that video? We we played it. I don't early. know what what is, you guys mentioned. Well, we, well, we can run it again. We can run it again. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Is, it like a, is this an Island Boys situation? No, no, no. no. way better. I mean, way better. Definitely talent, skill, and commitment. This is an action. Better. Come on, Evie. Don't say that. Yet. Yeah. This no, is. Uh, uh, you just wait. And this see. one's long. We'll this one's long. Okay, but it is worth it. And every minute seems to get better. That's all you need to know as you go. This is actual news segment. Act. Found out about this morning, okay? Mm-hmm. Literally, as soon as I was shown it, I said, this is, this is going on the show. This, is, this has yeah. to go on the show. Actual news segment, Fox 4 News in Kansas City. This is what's happening in Chiefs Kingdom right now, AJ Hawk. Well, if you spend any time around here on game day, you're likely to be aware of at least one of fake. these men. The man Drill. known as the X Factor has been around Jacob for Kittle's decades. Real. He's the one seen in the video getting knocked down by another man who the people of Section 129 may know as Red Extreme. Oh, Red Extreme. Oh, oh, this is the X Factor about six years ago, meeting and whooping it up with young Chiefs fans. And this is X Factor today. Oh, no. Only <laughs> recognizable by his foam hat. His Broncos colors from the hospital. They kicked me out of Arrowhead. First time ever X Factor has been kicked out. Third person. Third person. We don't have permission to show the video of the X Factor falling after an apparent punch, but it has nearly a million views on Twitter. The X Factor explains what happened from his perspective and who was involved. I see we're in the My hospital friends, I actually made him famous, um, you know, gave him the name Red Extreme. I saw him come run up the stairs at me and he was had that look, I'm gonna kill you. And so I like tried to grab his jersey to stop him and talk to him and he, he like that? the movie Friday, he deboed me one punch and I saw stars. They took me to triage at Arrowhead, checked Hold me on, out. AJ, this gets I felt all right at the time, but then I didn't know I broke my ribs. Oh. Red Extreme posted a 17-minute video <laughs> message to his Facebook page following the incident. He says, a cup of water was thrown and hit my wife in the back and splashed on me. 17 minutes, this he was continues, good. I have never in my life felt so bad about feeling so good because knocking that low-life son of a expletive out was the greatest feeling I've had in a long time. <laughs> it gets better my every problem time we is watch it happened inside the stadium, <laughs> and I never imagined in my life I would behave in that manner in the stadium. He also accuses the X Factor of being inebriated. It says that I'm a meth addict, which I, I'm a cocaine uh-huh. addict and alcoholic <laughs> for four years. He said I threw a water bottle at him, which I didn't, and I flipped my car. Uh, week ago Tuesday, so it's been a wild week. <laughs> no, this makes me stronger. Jesus, you know, Jesus was persecuted. I'll come oh, back what? fighting. Wait, it gets better. He is looking to press charges at this point, but throughout the day, we did try to connect directly with Red Extreme, but were turned down. However, immediately before our broadcast, we spoke by phone, and he stressed that anything that the X Factor says should be taken with a big dose of skepticism and that he himself actually stepped away from the super fan community because of his distrust and distaste of X Factor's behavior, Christelle. All right, Jacob Kittle. <laughs> It's happening. Real world. Who got knocked out? X Factor. The guy in the scrubs, dude. By Red then, but why did the guy in the scrubs, X Factor, talk about, like, I never thought I'd act that way in the stadium? No, that, that, was that was Red Extreme. That was Red Extreme. That was Red Extreme. Who Wait, was. Two different people? Yes. Yeah. One was in, in you. 
Oh, I never. Fi- I thought they were all the same. No, it was X Factor calls himself Red Extreme. No, no. X Factor actually created Red Extreme. Yeah. He actually gave him his name. And you, he, oh. by the way, much like me, the first time you watch that, you laugh over some very crucial yeah. points of that video because he's actually not a meth head. Although people have accused him of that, he is four years clean. Hey. Yeah. Go. Good Congrats, job, X Factor. He is cocaine addict and alcoholic, or, or and everything like that. So there's a lot of punchlines in there that you missed. But Red Extreme was birthed by X Factor in the Chief Superfan community. And what we have since updating this story, since us releasing this uh, same video in the first hour and our reaction to it, because it is so beautiful. A lot of Chiefs fans have told us that they have shunned X Factor out of the. The Chiefs community. Oh, my God. X Factor is on, I think, thin ice with the Chiefs fan base, the Chiefs kingdom. Yes. And Red Extreme coming up and delivering him a, you got knocked the fuck out, knock out, one swing, quit, break his ribs and his jaw, yep. leave him in ho- uh, hospital scrubs days later, walking outside on the news pitifully. People are saying Red Extreme did the right thing there, and I, 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 that's crazy to me because I just want us all to get along in the key, uh, Chiefs' kingdom. I'm worried because if X Factor loses the Chiefs and the Chiefs' kingdom, there's a chance in the next few months we find him in a gutter. All right, Tony. Well, See? I just find him in front of that gas station he lives at. No. <laughs> well, the thing is, too, he's been the X Factor for four or for six years. He's been sober for four, so I assume those two years where he was doing blow and drinking a bottle of Tito's every day that he, he probably did some Tito's egregious things at the tailgates. No, I assume that. that was whenever he was alive, right? That was when X Factor Ooh. became a thing. Well, whatever the case may be, it seems like you the don't team- think the Coke. No. And the alcohol helped. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm no. sure it helped him, but if he said he was whooping and getting everybody going, including kids, like you saw on that thing, I'm sure parents were like, "Jesus, buddy, you reek like a goddamn brewery, and I can oh, see yeah. some snowflakes falling out of your nose." Sir, Get the hell away from just my got kids! Out of the blizzard, the children don't need to hear the hum of uh, the cheese from Frosty. Yeah. All right. You get the hell out of here. But there is Red Extreme, I believe, delivering the right that knocked out the X Factor. Who is in midair? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. The Chief's cheese head is in midair. I'm just getting knocked <laughs> off his head. <laughs> yep. The Red Extreme separated X Factor from his X Factor helmet. What a right from Red Extreme, who said he never felt so bad doing something that felt so good, especially behaving like that in a stadium. What a moment for Chief Wait, King. Wait, real quick, though. Why, I know we're into the show. Why... For this walk and talk on the local news, yeah. why is he wearing right. his hospital scrubs with the Chiefs cheese head? Did they get him as he was leaving the hospital? No, so you get your possession, obviously, as you go. They thought he potentially had four punctured lungs out there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They thought because with those ribs. So he got the hat on the way out. They they escort him out in the scrubs. They actually, you know how when you're in a hospital, they always roll you out. Yeah. You know, they don't yeah. want anything to happen on the way out. Right before then, they actually just rolled and dumped X Factor out of the hospital. So that is why. Look at that. It's the only clothes he has, AJ. He's holding his ribs to let us know. Uh, it's like he, he wishes he could have wore the tape that he potentially has on his ribs outside the hospital. Yeah. Oh, uh, God, what a uh, fucking guy, dude. That's what do they a- tell him? Hey, we're going we're gonna to post up about 15 yards away. Just walk towards us and make sure we know you're hurt. So is that the stadium? That's a gas station there. Is that near where yeah, Jared was filming, I'd assume? Uh, well, I know there is a gas station that is, like, directly across the street from the parking lot at uh, Arrowhead. So X Factor had to get kicked out of the hospital, not change. Walk to his car, not change. Walk to the news not change and then do his walk on camera how many takes we don't know if his ribs looked as broken the first couple walks that he did we'll have to ask jared maybe a little follow-up on that thing but x factor's taking his fucking ass to court and i'll tell you i don't know what's going to happen but x factor is going to represent himself i was told really really that's the x factor yeah all the great ones do will he wear the the little thing the cheese had on top of his head in yes. court. I believe he yes. has to. That is me, believe it or not, in yeah. uh, in the photo there. What's up, Bill? Uh, X Factor's car, uh, his wreck, he documented a couple days before on Facebook, said that he uh, fell asleep going 85 on the interstate. <laughs> 
uh, fell off, went through a ravine and into a pond, and his oh. two <laughs> guinea pigs were ejected out of the oh, windshield, no. but are totally okay. <laughs> AJ, AJ's guinea pigs, dude. It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's real. It is. Look at the well, cops. He's, he's Look at the cops up on the hill. There's a tractor <laughs> trying to pull him out of there. Jesus. He's completely it's like they're looking for that, yeah. that laundry kid that killed his girlfriend. Did they oh, find him? What the nah, fuck, nah, dude? It is, what, what has happened? Dog told us he had not. There's been some news hey, did today. Did they find him? Oh, yeah. There's been some news today about yeah. like they found like some of his belongings somewhere His parents were there for 30 minutes minutes found like a bunch of belongings his parents were where on the island that he was allegedly whatever the place I, that they well, thought I believe they at. found human remains as well and this is yeah. in sarasota in, so in florida not on any island or anything that dog was on <laughs> okay so the dog was not on the right path he was they the called right a state. medical examiner i saw he had a different yeah. trail you know a dog sniffed out a different trail maybe found maybe maybe old uh what's his uh, name brian laundry yeah maybe he just Maybe he's the greatest escape artist of all time. How have we not caught this guy? Right? Maybe the dog has the yeah. IQ of a lab rat, and he shouldn't be the one oh, heading up on. the fucking I thought you were going to say a Labrador, like a different... <laughs> no. Yeah. no. Those like are dog. actually highly intelligent. Dog animals. actually rolled his ankle and gave up. Yeah. No. Rolled his ankle, oh, getting a pack of cigarettes at hey. 7-Eleven, and that was the you end need of it. What you about his paintball gun? I'm going home, bro. <laughs> Fun fact, dog actually could not make the arrest at all if he did find Brian. Oh, people are saying he potentially ends up getting arrested by Brian. Well, no, he's a convicted felon, so he literally cannot. Like, he'd be like, hey, stop, man. And Brian could be like, no, I'm just going to keep Oh, going. so you can't do a citizen's arrest? Like, okay. with uh, an offer of a Marlboro convict, cigarette? If you're a convicted felon, apparently not. Damn. What's going on in Hawaii? All these well, no, he's a bounty hunter. You just tie him yeah. up and take him to the police. Yeah, yeah like it. Batman did. Yeah. Give him exactly. a smoke. I'm not wearing hockey pads. Hey, by the way, there's another Batman. We hope that guy's found. I don't know how he isn't found. By the way, everything's on camera. Yeah. If he's in, I don't know how that works. Makes no sense. I don't know how that works. Big country. Right. Yeah. How do you get away with anything now? And how do you hide from the world looking for you? Especially dog, number one looking. Ugh. Yeah. Well, I don't think Leland was there, right? That's, no. yeah. Without Leland, dog is nothing, it appears. Listen, yeah. Leland it, is the dog for the dog. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Leland is the, what's up? Like if Gumpy and I were to kill somebody, all we had to do is shave our, shave our beards and we could walk in broad daylight and no one would ever find us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I don't know if that's accurate. I don't think you should live by that either. And I don't think you should necessarily just assume that's the case for anything you do in your life, let alone killing somebody. Uh -huh. So maybe keep your... Uh, keep you guys your are identifiable. He said it. I, I don't know why I got dragged into that. Now, well, Gumpy, to be clear, you maybe. Because there's been a couple times where Diggs has shown up here with no beard, remember? And he, they, they have him documented what yeah. he potentially looks Who like as this a completely different person. Mm -hmm. Gump, I don't think we've ever seen you without beard mask on face. Never. You do not want to. Absolute pinhead. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Some people become new people with mm -hmm. a beard. Brand new people. Yeah, I mean, Gump, I don't... It would be tough to recognize Gump if he shaved that thing off. My dad showed up one time when I was a kid without a mustache. He had it for a while. I was like, oh, that's a whole new fucking human right there. <laughs> Especially with the way surgeries are done nowadays. I guess you could change your... Oh, yeah. You have plastic surgery. Sammy the Bull had some plastic surgery. I think he still looks similar. Sammy the Bull was a rat, right? Back in the mm -hmm. day, he did, yeah. That's like the mask that I have to be that old man. Mm -hmm. Yep. That thing... I mean, I couldn't look down really with it on, but that my lips move when I spoke and yeah. everything like that. That was like what Kanye's Kanye doing was it. wearing. Yeah, Kanye, interesting. That was fascinating. Yeah. What's going on? He's just waiting That's to hard. disappear. His name's Ye, by the way. I yeah, his Ye. Just waiting to disappear, and then eventually we'll never know if who's actually underneath that thing, and he'll just be able to go away forever. Oh, it's like those DJs that have those masks. Yep. Marshmallow. Yeah, anybody mm -hmm. can be the Marshmallow. Yep. Mm -hmm. Did just that album come out? Marshmallows? No, Kanye. Yeah, it did. Ye's? Yeah, remember it wasn't good. Guess who's going nah, to jail it tonight? Decent. It was decent. Gumpy. It was. <laughs> Did there it do was well good though? Songs on it. Gumpy, not a single one of those songs will survive. <laughs> jail, jail will oh, go a long good. way. Haven't heard it since the day. They you play think it'll it, survive? They play it at hockey games every time somebody goes in the penalty box. Oh! oh. What if Ye starts singing like Thanksgiving songs, Ooh. Christmas songs, yeah. Halloween songs? So Ye's been 4th. reduced to Gary Glitter. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, that could be anybody. Eventually, it'll just be someone else and not him. I mean, I can't imagine that's comfortable. <laughs> wearing that around. No, no, because he has a little. I did scarf. not kill him. <laughs> AJ, what's, what's it like that? to wear another person's skin? He's a robot. <laughs> I robot the movie. That's a good one. That's wild. Yeah. I hope Ye's all right, man. I think he's good. Tease and peace. Tease and peace, Ye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like he's living his best life, though. 
He's yeah. doing everything he wants to. He burned down a house in the middle of Soldier Field. Yeah, True. He can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. oh, Soldier's yeah. Ranch in Wyoming. Kids, what an interesting life his kids have. <laughs> Those kids are being taught up by Ye, Kim, and Chris. Oh, yeah. I mean, they are going to be b billionaires before they're 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They already are. Yeah, North, Saint, and Chicago all yeah. are well on their way. They're going to have no idea what planet they're on, but they're going to be rich. Mm -hmm. They might not be on. They might yeah. not be on. True. I mean, who knows? Yeah. That's why whenever you're asked to do something in April, it's hard to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. That brings the whole thing together. That's the show. Thanks, Coach Chuck Pagano. Appreciate him. Jonathan Taylor was awesome early. I don't know if you uh, heard that. He sounded like a robot there early. His microphone was getting blown out. We had to change that on the backside. Mm -hmm. On the back end. Wasn't. I don't believe it was us. Nope. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. Could have been, but he was awesome. Hey, he's a really cool guy. I heard, I heard a little bit of it. Uh, I was impressed with how like mature he sounds and how well spoken he. Like he, I'm like okay, yeah. If I'm a coach, I would love for my, my players to have this kind of mindset and this attitude. Asked about Carson Wentz's recklessness, his answer was amazing. We trust Carson completely to make whatever decision. It was like that's a great answer, like a great awesome. teammate answer, as opposed to uh, we're not going to tell Carson how or why to play he said no this is why we don't really ask or question anything because we trust him we think he wants to win just as bad as us that's an awesome answer he's a great teammate can't wait to see what jt does and sham sharani let us know that you know basketball is happening yep. yeah nuts are gonna win it all what did we learn Kyrie, 200 million out mm -hmm. ben simmons was not a phone in his pocket that was his jersey yeah and uh, basketball doesn't matter until Christmas. Yeah. That's right. Zion's right. Yeah. got a better chance of starting at left tackle for the Saints than he does oh, playing for the yeah. oh, Pelicans dude. in the next couple oh, weeks. Oh, oh, you're, right. you're, right. you're right. You got yourself there. Big <laughs> pop by the time. <laughs> Foot injury is tough for a left tackle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's also tough for a 6'9 power forward who puts on weight, you know. Come on. Yeah, hasn't been working out, but he's been working the spoon in the Ben and Jerry's <laughs> good bit. time. Oh, and he's God. not using a normal size spoon. It's like a goddamn ladle. Rehab is tough. You hear me? Going through an injury is very difficult. He will find his groove because Zion has been Zion since Zion came into the basketball world. Mm -hmm. He plays good when he's on the court. And he's he very does. fun to watch. He's unbelievable at basketball. He's not on primetime games because he plays for the Pelicans, and the Pelicans aren't in the game of getting all the superstars so they're not in primetime games, which is why I would hope that maybe at some point Zion goes to a team that, you know, uh, is trying to win, and they could potentially get in. <laughs> listen. Listen. <laughs> what? You want a scoop of uh, one of the gallon jugs of vanilla ice cream Ty has? Yeah, do, you, do we have any? Why do you have that laying around? Z just know. handed it to me. I don't know. To your point, I mean, the Pelicans are the Pirates of the NBA. They're never going to help the guy out. Dude. But, listen, he needs to help himself out, too, though. He needs to focus and dial it in and understand what he needs to do to have an oh. incredible career. Okay. And I think what you guys are saying is very rude, but he's coming out of a, a physical therapy, a rehab for an injury. He'll be back better than ever, and Shams will keep us up to uh, – <laughs> <laughs> this is only getting worse. It's only getting worse. This Why is do like, we have all this stuff in here? <laughs> ice cream? It's like morning snack, it's I think. Way too small wise. for it. Oh, care pack for Zion. Uh, oh. It almost doesn't fit in there. It, well, Zion would just eat the whole thing. Yeah, I don't think he uses a spoon for <laughs> ice cream that small. <laughs> it's one Come gold. On, <laughs> Big bite. There you go. <laughs> It's going to so make him dump his pants for a month. What flavor, right. what flavor is that? All right. Cake batter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Zion, I don't think you were doing that, but if you were, we need you to stop because we want to see you play a long, long time in the NBA. How is it? Pretty good, though. Very it's good. hard not to do that. If you have access to I'm very sympathetic with him. I get it. This is delicious. <laughs> if you have access to that size of a spoon in all of that ice cream, it's going to be hard not to when you're not allowed to move to get out of bed. You know what I mean? you got to do it. got to do it. You are going to dump your pants for the next three, oh, four days because oh, yeah. of that, honey, if you take it all to the house. Yeah, I do it. I haven't had ice cream in a while. Hey, it's so good, isn't oh, it? Oh, you're going to dump everything. Ice cream good. is so good. <laughs> it is so good. I'm a cookies and cream guy myself. Yes, me too. But the confetti, hey, Dairy Queen Blizzard, extra, 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 extra Oreo. Do you do four extras or just three? I, I don't, I've never done more than probably one extra, I think. But yeah, uh, I, yeah. You can't trust them. Blows my mind every time they flip that sucker upside down. Yeah. I must fall down. They actually have it on the DoorDash uh, menu upside down. Oh. 
Yeah, I thought that was clever. I was like, the the cue's upside down, but mm. I guess we get it that in the picture you're holding it upside down. I'm sure by the time it gets to my house, 15 minutes later, it's still going to be able to do that. Yeah, better. I love it. I absolutely love it. I he's taking out half of that thing with that fucking spoon. You get any frozen uh, headaches or anything? Give Connor some. Yeah, yeah, yeah you want some? Nah, it's okay. <laughs> get a, take a bite. <laughs> I tell you what, when it gets down in there, it's tough to get out. Yeah, you gotta really get your fingers in there. <laughs> Listen, that's why Zion uses that, not you. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Zion just eats it with the plastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's the show. Like we'll see you tea. tomorrow. <laughs> we will see you manana. We appreciate you all so much. Yeah. Hammer down starts at probably about four o'clock. Yeah. At youtube.com forward slash hammer down all the bets you need to know and make some money. We can't thank you enough. You are the best people on earth. Tomorrow, risk free, same game parlay. Thursday night football, Thursday will be packed. And tomorrow's the day we take all the money from FanDuel. Yeah. Shout out to all of you. Shout out to you boys. Great show. AJ, thank you so much. See everybody tomorrow. Cheers.